Drunken Peasants Podcast. I gotta get away with this. No! Say, man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. I don't have facts to back this up. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> That's true. Sometimes I cry. Miss my butthole, he laughed. From the strangest corners of the internet, here to bring you opinions of the world from an altered perspective, here are your hosts, the Drunken Peasants. Welcome everyone to the Drunken Peasants Podcast, this is episode 1046, Going live. Saturday bonus show, here we are. Da da da! Welcome back to another Saturday bonus show where we desperately beg everyone to help us reach the goal so we can do another one next week. Please help us out. The link is in the description. I'll pin it in the chat. That's what we're really going to focus on here. Streamlabs.com slash drunken peasants. $5 TTS still on. Uh, we will be responding to all of your wonderful contributions to tonight's goal. There it is in the chat. We got all kinds of content for tonight. It's packed. Like the stream. Also, Brave Browser users, send us your bats. You got some. Go check. Click on that triangle. There's, there's bats sitting there waiting. Waiting for you to send to us. Do it. All right. Let's take a look. <clears throat> now what we've got tonight, we've got, <laughs> look at the title, it's the Shanny and Rev Jail Saga. The Saga. Now, last time we saw, she was talking about moving on and getting a new man. <laughs> I heard that she's going to bail him out now. Is, is that, are we there yet? Like, wh where are we at? Probably, yeah. Uh, yeah. Surprise, surprise, they're not uh, lining up for the Shanity. The the other men. What about right. that one guy that was simping for her? Was he a catfish? Who knows? Probably. I would like Rev to stop hitting kids if that's what he was doing. I don't know I don't if know. that's what he was doing. The charges didn't say anything about uh, minors being involved, and normally it would. So I guess we'll get more information as it comes out. Also, there was this weird uh, the the America First movement is continuing to implode. There was a there was a heated exchange between Beardson and Big Tech. And then there was also a recent cozy stream with Nick where he kind, kind of sounded like he was disavowing Ethan Ralph now. Oh wow, he was just was it about a month ago he was giving Ethan Ralph the big suck? Yeah, isn't that funny? How that that's, he's like that's my buddy. I I don't want to turn on my buddy. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. I saw a high school photo of Baked Alaska. He looked like even more of a goober than he does oh, now. Oh, I believe it. It was fantastic. Um, also, uh, Jared, not only did he recently defend EDP, if anyone out there knows who that is, he's a, uh, a uh, Mr. Uh, Swirly enthusiast. He was the guy that those predator hunters found and uh had information of him trying to date a 12 year old he's a big time mr swirly and uh jared made a video defending him seems like jared makes videos attacking all the good guys and defending all the bad guys i don't know just an observation but i guess also uh i guess also jared's twitter account literally just got terminated i wonder what you and i don't there. know why but i i don't know if this is i don't know if this is related but i did get a DM on Twitter from Negative Creep saying Jared was threatening to like leak, to publicly put her lewds back out there. They'd already been out there, but he was going to put them out there again. I don't know if that had something to do with it. I guess we'll figure it out as we go along. Uh, like the stream. Dumb. Someone, someone help us hit that 40%. If someone out there wants to be the hero, uh, I will sing your praises. What are you going to sing? This is your praises. Do you like the way I sing them? 
Do you but, like that? Uh, where are all the donos? I figured they'd come pouring in after you sung those praises. It's delayed a little bit. It's those, yeah, it's just people are just they drop their wallet. They they're, were so shocked at my beautiful singing. They're oozing from your beautiful voice. Yep. That's right. All right, let's, let's get the train rolling. Yes! Choo -choo! Thank you, Big Soul. Uh, I'm looking in the chat, and Bradley Gustafsson says, how exactly did Billy get so obese? Well, I'll tell you. In the 80s and 90s, there was a big push for, <laughs> for low-fat low fat, uh, food, and the low-fat meant they took the fat out of food, the natural did you fats. you guys watch the January 6th commission the other night? I watched a little bit of it. I did it. not. I, I, I saw a little it, clip of it's some of the keep, new footage, though. It's going to keep going on, too. Yeah. And when they took all the fat out, they replaced it with sugar. Boys. Chip, all chip. aboard the Sweet Boy experience. Yeah! So all that sugar got me a, a sugar addiction, and it caused me to not just sing, Meatball, sing! Thank you, Allagas. Yeah. It caused me not just to uh, overeat, but uh, I was starving myself of actual nutrients at the same time. So as I was overeating, I was also starving. It was... Uh, a sick, twisted marketing scheme in the 90s for low-fat. I remember getting low-fat Twinkies when I was a kid. Like, what a, f what a joke. All right, we're going to get into it. Here we go. It's antagonism. Jicks asked Jesus to donate for them, but he says it usually takes some time. Well, Jesus, if you're out there, we don't have time. Give us money, Jesus. Yeah, cough it up, Jesus. I've given you enough money. Oh, don't touch me. Don't touch Good me. Keep me are they going to touch me? In fine form as always. Thank you, Franken Pinky. Sorry your dono was timed uh, against the intro. In fine form as always. Franken Pinky's been uh, very positive. Yeah, very positive. Appreciate All right. your contributions. So before we get into the Rev and Shanny stuff, we're just going to watch Jared's little video that he put out here. Maybe You know what? Maybe we just don't... Maybe we're wrong and we're condemning an innocent man and Jared's going to make the, the perfect case for why EDP is a good, sweet boy. What if we're wrong and Mr. Swirly's are right and kids are just there to be dated? Ah. Well, good morning, YouTube. It's your boy, Jared Juggernaut, here. And, uh, hey, I didn't mess with my camera. Can you believe it? Mr. Swirlies of the world, unite. <laughs> like Always Muhammad? fiddling with my camera. Always fiddling with myself when I'm on video, too. Just kidding. But, um... You're not, though. I will admit, I have... <laughs> I've done, like, two videos in the raw. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which you guys means will just never know that. It. Uh, I could prove it to you sometime, but unfortunately, that would get me thrown off of YouTube. Oh, it'll come anyway. Eventually, it it's gonna come. I wonder how long he is for YouTube. He'll he'll slip up. He'll slip up, and uh, and hope fat has and meatball reach the goal, so that they may dine on baller ass meat served on sword. Thank you. We Cheers. need more sword meat. Yeah, there are people just waiting for him to fuck up bad enough. Uh, to flag it so so anyways let's go ahead and delve into the topic at hand here uh mr edp 445 came back to youtube which i i have a feeling he's probably just gonna get banned again uh it seems like they keep banning him i don't know uh you know youtube uh they banned me because of a statement i made one all right time. so here it is everybody this is the confession jared's already been banned from youtube he's on his new account admitting that he's already been banned from YouTube. YouTube, once you once you catch a ban, it's a lifetime ban. And uh, Jared should not be on YouTube, and he admits it himself in this video. So if YouTube finds that out, I don't know. It might not be good for him, but good for everybody else. I mean, you know, they are, they're very censorship. They're, they're not free. They're very censorship? Speech. This is why I hate being on YouTube, but... Listen, man, um, okay, I'm not here to necessarily They speak defend free them. when censorship permits. I don't really know EDP. I do know, though, he got harassed by uh, fucking Alan from Pedo Poachers. Same guy that was harassing me, uh, just this low... -life. 
a no. Well, I, that guy's a jerk for sure. I'm not a fan of him at all or that type of content. But he was after you and EDP for the same reasons. Um, so it, it wasn't like he just randomly picked you. You were doing things that his type of content was part of making videos about. You were chicken hawking on people you thought were underage individuals. Right. Chicken hawk. Life racist. I'm glad You're he got sex exposed. Sex pest, Jared Genesis. But uh, we're not going to go too much into him. Um, let me just say this, okay? EDP, uh, he made a mistake, you know? It was stupid to go out and meet a minor. He kind of got what was coming to him, you know? Yeah, you just, just don't hear Jared that, say. Bro. I mean, Jared not, must not have seen a spiritual connection between EDP right, and that minor. Right. Not worth it, dude. Like, the, not going worth to it. Jail over some stupid shit like that. Like, just it's not stupid. Stay home and watch porn, huh, buddy? It's illegal. Watch, you know, the, I, it's, uh, yeah, they don't have that on Pornhub. I hope he doesn't watch any equivalent either. If you're feeling that lowly, but look, man, you know, EDP is only human, guys. We. <laughs> There he goes. EDP now, now he's going to walk it back. He was like, oh, yeah, man, he messed up. He did something wrong. Now he's going to... Well, he's only human, guys. Come on. We all make mistakes in life. And the fact that some people... Like, there's this douchebag by the name of Optimus who say, like, EDP's not allowed back on my platform. And these people that like to play police, he needs to get his ass kicked. These internet tough guys. Uh, fuck off, dude. Like, I'm sure you've done plenty of fucked up shit that nobody knows about. But if they Why are did, you sure about that? Just because you've done plenty of fucked up shit that nobody knows about? It's kind of a projection. I, it's a I, big projection. I love telling people all the fucked up shit I do because I'm proud of all the fucked up shit I do. I don't do stuff that I have to snake around in private. You know, your ass would be scared. And a lot of haters are like this, too. I'm sure a lot of my haters, I'm just going to say this, are probably, in fact, pedophiles. I Look at him try to flip it. I'd be willing to bet like 80, 90% of them are. <laughs> so uh, everybody who's aware of you. <laughs> and it's just like a cope thing. Is but, it? Um, look, EDP, you know, um, yeah, he fucked up. But you know what? He knows he fucked up and he's sorry for it. So just leave him alone, dude. Like He's with, projecting. Really, so he or... or ridicule him and don't allow him to replatform himself and use his brand his name his his channels to do this again if he wants to do this again he should do it while everybody knows what he was and what he did yeah it sucks because i i thought he was funny back in the day and uh and he was like a funny like troll you know i thought he was very trolly i thought he was pimp monk i didn't realize there were two different people they're like like the negative version of the other. One's the negative version of the other. Yeah, Pimp Monk needs more positivity. Right. Deserve this kind of hate. It's stupid. And, you know, like, another thing, too, is like people act like this dude fucking... They're not the exact same person, though, because Honest Red likes EDP better. <laughs> Murdered someone. He didn't, man. Okay, you know, he, he was baited by a low-life, you know, redneck inbred uh, that pretended to be 13-year-old girl. Okay, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not saying that was you know, right or wrong. You but... know how, here's how I could get baited by somebody pretending to be a 13-year-old girl. If I heard, like, some crying in the bushes saying, help me, help me, I'm, I'm hurt, I fell off my bicycle, I'm a 13-year-old girl. And then I go in the bushes to pull her out of the bushes, and then it's like a gang of thieves that beat me up. Then I got baited by uh, someone pretending to be a 13-year-old girl. But if someone's like, hey, I think you're sexy and I'm a 13-year-old girl, I'm not going to get baited by a 13-year-old girl. That takes yeah. a special type of person. There were so many catfish accounts in the comment section of Jared's newer videos. He's got a puppet master, maybe a couple people that are kind of pulling his strings, telling him what to do. And I think a lot of them are maybe going through and helping him weed out the catfish. Weird. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. You know, it was a mutual thing, okay? It's not like he... 
raped anyone. He didn't rape anybody. He didn't. Uh, he was on his way to. I mean, in the eyes. I, I mean, like there's there's different definitions for the R for the R word, and he was going to commit the statutory yeah, version he didn't. of the R word. He didn't, but he had intent to. Yeah. I think that there was enough evidence there to show he had intent, and that's the problem. Right. Murder anybody. A lot of you guys are just... No one's accusing him of murdering anybody. Fucking ridiculous. Trying to. Like, Maybe he would have. Really, again, he's human, dude. He admitted he made a mistake. Did he? Did he? I don't know. I don't care. Oh. His mistake isn't something that you can just write off. He needs to wear that badge. Wear that on his fucking... The, get, get a tattoo on your face that hey I uh, it's like a scarlet letter. I can't be trusted around 13 year old girls I would have liked to have seen it go to court and show you know in like no uncertain terms exactly what happened uh, I wish these guys would have messed it up because it if the cops would have been involved then he may have gotten arrested and then we could have you know he could have been prosecuted for it just leave him the fuck alone. Let him live his life, man. Like, what's wrong with y'all people? And then but people want to make content instead of actually getting the law involved. That's what the law is for. That's another thing, too, is, like, a lot of people on the Internet, they just want a scapegoat. That's what it is. They want someone to vent their problems on. And I know all about this life. Don't you do that? Like, you literally make a whole bunch of videos kind of projecting your flaws on everyone else. Because I'm a unique person and I'm someone who's different, and people that are you're a dime a dozen. Um, I I think the 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 real different thing about you is that you don't know when to shut up at all. Like you just don't know. Like you, it's just beyond you. You have a huge undeserved ego. There's there's no way you've accomplished anything that justifies the type of ego you have. And you just don't know when to shut up. Um, so. I think that's your biggest problem. Every th there's plenty of uh, thirty something, dirty thirty something year olds neats that have uh, no ambition. You're a dime a dozen with that. Different, you know. They get misjudged, you know, because people are dumb, people are stupid, and people want to point their finger at them. They want to feel like you know they they want to get that power. Like yeah. You know, I can put you down because so, that makes me feel better about myself. And it's just, it's such a childish, primitive mindset. You don't make me feel better about myself. You gross me out. Uh, but this show has existed for almost nine years now. And it's always been like when people who lack a major amount of self-awareness make YouTube videos like yours... The show watches them and critiques them. Somebody who met watching Drunken Peasants could have had a baby with the person they met watching Drunken Peasants. And even though legally in the state of Texas they couldn't have a relationship, that baby could grow up in Texas and could be old enough for Jared to have a very spiritual connection with. No. Oh. That, <laughs> no. And people like this, you know, adults... They're just very immature. They have immature minds. And um, they have a lot of growing up to do. That's all. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. Got a lot like, of growing up to do. Better put those toys and blue bins in your bedroom. Right. Can't have them laying out anymore. That's how Jared grew up. He's got all his fucking Ninja Turtles in those blue bins now instead of on his shelf. He thinks he's a man because he put his toys away. I was more grown up than him at 20 years old. Well, if this was a competition, you would win. Well, yeah, but we all lose because it's Jared. I don't lose. He exists. He, 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 oh, here's, you lose most of all. No, I'm I'm oh, a certified oh, you, winner. You no. Nope. Tall. I'm handsome. I'm smart. I'm funny. Jared affects me zilch, but I do think that he shouldn't have a platform because he chicken hawks on youngins. And that that's not appropriate. Is not appropriate. Well, EDP, really say, chicken so hawking on youngins, not best. appropriate. Um, I, I didn't really I know wish about D this. I wish EDP and Jared Genesis all the worst. Guy too well until the news. But wishes uh, and prayers about him really don't amount to much, so you know, uh, big Mr. deal. Uh, football guy or whatever. I, I don't like sports. I don't watch sports, but you know, I do like his personality. I mean, he seems like a likable guy. Uh, I like his intros, you know. 
I like his <laughs> taste in women. What's up, y'all? Pussy well, I shouldn't say crew. women. Yeah, they could go uh, cruise for for uh, toddlers together, right? <sighs> toddlers and tiaras? Nope. <laughs> it's a big That's nope. Shit like that. Eat that pussy. Uh, I, the guy's got a nice intro going for himself, at least. Uh, that's all I really know about the guy. He's got a nice gun collection. I like how he doesn't know anything about him. <laughs> but he's going to vouch for Except him. Except that he made an honest human mistake by trying to date a tween. Not even date them, just like meet them at a weird hotel somewhere. It's, yeah, I guess when I say date, I don't yeah. mean like take you out to a nice happy meal and some juice boxes. I meant like take them to a hotel somewhere. Yeah. Like when you order a prostitute and have a car date. That's the type of date I meant. Um, Even that's more ethical and acceptable than... The other. A prostitute? Yes. Yeah, at least they consent. I don't care right. about the law. Right. You know. Well, I guess that's wrong. <laughs> I mean, you got to care about the law to an extent. Well, I mean, the the idea of consent uh, is a law construct, right? I don't know. I don't know how we we define that one. I don't care about laws over prostitution and governance of your body when you're. A free thinking adult. <laughs> I guess. The thing is, bro, you don't need to be. But flexing I do believe you got to protect haters, them dude. kids. They're just keyboard warriors. Kids are like, dumb I know as what shit. He's doing. And you don't need to flex like that, dog. I know these kinds of people. They're just a bunch of dorks. Uh, that's all I'm really gonna say there. Anyways, guys, there's no need for me to make this a 10 minute video. Just remember, I don't get the whole 10 minute thing, but guys, whatever. We're I all, think that's another thing that people are like, yeah, you should make 10 minute videos. All human. We all make mistakes. Okay. Everyone deserves a second chance in life, and I don't think EDP deserves to be hated. That's just Drizzle Live feel. says a but, lot uh, of working girls are being forced into it. That's true, and that's not really consent at that point, right? The word force no longer is consensual. Just a, more of an argument for legalization. It's a lot easier to weed that sort of stuff out. If it's legalized and regulated properly. I just wish we could all traffic humans ethically. All right. Here's, uh... Jared has spent his life like a monk in his parents' house just focusing on his spiritual growth. He's a monk! And teaching himself karate. We should all be taking notes, to be honest. Daniel G., I don't know if you're being serious right now, but it sounds serious, so I'll, I'll agree. Anything for $5 or above, I'll agree with. There's your, there's your special for the day. <laughs> he has done a lot of things to me. So no, I don't regret calling him that word. Because any man, I don't care what skin color you are, any person who tries to steal your house and your home is a fucking <laughs> Shout out to Hannibal, who made that video. You can go see the whole version of it over on Hannibal and Monty's channel. I just like that as our Shanny intro. I have to say it is kind of lame putting your watermark over this because uh, I doubt you actually own the rights to it. Pretty sure Shani owns it. They so. probably own the rights to the watermark, though. Well, they put the watermark over it so it's like advertising their channel. Yeah. I kind of like it, though, because it covers up Shani's face. Oh, damn. <laughs> You're going to talk? You just started streaming. She's probably doing a mukbang. She's doing a fake cry. So, I've been on the phone all this morning. Morning? All this morning, I have been on the phone. Um, jeez. Got another update 
and um, I got some things I need to do. Sit ups. <laughs> um, so the arraignment here and happened with arraignment. Jason. Um, I wasn't there, so he had to, he had to feel like no one's there for him in the world. Apparently, he's in the county prison right now. Um, he's in, uh, because of COVID, all of the people are in isolation, so this dude has been like, this dude in has been like putting his butt up to the bars, saying, "Guys, over here! I dropped yeah. the soap over here, guys!" Yeah, yeah. Relation yeah. for several days now. Is she trying? Is is now she? She's trying to get sympathy for him because the last video we watched talked about what a piece of shit he was and how good of a mother she was and how big of a failure he was as a stepfather or whatever. In the county, well, Shani's an empath. I don't know if you know that. She has extreme empathy for those in her life and those around her. That's why she was so tightly knit to well, G-Man. To be fair, pretty much anyone in the county is around Shani. <laughs> yes, she has empathy for the entire county. Right. And, and they have him for simple assault, and the bail is ten uh, percent of five thousand. So $500 is we're looking at. I'm making calls to try to get the money right now um, to get him bailed out so at least he can. And also I am planning on getting the charges dropped for Yay. him. So what are the charges Freedom for though? Rev. Someone, Simple assault. Someone who like actually... Uh stalks the shit out of these people which i think is weird but maybe they would know she just said he got charged with simple assault so i think simple assault means you beat up a simple person or like simple at least the judge yeah. to understand the fact you that say this is caused by a medication error oh uh, it was a medication uh, error um totally i'm understood trying to that. get it through the police officer to get it dropped maybe i could get it dropped through the da um, so I got to Morton Dave I'm, says, wait. damn, County Rev, at one point you had $700,000. Wonder what happened to that. Obviously toilet paper. Funny how she didn't have him thrown in jail when he had all that money. Waiting for calls for that right now. She was the one beating him up. Um... Hopefully I can get that Egghead $500. says, so she went from crying about how he abused her to now bailing him out. I'm getting massive Stockholm Syndrome vibes. You think it's Stockholm Syndrome? I think it's people get angry, people press charges, people are no longer angry, and people miss the fact that they're now lonely and they want the person back. It's not Stockholm. They're probably both pretty fucking abusive. Sounds like she was. Uh, on she more has than one a history case. of violence. Yes. We saw and, the body cam footage. And now that she's calmed down a bit and realizes there's nothing better out there for her, she's like, come on back, beaten daddy county rev. Come back, babysit my kids so I can sit back and slurp ham sandwiches out of the toaster oven. There's an toaster oven. And at least he'll <laughs> not be in isolation where his mind is like absolutely going crazy. Because I can't even imagine what's going on in his mind right now. Like she probably thought G Man was uh, going to come in and play Captain Save a Shan. And uh, he, he was like, No, thank you. I'm too busy worshiping Christ. Affective disorder, so he's got to be hearing voices and seeing and seeing things because of the stress. He's not on his medication. Uh, I mean, that stops these. Is this a good environment for children? It sounds like uh, you guys need caretakers. We saw their last house. Right. We saw their car ride to their new house. We see the people they are on a consistent basis. 
this has never been a good environment for children. We just need to know if this is an environment where children can live. Right. I mean, it seems like they have a hard enough time taking care of themselves. Like foster care system sucks, right? I wouldn't want to shuffle these kids in the foster care system unless they absolutely had to be. Things from happening, you know, and the voices tell them, tell him to, you know, K himself. So, K himself? I'm very scared. The voices are telling him to um, kiss himself? What? And sexy because kissy voices of, of that factor, that factor. I don't think jail or prison is a safe environment for him because when he's in isolation, it it it, it, it without any medication, it affects him really bad. Um. So we're gonna see what happens, how it goes down. But you know, at least I know. He's okay. You know, at least I know he's... he's Elise? He's, Sounds like she's saying Elise. Yeah, she's Elise's, Elise's new, I know. She's Elise's new uh, lover it, now it, that she broke up with uh, Captain Content. Oh, my Dick God. What a, what a step down. No, Elise has a very open heart. Oh, it, so it's another one of those uh, relationships that she has with no physical contact whatsoever. Yeah, Elise Jordana is she gonna... is She is asexual. Uh, well, no, she might Jordan. have some physical contact now that Rev's in jail. Shane needs somebody to wipe her. Oh, that kind. Elisa <laughs> will be a very kind wiping partner. He's, I'm sure. You know, I guess physically safe, maybe not mentally or emotionally safe, but um, they haven't established any visiting hours for him or anything, so it's not like I can go down there and see him like I want to. Oh, oh, Shan. He told, uh, by the way, Jared, uh, a short time before he was suspended from Twitter, told Negative Creep that he was going to stalk her. Oh, that's cool. So I wonder if that was... Uh... Maybe. Jared Genesis has a history of making illegal... I want to say threats. They're they're threats. Stalking yeah. the st the stalking is a threat. A threat people of get stalking. threatened all all the. I, I mean, like people threaten to kill me on the internet so many times. Yeah, but do they do it from their open public face or from a? Little, oh no, no, no. Yeah, this is like somebody with a face on the internet as a person making a claim, right? Like it, it's one thing when it's a random on the internet. It's another thing when it's somebody who has something to lose yeah and jared you know has something to lose um not much so <sighs> let's move to the next video she's done so many of these here's another one at least she changes her clothes well, I mean, if Jared Genesis is the bar, right? Then uh, Shani I saw is... what what her house looked like, though. So I, it it reminds me of Jared had a big house all to himself. What it would look like, man? What if Jared had seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to blow? She had like disgusting, like unwashed dishes in every room. There, like, every room had like rotten, like. S like several like days old used dishes with rotten food on them in like every fucking room. There were multiple poop piles. Litter there box. Was litter box. There and was human. backed up human. Yep. Toilet stuff. Yep. There was, I believe, pee beds and stuff. It yep. was. It was not good. Yep. Mm. Did she just plop? I think she just did a bonsai drop. Dun, dun, dun. Do, 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 now she's singing do, another one, Bites the Dust. Do, do, is this a troll? Do, do, no, this is do, do, the point of view when you're getting a BJ from Shanny for Christ. Her fat cheeks don't make the gluck gluck sound. They do this another one, Bites the Dust song. Gluck, 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 gluck. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 the worst do, BJ. 
of all time. Uh, her pop just, career is soaring. I just went like negative hard uh, because you said that. Yeah, I like my. It's like Living a turtle. Now? It's like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to try and feed it? <laughs> Put a couple of snacks in there. See if it wakes up. What is the? Is this when she's gargling your your, your stepchildren? I hope not. I hope probably. <laughs> Hello, my fellow peoples. Oh yeah, I'm gonna oh. hum another one bites the fucking dust, baby. I'm gargling on your big balls. Huh? Oh my god. This thing's going. Another one uh, bites the dust. You're all like coming on, and I love you guys for it, man. You guys are fucking rocking, man. I'm just like rocking it. I think she's loving having him not there. I think, uh, I think that's why she seems like she's in such a good mood. She probably is in a good mood now because she just masturbated. She's probably in a bad mood before because she didn't. And she was like, oh, I'm so lonely. And then she was like, <laughs> oh, my God, I need to find someone who appreciates me. Oh, yeah, that, and then boo. after that, after that, she goes and pours a bucket of fried chicken in between her legs. <laughs> and now she's happy again. Yeah. In this world, trying to make this. Imagine how, like, fucking crazy everything is. And I'm like. All by myself and being a fucking superwoman and like calling this place and calling this place and like fuck me like so much fucking things to do. Superwoman. And, like, when's G-Man coming over, Shanny? Oh, he should be there right now. I'm actually pissed <laughs> he hasn't swooped in yet. Oh my god! I'm so mad he hasn't swooped in. <laughs> I'm fucking sick and I'm already fucking exhausted. Oh, Jesus Christ. So. Uh, what is going on in this stream? What have you said? Are you high? What you say? So, um. Yeah? I'm no I gotta Superman. wait tomorrow to get that bail posted, cause she's like, "Oh, you know what? I think I could just wait till tomorrow, right?" She's <laughs> waiting for people to donate. He's, he's already comfortable in there. I mean, uh, why why disturb? He's probably already gone to bed. I'll let him sleep there <laughs> another night. Someone donated the five hundred dollars, and then she realized she could buy pizza with right. it. Right. Now she's waiting on another day for more downloads. Why only? Why buy you know a few dozen? pizzas when you can just buy like a pallet of Totino's pizza rolls you know Shani would take the quantity I don't I wonder how much I pizza know. roll versus pizza you could get with 500 bucks I don't know I don't because that's a lot of work to cook those pizza rolls too like mm. if you just have pizza delivered you can just start eating it until it there's such an insane markup with pizzeria pizza but even then like pizza rolls aren't cheap mm. i can get a 90 bag of the generic one for like nine bucks okay so here's eight his, bucks here, here's the stipulation and you gotta cook what about them? at costco at costco they might have the name brand i don't know i don't i don't buy pizza rolls i'm not okay, slash so this I, isn't 3 a.m you know what? yeah i've to be honest with you I've never eaten a pizza roll in my life. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh. Um, I've eaten bagel bites, which yeah, are like bagel little... bagel bites are okay. They're not pizza rolls, no, though. No, pizza rolls are little pizza pillows. Right. I've never had those. I've never had a Hot Pocket. Oh, you never burnt your mouth when a fucking one explodes? I've burned my mouth on microwave shit, but not on a Yeah, these hot things pocket. will explode and burn your mouth and <laughs> yeah, burn Yeah, I've your heard face. the Jim Gaffigan bit. Yeah, they suck, but they're great. It's It's 10%. Of uh, five thousand, so that's five hundred. I have the five hundred G's. I was a picky eater as a kid, and there was only like ten things I would eat. And uh, I used to eat these microwave French fries. That was like my main like microwave meal. These frozen. Do they have the little, little tray that you had to put them on? That was no. like a, a silver I've tray. Those. I've eaten those too. Huh. 
this was different. They came in a, a red uh, cardboard box. They were called Micro Magic. Chet Lemon knows. Micro Magic Fries. And, uh, and I would, they came in twos. And I would cook two of them. And, like, I would salt the fuck out of them and squirt ketchup in the box and then, like, shake the box around. Like, close the box and shake yeah. it and get them all ketchupy and then eat that. Huh. I would eat that shit all the time. Bagel Bites was another one. I I ate those all the time. Yeah, Bagel Bites are adequate. Those, uh, those, uh... Microwave super pretzels, the big soft microwave pretzels. Yeah, those were hitting. I get them from Costco. Yeah, my my parents used to do Sam's Club, which is a lot like Costco. It's Walmart's Costco. Yeah. Um. And there was the uh, the giant thing of frozen egg rolls. I used to eat those all the time too. Egg rolls were hitting. Right here. So I got the five hundred dollars. Oh, she's like, look at this. To post him. Why is she holding? The it? only thing is the person. The, the only, only thin is Nah, it's not thin. <laughs> and the only thin. The only thin. And who posts a bail needs to have a fucking job. So what? I gotta wait because it's not gonna be me posting the bail. Oh, you need to have a job to get the the bondsman to give you the bond. Yeah, I think they take the five hundred dollars as like an initial down, and they keep it. And then if you guys run, they then will they try. Then they come after you. They, they hire they a come, bounty hunter to come get you. Yeah, they come after the one person that ran, and then they also come after you for the money in case they can't get the other person. So that's why you have to have a job so you can make payments. I had a friend who had a bounty hunter come to his house after him because he was an idiot and didn't show up to his DUI hearing. He just didn't show up. It's like, you think they're just going to forget about you? You know, and, and he showed up. And like shot a tear gas can through his front door because he had his front door open. Yeah. <laughs> After skipping court. And this dude just showed up and shot tear gas like right in through his front door. When he came out, he just like tackled him and handcuffed him and arrested him. Bounty hunters kicked in our door, tried to get my dad. And they had the wrong fucking apartment and like just kicked our door in. Broke our door. So it wasn't for your dad. No. They're they were like, you're coming with your us. Neighbor. They're looking and he for was like, neighbor. bullshit, I'm coming with you. And they're like, is your name da da da? He's like, no, you got the wrong fucking house. And they kicked their door in and broke the door. So it's just like a neighbor or something. Yeah, they're coming for a neighbor. Huh. That's crazy. Yeah. It's going to be the G-Man, so. Yeah, bounty hunter shit is crazy. Uh, it's it's going to be the G-Man. You know what? Uh, we wouldn't need. Yeah, it's crazy because instead of sending the actual police, uh, the government in certain jurisdictions will hire private bounty hunters to go and collect people that didn't show up for court or didn't pay bail or whatever and it's if we just got rid of a cash bail system which most western countries don't have uh that would solve that problem uh there shouldn't be your your ability to to be free when you're charged with a crime shouldn't be uh contingent on your ability to pay but the prison system is one of our biggest cash cows. Yeah, well, that needs to change too. Of like course, the, uh, the private prison system. But like we're like num the America's only number one in like being imprisoned and I believing remember, in angels. Uh, and I remember when I lived in Albuquerque, like near the courthouse, all that was around the courthouse was all uh, bail bondsmen. Yeah, uh, places. Uh, and uh, Jay Lethal did a bail bonds commercial, a local. Uh, bail bonds commercial in Columbus. That's it was pretty funny. hilarious. One step at a time. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Yeah, but shit. I'll give you the five hundred dollars and I'll G bail out Rev. Have, like, but you gotta let me ride that mountain. His time talking. Okay, to Jason G man. And like have him figure out how to do this stuff because like G man had to go through this stuff too. Oh, oh. She's crying on G-Man's shoulder. He's like, that's all right, baby. G-Man's coming to bail yeah. Rev out. You know, G-Man's going to be anger there. issues, too, and rage issues, too, and got in trouble for that shit before. So, like, like. It is the setup for, like, a, a weird porn, like, all right. I'll bail, your I'll bail your husband out on one condition. Yeah. Yep. Your husband might be behind bars, but you'll be behind ropes. My <laughs> he can handle this shit like a little bit more than me, man. But like, I gotta wait. 
and I don't want to wait, but I gotta wait. So, I'm gonna be patient, uh, and I'm gonna wait. You're, it, it sounds like you're in a really good mood. Cause G-Man's man, coming. I tell you. G-Man's coming hungry. tonight. I need some food. To bail yeah. Rev out tomorrow. I need some Is that food. what she said? Well, she said G-Man's going to be the one to bail him out. And then oh, she's getting bailed out tomorrow. You see this shirt? Look, you don't this think G-Man's going to drive right over gone. tonight? She said this is how skinny I've gotten. Yeah. <laughs> She's gotten so skinny that the uh, Christian cross on her chest looks looks like a a, a a pudgy little fat man instead of a morbidly obese fat man. <laughs> looks like a little tiny uh, bear hey, going hug me. Just coming in last night, Joel's on her extreme war posting tool lyrics, and she didn't catch on Lil Lil. Find that click ASAP. Oh God! Thank you, Ice. What happened? She was getting trolled by two. See this shirt? Look, this is how freaking skinny I've gotten. This is technically Jason's shirt, the Jesus Save shirt. You've seen him in it, but I can fit in it now. So I'm like, holy shit, I can fit in a medium shirt. It fills it out. Congratulations, no, Shani. It's a there's medium. no way that that's a medium men's shirt. There's no way. There's no way at all. I'm sure. Congratulations. No way. So, to get him mental help, that's what, to get him put in a facility. Like, I have to get down to like 160 pounds to wear a medium men's shirt. So, like. Facility <laughs> where know. it will help him. So. Gotta wait. Plus, it was a request from his uncle. That's not my money. That's his uncle's money. He wants me to bail him out. So, whatever. I'm doing it. It's a family thing. We're family. <laughs> Fuck. Like, people forgot what it means to be in a family anymore. People forgot what it totally is to support forgot that. people through their struggles and their mental health problems. Yeah, we forgot two days ago when you said like, you were seriously, if it gonna wasn't... leave him. That's why we forgot. Because you were on the ship out of town. But now you got G-Man coming in. You're a, you're a woman uh, without a man. G-Man's gonna come in and swing ding -a -ling into your fucking canyon. And then tomorrow you're gonna get Rev back. He's gonna clean up the Icky sticky mess that G Man leaves behind. Yeah. Uh, let's see what this is. <laughs> Crushing that Mountain Dew. The purple, bluish Mountain Dew. Hi, Gavin. Are you a happy boy? Cause you got your foods. You got your tuna, baby. You got your foods. What is happening? You want to give mommy some love? Mommy, baby. Oh no. I don't think I can listen to Shani do baby talk. Let's see. I'm gonna Van Gogh myself. I've been in and I'm on social media to like, let people know, like, if someone does suffer from a mental health crisis, don't give up on them. Like, take care of them, help them through it. You know, and I, I like, I think that's a good thing. I would want it. I know that if you were going through a mental health crisis, you would want someone to be there for you, you know? So, we're gonna work through this as a family through CPS and through the court system oh God. And, and through other social services. He's probably gonna have, oh, she also, well, this is so cool. She also um, talked about trying to get me in a program where I can get an actual um, home health aid to come over That'll and be good. help me out. Honestly, um, 
if Rev comes back and they start getting people in this house to help them out and help them raise their fucking kids, yes, please. If that's what it takes, if getting an official person in this fucking house is going to make their lives better, then good. Because I'm struggling really bad. Yes. Yeah, because he does need help, you know. At least now professional help is involved. Yeah, exactly, Carrie. So many ignorant people, they just they just want to give up on people That's over shit. Ignorant. And it's like, do you get it? Like, even, like, the CPS worker actually was talking to his counseling center over this. And even the counseling center, his own counselors, his own counseling psychiatrist... Center. Agrees counseling that is like he needs the mental when you have to take more than one insulin. You got one insulin, two insulin, three insulin. Ha ha ha. We're counseling. The health uh, court compared to uh, the criminal court. They both agreed that this was his medication. They all agree to it. So, you know, Zero Ron asks if they house. legit have fans. I'm sure they do. There's so many kinds yeah. of people out there. Jared has legit fans, too. Yeah. Um, Stabby Hook says she's better looking than Billy and Drag. You're about the dumbest person ever, Stabby. You said that? You know oh. that's a lie. Oh. You know I was so fucking hot in drag. You really actually are a shit person. You're, 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 the things you say Man, in that I'm chat are pathetic wrong dumb you're the you're the biggest problem in this world is people like you stab mchugs i hope rev comes and beats you as a little kid <laughs> i'm trying to save a man's life not destroy it so yeah it's bizarre and then oh carrie i need to post what you you gave me a little a little while ago about abilify Abilify. Did you know that Abilify can cause, um, what was it? What was it, Carrie? You can talk about it in the audience. Did you but know that like, Abilify can cause like, beating um, children? Are they dropping charges? I don't know yet. His counseling center is, his counseling center, CPS, and, um, his psychiatrists are going to be talking to the DA on trying to get the charges dropped because it is a medic, it's a medical thing. It's not criminal thing so they're all going to be talking about it and helping him and cps is um going to talk to jason i think before for mental health oh my god this goes you on. know i i miss in movement in range of movement so it's like how can someone drive if you can't do this with your foot or this like the most you see with my foot i'm like you see like that. That's how far I can go with my foot. Shani twitches her ankle like and it's zero to 60. She got barely lead be able to move it because of all the bone growth that's around my ankle. Bone so, growth? There's that little factoid. So it's like now CPS, they, they, they know that I'm having problems and they know that Jason's not in my life so they'll be able to get me rides and stuff to get to where I need to go. So she's getting rides uh, from CPS too? Good. Does Help. that really happen? Uh, they have disabled rides in a lot of areas. Okay. Um, yeah and thank you Dessa for praying for me. She I really got the sugar all foot. the prayers all the positive energy like everything. Um, I'll give you prayers and positive really energy like, Shani. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful pray for everything and all the support and love you guys are giving me. I really, I'm really I'm going to pray to the God. EDP God. <laughs> Muhammad. <laughs> because the I EDP think God. in order to combat this like cancel culture thing that's been going on, we got to show everyone love, affection. Shani is basically a monk who has spent her life living off of other people, barely leaving her bed, diagnosing her own mental leaving. illnesses. Diagnosing. They rich Sue and Abilify now. We should all be talking notes, to be honest. Uh, yeah, actually. I'm Suing. I'm starting to realize we're That's the hilarious. bad guys, and all these people are just out here living their best lives. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, compassion, empathy, and I'm really starting to see that in the world, is most people are looking at cancel culture as just straight-out slander and disgusting. Like, Disgusting. because everyone deserves a second chance. Everyone everyone deserves a third, fourth, fifth, sixth chance. No, everyone gets everyone a second chance. They just have to earn it. It takes time. It takes effort. 
You don't just to come back. You don't get to come back and say, "Hey, I'm a human, guys. Accept me." While I continue to DM twelve year olds, you got to do a whole lot of work to prove that you're not a freaking sicko or an abuser a or whatever sicko. the hell it is. You don't want to be a sicko. One deserves to be able to move forward in their life and and get better. Most importantly, from whatever happens to them, everyone deserves that. Everyone gets what they deserve. You know, would you take a baby and, like, shame them and, like, say, I'm going to give this baby up for adoption because they fell many down? People, and many people give babies up for adoption for reasons that other people would keep their babies over. It's, it's a sliding scale, Shan. I'm giving up any baby that I think might grow up to be like you or Rev. They didn't quite know how to walk right. That's essentially what cancel culture does is someone falls down and they don't let someone get back up from the ground. They just keep keeping them on the ground, kicking them, kicking them, kicking them. It's kicking called a pinfall, Shan. You ever seen WrestleMania? <laughs> they can't get up by the three count. They're done. We all get a three count. Or we lift their arm three times and if it falls. And they're through, done. Yeah. But at the last moment, they go like that. Yeah, that that's all it takes, Shan. Now, instead of doing the humanitarian thing and building them up. and The humanitarian thing a, and building them up. You know, reintroducing <laughs> them to society as a good person, as, you know, someone who can be loved and respected. People go through shit. And, and people act out sometimes. It happens and <laughs> it requires empathy and understanding when that happens because that's just essentially a human being falling down like a baby. Like a baby. So, like, help oh, them like get Ethan back Ralph up. Oh, like Ethan Ralph when he got beat up in he, Portugal. He fell down like a baby. Get someone back up when they're down, not kick them while they're down. That's what cowards do. That's what people who who have this fake sense of power do. That's what bullies do most importantly. Yes, I'm a bully. I bullies kick kids. Keep people down get over it. When they get knocked down, not build them up. Um, so that's how I feel in life, man. And I'm happy where my life is going right now. I'm, I'm glad, glad Shani's happy. Isn't, I hope the know, kids are happy. Isn't going to return home right away and be able to go in a facility where he can get some help. Um, I'm glad that my sons are able to go and be able to go to these like art classes this summer, so they won't be they won't be stuck in the house and worrying about things. They'll be able to enjoy. The summer that does sound peers. good. I do think if so this I, continues, uh, the CPS is coming in, watching these kids, getting these kids into programs, their life is going to get dramatically better after all of this. So I hope this is the case. I hope that someone from the state comes in and gives opportunities to these kids that the dumb fuck parents couldn't give them while still allowing them to be with their parents as long as they're under a watchful fucking eye. That's better than foster care. Just getting ripped out and sent somewhere random. That's, you don't always get good foster parents. I'm happy about that. Sometimes, that you know, they're people who make kombucha and make you do slave labor and take you to the farmer's market. And then late at night, they try and drive off a bridge with you in the back. Like that, that, like, that happens. CPS is going to help me get to my doctor's appointments and they're going to help Jason get to his doctor's appointments and therapy. Like I'm grateful. I'm so grateful for CPS. Um, I've never that heard like that sentence before of feeling like harassed and, and like cheated by the system with CPS. But really this time around, I'm really embracing CPS being in my life because I really do need the help. So whoever well, you know have, what? That's good. I've had CPS take kids away from me. They weren't my kids. Oh, thank you. I needed well. to talk to them today anyway. So <laughs> you did me a favor because my social worker came over today. We had a great conversation. Um, 
you know, and she put things in a good perspective. And she's getting Jason the help he needs because she cares about him too. Because she knows it wasn't him. She knows it was the drugs. She, She's known Jason for about 10 months now. Evaluating well, they must have the social family. worker come in after they moved from the the yes. shit house. Yes. That was about a year ago, right? I think so. When they did all that, uh, like, driving across the train tracks. And I think. So, Time flies. like, yeah. whatever. I'm happy. Like, she asked me today, she's like, why do you keep doing this, Shannon, knowing that there's so many people always trying to get you in trouble with the law? And I told her, because of my fellow BPDs, for people who suffer from oh, mental God. health, for people who go through problems, that's why I continue to do it. Shady, the <laughs> humanitarian. I do it for my fellow beeps. Good job, Shanny. <laughs> yo, 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 beep represent. Shout out to all my beeps. We out here on the internet going crazy. <laughs> because it helps them. That's why I do it. That's why I continue to do this, to help you guys. So you guys don't feel like you're alone if you're in a bad situation. So you feel like like you're not the only- By the way, BPD could be borderline, but it could also be bipolar. Like, they're both called BPD, so- Are they both BPD? They, they're both abbreviated as BPD sometimes. I, th I think BPD is always borderline personality disorder. That's why bipolar. I, I I don't know if they ever do BPD with that. I've heard that. I've heard bipolar disorder, but I haven't heard it referred to as BPD before. I've heard it uh, referred to from both. Well, but... whichever beeping you're beeping, you beeps keep beeping. Yeah. Stay the fuck out of my yard. One that goes through fucking crap because no one really talks about this shit because they're too ashamed to talk about this shit. But someone has to talk about it. I think all things that in all different ways in life and all different problems in life should be talked about and shouldn't be like have the shame thing over them because they've gone. I don't shit. know if anybody's shaming you f for BPD uh, unless you want to blame your inability to mask uh, on BPD. But a lot of the shit you do and say. You can't put that all on BPD, right? You're out here choosing words that even in a beep rage fest, uh, most people wouldn't choose. Like that entire intro to this thing tonight calling G-Man the bomb. We don't see everybody with BPD out there and bombing. That's not how that works. Showing that you've gone through it and you're going through it, but yet you're surviving is a good testament. I think Tilo Browns is a person with BPD that bums me out. What, what, what bums you out that she's uh, here for all the people out there who have BPD? Does that bum you out that she's your superhero? I feel like has Shani actually been diagnosed with BPD too? Like she diagnosed herself with coronavirus. Like, it's what's more likely that uh, Shani is has self-diagnosed her BPD uh, correctly, or Jared has self-diagnosed his black belt correctly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a kind of weird comparison, but uh, <laughs> no, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if Shani had beeps. That'd be weird if a black belt was a diagnosis. <laughs> like, I diagnose yeah. you with black belt. You can kick people's ass, like, on average, you can kick most people's asses. <laughs> I, you, I diagnose you with black belt disorder. Take two of these and karate chop in the morning. Your hands must be registered as lethal Prince weapons. Sore says, I have BPD and it's very manageable with the right treatment. I've been in therapy for two years and my mental state has gotten so much better. Yeah, I think uh, seeking help for BPD is a smart thing. If you think you have it, go check it out. If you get checked out and you don't have BPD and you're still fucking up, figure out why. Do you have the EDP BPD? EDP BPD, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. no. Boys, 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 boys. Girls to men. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Everybody gets a little BPD. <laughs> Going forward. So, like, I'm proud of myself. 
Oh, I'm God. proud of myself. I'm proud she of my She literally sons. patted herself on and the I'm back. And I'm proud of Jason. Well, it was more like I the shoulder. Gonna do everything he We're going to do a spin off of Drunken Peasants podcast. It's going to be called Broken Peasants. Flop. Dr- ass. Dr- 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 drama. Dr- dramedy. Drama comedy. It's a BPD. It's a BPD podcast. Broken Peasants. And I'm proud of this little guy. H- Everybody has HPV he stabby. Quit dropping stupid lines in the chat, you pathetic fucking mule. No, you want to see the boys. No, you want to lay down in the corner. Mule. Okay. Lay down in the corner. It's okay. I wish you lived with me. We would be great friends. Dude, you can be my friend here. It's cool. Shanny out here making friends. You know, I'm glad Shanny's happy, though. The last one. The last video, it was pretty hard watching her cry around. Uh, it, it wasn't It wasn't my favorite thing to do. Now, watching her smile has become my favorite thing to do. All this stuff here, because so many people are like, call me, call me, tell me what's going on, tell me what's going on. And I'm like, I need a live stream. <laughs> Princessor in our chat, who uh, has been working with her BPD for a couple of years now. So the problem a lot of people with BPD have is they have no self-awareness and don't take personal accountability to their mess-ups. Self-awareness is the first step to managing BPD symptoms. If you're not aware of it, you know, it's rough because it can really cause you to do some crazy stuff, some, some out there stuff. So if you guys are, if you guys think that you have problems, this is my PSA, those of you watching at home, if you think that you might suffer from BPD, borderline personality disorder, is that the right one? Borderline personality yeah, yeah, disorder. Yeah, that's... The first thing you should do is look into a mirror and say, am I a fuck? And then BPD will say, yeah, you're a fuck in your head. And you'll be like, yeah, yeah, you're a fuck, you fuck. Everybody thinks you're a fuck. And then you'll be like, oh, I need to go to a doctor. That's, that's all you got to do. The more I... you know live stream there's way too many people asking the same question all right i'll live stream i'll give people a heads up you know she's like medicated um, or something here and i'm happy and um, maybe she's happy because I'm, she's getting some because he's gone not just because he's gone though like she's talking to her her whatever they, they said the woman was her social conductor worker. Yeah, her social worker and the social worker is giving her options for her kids to get out of the fucking house and bring people over to help her because she can't clean up after her own kids and stuff. Like, like she's going to have somebody to help her. So I can see why she'd be happy if all this comes into fruition. I really hope she follows through, continues to be Superman by making phone calls to the authorities. It's all, it's all important stuff. Looking forward to seeing where life takes me. You know, I'm hoping, like... With all these programs that I have to go to now, because of everything. She has to, so there's like required, it sounds like group therapy or something. Yeah. That I'll be able to find some friends in the real life, in the RL, you know what I mean? Because I I do need friends, I'll be honest. I don't have any real life friends. You know, this sounds like a good attitude, if she can stick to it. Here. Maybe if I go to Duluth, I have a lot of friends in Duluth, but here, no. Duluth? Isn't that in Minnesota? Isn't that like on the Canadian border in northern Minnesota? Huh. I have no Go to shit. Duluth. One minute, guys. I think they live in Pennsylvania. <laughs> One minute, guys. God damn it, kids. Shut the fuck up. I left Hot Pockets on the bathroom floor for you. You don't even come in here. I'm doing it live. <laughs> hey, you fucking shitbag. Um, I can read lips. Yeah. They're saying stink breath, stink breath, stink breath. Jeez. And it really messes someone's psychology up. Like, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling like you want to be numb, please don't pick up the bottle, guys. Don't pick up the bottle. Please don't pick up the bottle. That's the most offensive it's thing Shane has ever said. It's not worth going down that path. Because, like, just... 
Just let Jason be the example of, like, not going in alcohol. You know, because you saw him go through the wet brain. You saw him... The wet brain? Um, I've never heard of that. Go through bouts of anger and, 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 and rage because of it. Like, it's not good for anyone, alcohol. Plus, it's not good for your heart either. She just always thought she had time to get her life together. I'm so sorry, Carrie. Hi, wise guy. How are you? Um, so yeah. <sighs> it's been a busy day for me. Busy. Two. So here's hoping uh, things work out, right? Yeah, of course. Let's hope that Rev comes back and doesn't do anything fucked up again. And the kids go to the damn summer camp and get showers and square meals. They bring up fucking meals on the wheels for those kids. Clean. Yeah, someone comes in from the county that washes toilet seats and cleans out litter boxes. Please. Please. So. No, Rev. That's oh my god, pot dude. Pot. Oh my god. No, Rev, that's my chicken pot pie. A lot of people think of Shanny for Christ is Erica Cartman. My brain is so wet right now. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh. My brain is so wet right now. Billy's oh, seat yeah. is so wet right now. A lot of people think that uh, I get uncomfortable uh, under pressure when I'm looking at pretty girls. So, uh, I, uncomfortably, my stomach has turned a little bit and I got water uh, bootied. Um, I've been farting like crazy in here. The baby birds I watched grow, grow up in the last three weeks flied away today. Well, did, they like jumped out of the nest. Today. Did you cry a little bit? I was sad because I yeah. watched them every day. I watched them grow were you, from... Were you proud? I, I don't you know. Help, you helped keep them alive. I did. Yeah. Well, here's the thing though. I was in my backyard and in my backyard... There's a little mini nest, and it's on the ground, and it's hidden in a place that is insane. But I, I captured some photos. Look at these little things. You can see the hairs on the plants. So that shows you how zoomed in this photo is. They're little mini baby birds. When I got close enough, they opened their mouths, um, thinking I was the mama bird coming to feed them. A, no spiritual connection. No, they're just little birds. Okay. Just making sure we don't have to worry about you now, Ben. <laughs> what? If you had a spiritual connection to these underage birds. birds. No, they're cute. Yeah. That is cute. It's weird, like, because they're just like little ball meat lumps at first, and then they grow into birds. They're little Very meat. fast. They're too. little meat balls? They are. I they're mean, meatballs, yeah, meatballs. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is like a type of sparrow or finch. We have finches around here, too. Cute. Yeah. It's so cute. Yeah. For those of you that want to donate money to these birds, Ben's going to have to buy a lot of bird seed now that he's a, a oh, fucking no. mother of uh, seven new nests. No, the, it, it, they can't even eat bird seed right now. Yeah, it's expensive bird food that must be bought now, the guys. The mom has to, like, it's so gross, actually. The mom brings them, like, chewed up worms, and then the mom eats their poo-poo. Like, yeah. she brings shit Pate. for them to eat, and they poop it out, and then the mom, when she comes back, eats the poo-poo and keeps Shandy going. It's gross. 63 it's very gross. Swamped. Billy, more tip money. Trigger Lewis, I don't know if that's true. I don't think that's true at all. I think if you gender swap me, you'd get like... Natalie Portly. My mother's never ate my poop, but she has spit food into my mouth. <laughs> One out of two ain't bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a poo-poo platter. Rabbits eat their own poop, too. Yeah, I've seen that, too. I had... Um, when I lived in Albuquerque, I had these neighbors that, like, raised rabbits in their backyard. And 
two of them escaped and I just kept them as pets and they were two males and I got I bought them a huge cage to live in uh, and they would just have sex with each other constantly like you'd hear the the, the humping the brrrr, and there was one that was like clearly the dominant one but every now and then he would give it up to the other one he was and a they, switch they rarely but it would happen every once in a while he's and like, all right you little fucker clean most, me out most bunnies most male bunnies you would buy at a pet store are, are neutered because male bunnies are very aggressive when when they have their junk and my mine were not neutered so they were like insanely aggressive they would spray piss like <laughs> Out of the fucking cage, they would just spray like their piss. It was the craziest thing ever. But I rescued them. Uh, I felt bad for them. I just didn't have the money to get them fixed, so I just had these horribly aggressive bunnies. How that, old were you? Oh, in my mid twenties. Was there internet at the time? Yes. You probably could have looked what up how to. Was there internet at the time? You probably could have looked. Do you think the <laughs> did you have access to the internet at the time? I, I don't know. Yeah, I did. Was. Would you be able to look up whether or not you could do the neutering at home, like a home neutering? That's crazy talk, dude. Huh. That's insane, crazy talk. Yeah, I don't. That suggest, you would even think that's an option. I don't suggest you guys look up how to do home neutering either. Um, here's Beardson Beardley versus Big Tech. And I don't. I think it happened on this uh, this Britney girl show where she sits there and doesn't say anything and just lets other people do. I'm everything. blonde. Yeah, that's Hitler basically. Was, Hitler was based. You guys should dress and drag for a trip so all the kids in the hall. Only if we get to show our dicks off, all the kids in the hall. They did do that. Agent, some dumb meaning. But yeah, she like I've watched so many of her clips. And she doesn't say anything. She's like looking down at a computer. I'm like, this is your show? You're hosting it and you don't say anything at all? Like, wow. Uh, talk about life on easy mode. On this girl, it, this e-girls channel. Oh. I yeah, I guess I have home. to. It's awesome. It's really great. Oh, yeah, it really is. is. I'm, I'm so excited about being here right now. I, especially. So I don't know why it's still screen. I guess maybe they're just in a Discord call why? or something. This is great. You I actually are. This. You literally are. Yeah, you know it. I'm fucking stoked, dude. Yeah, yeah. I called yeah, Beardson yeah. and asked him to show up. He did. It's true. He he put the the beard signal out like fucking Batman. I called him up on his house phone from my house phone that we have attached to the walls in our kitchen. I haven't watched a lot of this girl's sh show stuff. Um, the only time I ever had the interactions with her was on uh, in Stardust Discord. And... She was answering questions and then ran off to get somebody else to answer for her. And uh, it was pretty, pretty. Wait a minute. Pathetic. Tell me what I think. Yeah, it was basically what she did was pretty pathetic. Now she's got her sunglasses on during stream, probably so she can do damage control on her cell phone with one of her eight alt right boyfriends. She's playing trad wife to running them all. You know she's got like nine little Nazi boyfriends sending her them big funds. Yeah, I'm, I'm for it. Well, that's old man shit. <laughs> I got, he got he got out the uh, plastic cup with the string attached and uh, pulled them. No, I Pretty just good. like dude. I come. I like. I was like, oh, let's see who's streaming on cozy. I just got like a new mouse. I'm like hyped about it and everything. I come home, fucking cozy. Everyone's talking shit like whatever. So what what, just, what did you get? What? What did, what did you get mouse wise? I got the Air the new Steel Series Airx 9X wireless. Okay, uh, bro, it's pretty Lit. sick. It's like a cool little MMO. It's pretty mouse. sick. Um, I'm so like hesitant it. with wireless mouses. Like I don't know why. I'm just retarded, I guess. No, I've never had any issues with them. So uh, you know, we're gonna try it out. If it sucks, then I'll just return it. Tech whatever. support is this why big uh, tech trips on him because he's gonna return a Steel Series. <laughs> yeah, I see my name in the title and all this shit and fucking. Drama, so I figured I'd hop in and clarify my position because people are fucking retarded, I guess. Like, no one can understand. They are. Like, whenever I say something, like, what I fucking mean, they have to, like, what did Beardson mean by this? Um, Does he not like Britney anymore? Uh, it, you know, let's, you don't like the other Britney for sure. No, let's analyze sure. that. <laughs> let's analyze yeah. that. Uh, it's just so fucking gay, dude. And fucking, of course, big tech's here. What's that supposed to mean? Maybe. 
Well, the hell is of that course, to mean? big tech. You know, the pointless drama. Big tech. Ah, oh, I'm here. <laughs> well, what's that supposed to mean? What's that supposed to mean? It means mean? you're a fucking drama whore. Ooh. Yeah, well, well, what's that? Sp- fight. <laughs> no, oh, right, fight, yeah, dude. You can't. You can't stay away from it, bro. I'm over here making the most interesting thing for, of the day happen, and you got to come and glom on. That's exactly what's going on, actually. Yeah, you got his it. face yeah. is on the screen. His name is in the title. Ten dollars. I don't. I think he's allowed to really glom on. Nice. The All these people simping up, for bro. Beard Sydney for the content. Hope you're enjoying your time Pathetic. on Cozy. Pathetic yeah, dorks. Not See, no, that's the first time she's talked. How many minutes Saga, are we into Saga this? The chat. I think. We I think. Of, Saga for the chat. We got a lot of alliteration in here with both of Beards and Big Tech, Brittany Bibble. This is it's riveting. This content. is the new uh, comedy panel, everyone. This is yeah. I just want to make sure the divorce and everything. Yeah. You know what hey, the wow. real hey oh, <laughs> got him, dragon. Yeah, fuck Steel Series. My St- Steel Series wireless headset is busted because the stupid fucking charging point no longer connects to my my USB to charge. So I got dead headphones. Fuck Steel Series. I gotta go buy new ones. Real. The real. What's real a good brand to buy, that, guys? Uh, I think you're actually intimidated, Beardson, because big tech coin is rising. And oh, is that what it is? Maybe I'm just like tired. Ooh, I think, I think it's real every fucking one of my streams. That's why I banned you from my chat. Oh, <laughs> got him! Oh, is, is that how much power I have? Is that Beach one little chat? Bush, slap fight. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just inconsiderate ah. and rude, and I don't, I don't really appreciate it. So, it's yeah. like I'm, like I'm making content, and then you're like, "Hey, Beardson, let's talk about me for a minute." And I'm like, "No, I don't." Kind of like, so. kind of like how Brittany was making content yesterday, reviewing the Jaden stream, where he's talking about me, and then you came and stomped on the whole thing and shut it all down and made it about you. Uh, no, I was calling out the fact that people are getting way too obsessed with drama. But if that's what you, yeah, hey, that, exactly. was, that was that wasn't in, that wasn't inconsiderate though, right? I don't care. No, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, what do you mean? Like, drama's fucking gay. I'm sick of it. Everyone's obsessed with fucking drama all the time, dude. And that's it's a problem. And like, I'm sorry. I think when you have people like you know Baked Alaska and Dalton's like live in D.C. and like all these other people were live like doing awesome shit. And then you have like, I mean, it wasn't like a condemnation of Britney, and it never really was meant to be. But yeah, oh, five, is he trying to get it? Five hundred niggas watching some uh, fucking uh, watching an e girl watch e drama, like that's some gay fucking shit. I'm sorry, jealousy. Right? I'd rather watch Britney not say anything watching the stupid content than watching Beardson watch the stupid content and then say his stupid commentary on it. At least nothing is better than your dumbass mouth opening, Beardson. You jealous little prick. You five foot nothing dork. Uh, we like, and, and it's, it's not gay on on Britney's part or whoever's Eric fault. Sennheiser is a good like, brand. Uh, you know, I'm talking, you know, particularly about the fucking Groypers here. It's like you're we're watching what a fucking Jaden stream. It's, it's fucking boring as shit. Like instead of like, oh, she's, like she's spanning herself now. So much on our only fans. On, on our fucking like literal 50 viewer enemies here. Like maybe we just support the people that are like making cool content. That's the point that I was trying to make. It's a good point. 50 viewer enemy. Up, there's literally, there's literally so much, there's so much, there's game, so much stuff. Nick there's literally so much stuff going on right shut now. Shut up, dude. Bro, let honestly, the other fuck up, Big Tech. I'm like, I'm just like, I'm really getting sick of your shit, dude. Honestly, mm-hmm. like your whole fucking shtick of like just acting like an asshole towards everybody and being like, well, why are they mad? I'm just being an asshole to them. Like, dude, I'm getting, I'm like really getting sick of it, dude. All you do is like stir shit. And you're like, I'm just trolling. It's like, yeah, you're no fucking better than Medicare at this point. If this is the way you're gonna fucking act all the time, dude. Well, well, at least Medicare has the DNC to get cancer. And, and I, I don't understand. Oh, that bombed. understand what this is. Like, this thing that annoyed me is that I don't... You, you like, want me to get uh, cancer, uh, Joseph? Uh, again, it's like, oh, you're a Christian. You can't make jokes. Uh, fuck off, dude. What I'm trying to say is that, like, no, 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 no. You can literally... Obviously, you're here, you're a streamer, you're someone that streams on this platform, and that's fine. I don't give a shit. I don't think anyone gives a shit. But the point is, you Seems keep like you doing do. this thing where you attack people, and first of all, I will not, I will not, let's go, you used to, you used to, I don't know who the British guy is. Suck up to me. And then you become this weirdo that fucking hates me, because I like, I don't know, what did I say, something that offends you? 
and then you climb on the next oh, rung. Oh, you oh, go through the oh, next. Oh, you know, you get. You know, you. Okay. Well, I, I calls you balls. Oh no. No offense, I don't really need you sticking up for me here. I, I I think I can handle it, but I appreciate the input. I don't want this to turn into like a big shit on big tech. I don't, I don't hate big tech or anything like that, but I, I just I'm getting really like sick of this behavior where like you start shit with people and get, then really they get mad, and he, then he's like, "Well, I don't know why they're mad at me. Uh, I'm just acting like an I'm punk rock with Nazism, man. Asshole, like to them. Um, I'm a gamer, dude, with racism, and and it is just I mean, old, I, honestly. I, I, I don't. I don't want you to think I was like doing that. It's just that no one else was here to defend you, and I know you probably didn't even need it. Like you probably don't care, but it's just I can't. Like I, I was told, oh, there's a stream about this bits and bits and bits, and and you weren't even here when people were shit talking, and it's like, what I, is she doing? I don't know. Like I, <laughs> I, 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 I felt like he's chime in. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're. Uh, I, I know you did. If you keep doing that, it actually raises your heart rate and, rate and makes you hotter. No, you're fine. It's just I'm here now, so I want to I want to handle it myself because like I'm in a bad mood, honestly, and uh, like I just want to fucking duke it out at this point. Like I'm fucking I'm I'm, I'm, in, I'm fed up at this point. I had to literally sit there for two hours and listen to fucking Kai and Big Tech and Tenorio argue with one another because they were all too fucking immature. A fucking forty year old man too immature to just be like, hey, I'm sorry, let's just drop it. You know, like this is <laughs> it's like, and then literally the next day it all gets fucking started up again. Uh, it's like this is ridiculous at this point dude uh actually yeah these two arguing is not that great we're gonna move on to something else here's nick talking about ralph apparently there was some big drama uh today with this flamenco guy who's a streamer on cozy uh was a stream surprise surprise there's mr swirly accusations against flamenco on the right that never happens, right? They never accuse one another of being uh, Mr. Swirlies ever, right? No, of that course never gets not. used. The the throwing around that your enemy is a uh, Plato-file is uh, a Mr. Swirly is impressive, but the idea that um, some of these guys do things and admit to things that would make them that is even funnier. Streamer is a streamer on YouTube, and I don't really want to get into the drama. I don't know the I don't know the lore there. I don't really know the whole story. I was traveling all day, but I will say it is kind of funny because, like a couple months ago, all this drama started. Drama with like a billion people, like and just crazy, stupid shit for months. And I guess it all goes back to, it was Ralph versus this guy Flamenco. And they had a feud, they had beef. And mistakenly, and this is my mistake, you know, I'll, I'll own it. I jump on a stream and they were both in there. <coughs> and I say, oh, okay, what's the beef? You know, what's going on? And they say, oh, well, you know, and they explain what it is. And I said, well, I don't know. I mean, it sounds like Ralph is right, but that's just me. And then it was like, all bets were off. Then I'm getting attacked, then I get dragged into it, then next thing I know I'm debating Medicare, and then it's a big panel, and then everybody's shitting on me, and then people are quitting. <laughs> and it, so I turned his whole thing. He's trying to walk back on it. He's trying to reverse how bad it made him look. Look, guys, I realize now that my favor has been completely lost in the community. Now, it was completely lost in the world prior to that. But the community, at least, thought I was based and red pill. Streaming from the waiting room at a doctor's office. He's probably going to get his fucking uh, booster shot. Now I just love taking sides. It, this looks like a shitty hotel room. I like taking sides. He's it's, at the Howard Jones. Sort of like they always have like the desk and the chair in it. Fatal flaw. I love fighting. Okay, I like to fight. This is not walking it back. I, you know. This is totally not walking it back, guys. I'm not walking it back. That's how I felt. That was my opinion. Um, I, I don't, you know, I don't take that back or anything. In retrospect, though, it's like, was it worth it? You know, if that stream never happened, probably would have avoided a lot of drama. Um, some people like the drama, though. Some people think it's fun. Some people think it's uh, unnecessary. I think it's all kind of harmless and uh, silly. At the minimum, it's... Uh, it gives people something to talk about. It gives people. Has he said anything really yet? 
Uh, he's been saying that him taking Ethan Ralph's side is why the world has been shitting on him. He's That's not all of it, blame. but it's, it's part of it. He's, he's, he's floating the blame over that way, and now he's going over how much he's fallen in the last he has. two months. No reason to, I don't know, check out the site. But in any case, you know, I go on the stream, and I just love picking a side. I love just like, what, drama? Oh, it's just because he likes picking a side. A fight? I, I think he likes fight. picking I a booger. Pick a side in the fight. I want to get in on the fight. <laughs> and That's why I'm like, I think Ralph is right. And you know what? Fuck Mediger and all this. And it turns out this big thing that's now, you know, seems to finally kind of be fizzling out. Um, but I will say now it's a little bit funny. It's kind of come full circle, hasn't it? A lot of these dramas are kind of coming full circle. And it's like, you know, did you trust the plan? Did you really, did you trust the plan? Because it all goes back to this drama. Between Ralph all goes and back to this drama and between Ralph and Flamenco. When I went on with Medicare and I told Medicare, I laughed at him for getting cancer, even though my own mom has cancer. Maybe that was part of it. I don't know. A lot of mistakes were made. I just wanted to pick a side, though. I wanted to pick the side of Ethan Ralph and and the side of cancer. My mom has it for God's sake. Like, like this, this guy literally shit on Ethan Ralph or on. Medicare for having cancer while defending Ethan Ralph when his own fucking mom is suffering from cancer. Yes. Like, this dude is short-sighted. He even said uh, criminal acts are based, but when people he doesn't like commit them, he acts like it's a big outrage. Yeah, he was all about criminal acts when Baked Alaska committed them. Right. Because he's a fucking little twerp that has about four friends they're the most degenerate loser people you could ever meet, and he loves them because they will never leave him because he's a, a pathetic degenerate himself. He's a cum detective. He's literally... A cum detective. He's literally a fucking uh, flip-flop, alt-right shill turd. Like, like, if I was in the alt-right, I would think this guy was a whiny little twerp, a little punk, a little prick. I wouldn't want him on my side. Pedophile. Whoa. So could you say that, like, uh, I was vindicated? Could you say that Ralph was vindicated? I, maybe you can. Either way, you know, people are asking me, people are texting me, oh, did you see what's happening? What's your take? And, um, like, I didn't really read too much into it. I, I saw the Ralph stream I caught a little bit of it. Honestly, that that community is just like so, I know this is cringe to say, but it's toxic. It really is. I mean, you have in the span of 50 like two percent. weeks. 50%. Yes! We can't, we can't celebrate yet. We're only halfway there. Tip train! Let's get us to 60, guys. At least somebody like gets to 420. Who's on the other side is His like in an incestuous relationship with the sister. What? Which Ralph. Whoa, we've gone to a dark place. Uh, earlier this only week, dark if you're not searching on Pornhub. Well, they'll say stepsister, right? Step by step. This guy tucks or something. Again, I, I don't know. I'm Tell you what, Suzanne Summers was my stepmom. I don't know, man. Patrick Duffy was my stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I follow this stuff. I've been, I've been in New York. Yeah, what was going on in that house? And uh, then Cody shows up. Yeah, the cousin Cody living like, in the whoa. van outside. Like, if there was like a weird like porn-themed step-by-step. Cousin Cody is smashing weird. both sides. <laughs> Mark is having a three-way. The little nerd, the, the fucking albino Urkel, is going to have a three-way with fucking Alex and uh, the Dana Burger. It's going to be rough, dude. Suzanne Summer's going to have her goddamn head stuck yeah. in a dryer. Yeah. 
The little, the little fucker, uh, I don't know who the, the Badger Duffy's oldest son was. He's going to be walking in and be like, Mom, you're stuck in the dryer. And yep. she's like, help me, I'm doing my workout. And she'd have the Suzanne Thighmaster shit going. Yep. And he'd be like, your thighs are so thick, Mom. And he's like, I got to spread them apart to get you out. <laughs> then she's going to let out a monstrous mom fart. He's going to get hearts in his eyes and just start plowing. Meeting with people all week. Um, and planning events and other stuff, which we'll have some announcements. Cousin uh, Cody next definitely week smashed after. Dana. That's canon. By the way, uh, yeah, I think we're going to have to schedule a casting call for this film. I think I am now officially the producer of Step by Step, the uh, pornographic film. Billy is the director. We all know he's an experienced director and has directed. Yeah. He's totally, he's, I'm a he's really a good director. So uh, we're, we're going to have a casting call. Um, step by step, day by day. So I've just been busy. I've been working. I've been meeting with people. So I, I don't really have time to watch these 10-hour streams about some drama YouTuber I've never heard and like Discord logs or whatever. But so in the span of like one week, we get this one guy named Tux, I think, who apparently had some weird like incest thing going on. And then now this thing with Flamenco. And it's sort of like, you know, I've seen enough. Uh, I just don't really want any part of that whole scene. It just seems sort of uh, ugly. That's how and, you get you know, by parasites. Gotta keep mom farts out of your face. Come on, we all know Step by Step sub theme was pink eye. <laughs> the albino Urkel. So we, we had our fun, we had our drama. I think I basically got proven right over the course of things. Um, so I, I'm just kind of like, winding down my involvement in that whole area um you know like i said it's it's sort of like a harmless diversion it's fun for a minute but she then, just then asking, you wake up did nick point is just yada yada incest yeah i think incest is one yes. of those things that gets coupled yada, in with a yada, yada yada it's not that Remember important that seinfeld episode yada yada incest yeah. yada yada kramer yada yada kramer's sister Yada, yada yada yada. Who the fuck was the guy from Jurassic Park? Melman, Melman, Newman, Newman. Yeah, Newman. Hello, Newman. And you realize it's like okay, but we have a job to do. It. We're trying to put America first here. We're trying to run a political movement. So you know, Ralph can do his thing, and I'll do my thing. Ra Ralph is sort of like this, you know, trailer park junkyard with nothing left to lose. Who's going out there and fighting, you know, scumbags of the internet? And that's fine, and I think it's funny, and I think it's good content, and I think he's good at what he does. But America First is... No, Stabby, as producer, I ban food from the step-by-step -step themed uh, pornographic film. Yeah, if, if, no anybody, if anybody wants to go uh, donate to my OnlyFans, I'm making extreme Chipotle content on the OnlyFans. We're, uh, we're following in the tradition of the Brady Bunch themed porn and the Partridge Family themed porn. Yeah, this is step by step. Yeah. We don't need none of that nope. other gimmick. It's all family all the time. This is an institution. We got a, a sick guy to come play Cousin Cody. He's real gross. He actually lives in a van. He actually does beat everyone on set. Because, yeah. you know, the Cousin Cody actor, he went to jail for beating up, like, his wife or his girlfriend or whatever. It's something nothing. separate, and we're doing a political movement. And sometimes it's fun to watch what's going on over there, but honestly, I've seen enough where I'm like, okay, I, I, think, I've had, I think I've had my fill on that scene, the, the drama community. It's just very... I'm going to take my dub, and I'm, I'm cashing he's, in my he's, chips. He's walking away with a win. Oh, wow, he got that W. He's taking the dub. Yada, yada, incest, yada, yada, W. Taking that dub. You know what? <laughs> if you, let's see. If you switch this around like this, look at that. Look at that cheeky grin. He's so happy. He's probably got T-boys on the fuck, or T-girls on the, the screen down below. He's looking at his little uh, lap, lappy tappy. His Mac? I think so. And I'm leaving, okay? Taking the dub, vindicated on a few things, and I'm leaving. Um, there's some things that remain unresolved, though. You know, there's some things which are partially drama, partially business, which uh, still we have some loose ends to tie up. I think he's talking about Ralph. So as far as that scene goes, 
Yeah, I'm sort of bowing out, but there are some sort things, of bowing uh, out. Obviously, over the past month or so, take a bow, Nick. Resolve, you got so your dub, yada yada. You got your incest, yada there, yada. Take your so bow. But in any case, I just want to say that real quick because I know, you know, for the past couple months, there's been like this. Oh, you know, you're you're involved in this e drama, you know, peripherally, and uh, honestly, at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm good. Like I've seen enough. I'm good. Uh, you see the the kind of shit that goes on. It's like, like I said, it's Discord logs about incest and it's this pedo stuff and the Steam library. Like, okay, you know what? Uh, back to the regularly scheduled programming. So, I just want to mention that and say, by the way, we were right. By the way, we were right. By we the way, the drama foray and so we won. We beat them at their own game. I'm going to help anyone uh, who wants to have fun photoshopping this. I have uh, I have created, I'll, I'll post it in the general DP chat. On uh, Discord? On, on Discord. Those of you that aren't in our it's, Discord, uh, get there. It's Nick Fuentes smirking like that. Um, smirking with, on a gherkin? With no background. Oh. So uh, maybe you can Photoshop like a pair of balls swinging in front of his face. Like, I don't know. Uh, get creative. Um, yeah. I had a, a new keto chocolate bar today. Uh, I got it at grocery outlet. It was $1.50. And I thought it was a great steal of a deal. And I ate the whole bar because it was one net carb a serving, three servings in a bar. And I think that it has made me particularly gassy today. Particularly gassy. Because the I ones you've noticed, Ben, it's like 10% of the farts. Great. So I ever farted when I, I, I started watching your show. It's him with uh, Anthony from Opie and Anthony. Anthony Cumia? Yeah, with Nick Fuentes. Cute. Wow. Respect points have dropped, like, because uh, he's a legendary radio personality, easily. Wouldn't the title? But be he's a fool. Stop by stop. Oh my god. He's he's a Tor fool for letting Nick Fuentes on his show. I mean, Nick Fuentes in a positive way. Well, is, is we're watching it. Is it how positive Let's could it see. be? Let's see. Oh, um, maybe a year ago. Uh, or so, and I, I fucking love it, dude. It is so fun. It's funny and informative and pertinent to what's going on and courageous. Uh, it's courageous? Yeah, listen to this. Courageous? Uh, no one else is really doing it, and you're paying a price just for putting your shit out there. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you do have to sacrifice, and and I know I could have kept working at SiriusXM. See, he got canceled early, pre Me Too movement. He got canceled for like some tweets he made after he got in a fight with this black woman out on the street. He said something like, they're not people or something like that. And he got fired the next day. So, and so he's had that hard shift to the right. Now he's got Nick Fuentes on his podcast or whatever this But at is. least he got replaced by Jim Norton. Look, he's got the same kind of setup as Nick Fuentes, too. He's got Manhattan uh, in, in a fake green screen window behind them. He's also got a uh, Mary, uh, Virgin Mary dildo uh, just off the side of the camera. Uh -huh. And, you know, if I didn't say anything, but I'm compelled now to talk about things. My whole thing has been... Yeah, he could have continued to work I at Sirius XM if he didn't say that dumb shit that, that got him there fired. There is an insane jump to... Opie and Anthony was like second only to Howard Stern back in the day. It was a hugely popular uh, talk format uh, radio show. Like morning radio show. If you were a comedian, if you were a comedian at that time, it was bigger than Howard Stern. Howard Stern was more like uh, for normies, to, normie celebrities to go on and be funny uh, and were, provocative. There were underground, like like uh, you know, or Artie Lang kind of got his yeah, start. Yeah, Artie there. Lang, Norm was on. There's yep. those comedians that would go on Howard Stern, but it wasn't as like the the, the fucking Opie and Anthony show was like where comedians would go to just slay and kill. And on on uh, Howard Stern, it was more like comedians would go on and they would 
talk and conversate and be funny and interesting and sometimes funny, but the comedians wouldn't ever really let go like they did in Opie and Anthony. Communities. Mm, yeah. That's like my thing that everyone goes, oh, you're a racist. You're the, that's my I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. I should be fucking, you know, I'm a racist and everything. Because I, I say the same things, by the way, that black clergy says, that politicians, law enforcement, everyone says it. Wow. Anthony's going to become the new leader of America first. I see it. Here. I feel bad about Artie Lang. Uh, the other day, I referred to him as Fat No Nos because I couldn't remember his name. So I oh. think I, I owe him an apology. I love Artie Lang. I just couldn't remember his name, and that's what came out. Fat No Nos. I said Fat No Nos because I yeah, couldn't remember his fucking name. Tom, and wow. He's great. They, they I love have, him. Have run. Silence the violence. I didn't come up with that shit. There's violence going on. But I say it and say it's specific to inner city gang violence. And I'm a racist for saying it, for even bringing it up. How the fuck are we supposed to move forward and maybe solve the problem if no one even can speak of what the actual problem is? Right. Well, yeah, and, and uh, it's so true about that because, you know, when you got kicked off serious, I was like in high school, and I remember when that was going on. Yeah. And that was like the initial wave. It was like yeah, you yeah. and Gavin. I was a huge Gavin oh, fan yeah, and yeah. everything, and um, still am. Can anyone make a valid argument that we are getting along as Americans and we're we're uh, you know working together and our diversity is our greatest strength <laughs> like the more diverse the country gets the more it seems to be falling apart and I don't think anyone can you could say whatever you want but I think we're seeing it like you said in real time that it's not working out. Very yeah, the country sucks. You know, I mean, you would have thought that, like, oh my god, we've been told that we have been making progress. They call themselves progressives. Yes, progressives. And, you know, and people can say, oh, well, actually, they're regressive. It's like, well, let's just think about that. They're saying things are getting better. No, uh, actually, uh, regressive is going backwards. So people who uh, romanticize the 1950s and the 1930s, they're regressive. And and uh, also like the Middle Ages and shit like Nick does. Um, Are they like that's a, yeah. I think that's a pretty good question. Like because they say the fifties and sixties and even before that are such a backwards time. Oh, terrible! You know, bully black people, which is like the worst thing ever, right? <laughs> Man, I'm really up awake at night thinking. Oh about that. God! <laughs> Fire hose, you know, and all that. Oh, but it's my like God. he was like they bully black people. You know what those fire hoses? I would love to see Nick get hit with a fire hose. Those things are brutal. It can, like, take the skin off. It wouldn't be bad to see one of those go to an America First rally. That would be hilarious, dude. I would I would save up 50 grand to be able to do that with no consequences and just blast the fuck out of an, uh, uh, a fucking... What is, what's his uh, CPAC that he made? His Tanacon of CPAC. Uh, um Av pack, Av pack, yeah. I would love to be able to just like blast all the fuckers in there with a fire hose. Oh yeah, was that yeah? Do you remember they were getting bullied with a fire hose? A fire hose is fucked up to hit people with. It is in. It's not. It's nothing like a garden hose. The pressure is insane. It's yeah. it's even heavier than. Remember, you went to a pressure wash, and yeah. and it took some of your skin off. A fire hose would do way worse. Yeah, than the pressure that. wash sucked. But, uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to do that to them uh, unless they consented to it. But I would watch it if it happened. <laughs> Thanks. Besides okay. that, things are pretty good, actually. Yeah. You know? And then here we are all these years later, and it's it, like, um, okay, liberalism the, here's is Here's the My grandpa and dad were firefighters, and blasting someone with a fire hose can break bones. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandfather was a firefighter also. Um, My grandfather had a gigantic dick. And he would often break bones with his fucking okay with his with his skull cracker. That he, he calls is this a like weird competition or something? Uh, some people would say yes. You're very competitive, Billy. Obama. I, obviously, I'm making a fucking joke. I, I'm not comparing my grandpa's giant dick to firefighters, but I but I, I guess if this is competitive, yeah, I I I'm only competitive because I'm a winner. And Trump was defeated. <laughs> okay. You know, are we winning? Like, how's that going for us? 
it's not working. And oh. so if it's not working, what's the cause? Well, maybe it's the people who have been running things for the past 30 years, you know? Yeah. Like growing up, we always heard this, why is America the greatest country ever? Because we take the best from every other country. <laughs> and it's like, hang on a second. Slow down. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> I think we like landed on the moon uh, with like Germans. <laughs> like, actually Nazis <laughs> that built the rockets. Literally Nazis Literally. to the moon. Yeah. Um, and it was, we were doing just fine before the best if and brightest anyone was wondering- from what I was doing, I was filing down my clear braces. Yeah, you have a a, a a very petty file over there. It's petty. Why is it petty? Oh, it looked tiny. It's a nail file. Oh, they do it on the braces too? Are they the new braces? You put them in yesterday? Yes. Yeah. So my tongue is like... I was a little prepared, but not quite. Were these the two week ones, or are they the yes. one week ones? So yeah, this is the end of, or this is the beginning of your first two week one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and they felt so tight at first. Um, it's weird. It makes your jaw feel tight because it's that tight. Over came over here, but the fact that baseball teams are putting rainbow shit on their uniforms and and children are being marched oh, around, yeah. and we have to. You know, accept, not accept oh, it. It used to be tolerance. You brought up children. tolerance. Tolerance is to tolerate. <laughs> yes. I can tolerate something and fucking hate it. <laughs> yeah. But now you tolerance isn't enough. You need to go, ah, oh, this is the most wonderful thing I've ever seen. Because they don't stop. Yeah. They never stop. They get their one point that they wanted. We want equality. We want safety. We don't want to be beat up in the streets. Fine. I could I could get beyond that. Whatever. I can't believe this dude is pandering to Nick Fuentes. Uh oh, I mean he's obviously sharing some of those views Nick Fuentes had. We've I think known he's that for also a while. I think he wants the audience too, because he knows Nick makes well, a lot of money. I think that's been a lot of his audience. Like they, they they've specifically existed. Nick's audience is like young enough for Anthony to be like their grandfather. Who was it? Was you know it Chrissy I mean? Metz? Like, is that the girl that uh, has been uh, with him for a while? She like rolls with Brittany Murphy and all them. And she was the one that Ethan Ralph was on with, and then Ethan she Ralph rolls dumped with Brittany on Brittany Murphy now. <laughs> I mean Brittany <laughs> Venti. Sorry, uh, Brittany uh, Venti and Brittany Murphy are the exact same person. I to hope me. not, because one of them is no longer with yeah, us. Yeah, when the other one died, Brittany Venti took over. Reincarnation. My memories of her. In my brain, my memories of now of Brittany Murphy are just Brittany, Brittany Venti. Venti was so awesome and clueless. She really was. But now no, it's the ugly duckling arc. Oh, you need I to like cheer oh, eight, for these eight mile. drag queens dancing in front of children. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> Transform homophobe, homophobe. It's gotten to that point, and it's so hard to fight back now because again, you get the phobe or the ist oh, yeah. behind your name, and you're done. If you want to take your kids take to go it. watch drag shows, uh, you just gotta have that conversation with your kids when they ask you what the fuck's going on. Like, like, like if, if, take them to drag shows. Don't yeah, let them, don't like, let them get groomed. Well, so I mean, like, like, uh, your kids get groomed anywhere. If they're doing a drag show that is. Not that doesn't involve nudity or an, anything, and they're just wearing anything you'd see on like cable TV or whatever. Uh, what I don't see a problem with that at all. Um, yeah, I, I, but it's it's just it's just your choice of parenting. You're gonna fuck up your kids one way or the other, no matter what you do. I didn't start going to drag shows until I was a teenager. I, that world was not exposed to me, but we had this crazy drag club. In the downtown of the of the city I grew up in, and it was craziness. Pornography was always exposed to me at a young age. Oh, not me. Yeah, me. Not until I was like uh, like in middle school. And I think that just made me more prudish because I was at an age where it was exposed to but, me, and I was. But like, drag shows aren't pornography at all. Well, I'm saying pornography was exposed to me at a young age, which I think is beyond drag I shows. Well, I, I wouldn't even really compare them. Well, I think that's what the people who are saying you can't go to a drag show are comparing them to. They're, that's a false comparison because drag shows are not pornography. Not uh, all like, the time. Like not even adjacent. Not all the time. Sometimes they are. Nah. Some, it's pornography is art as much as anything is, and sometimes it's sexualized. I've been to a bunch of drag shows where they're so doing the sexualized stuff. I wouldn't say uh, the kids should be there. Like, but, 
Like, if you go to Vegas, there's, like, nudie shows. There's nothing sexual going on, but there's nudie shit. And maybe, like, innuendo, you know. If but, then, ever... but then if you go to Amsterdam, there's several theaters that are just, like, it's, like, live porn. Like, it's, like, a bunch of big beefy dudes banging a bunch of big fake boobied women on stage. And it's it's funny because like the people in the audience are a lot of old people, um, in a lot of these. It's like a tourist thing. Like people come to experience Dutch culture, they go to one of those weird sex shows. Old um, people are perverts. Old people are the best because they couldn't just go online and get whatever they needed at any given time. So they had to like travel to Tijuana and watch a donkey brick and a fucking poor. No, Zero Ron, there's no donkey shows in Amsterdam. That's illegal. Those are in Tijuana. No, this is all uh, consenting of age, uh, non-related adults. In a donkey show. Further than most. Down to Tijuana where the honkies These things offend us because they're wrong. You know, when we... You know, come to think of it, Cobes never mentions bestiality, does he? He never says human. I, thought, I don't know. I think Coase might be into BCL. I'm pretty sure he he's mentioned definitely that. mentioned it. I have to think that after all the things he mentions, anything he doesn't mention, he's probably... I'm pretty sure he uh, mentions bestiality a no, lot. No, I don't think so. Well, he probably mentions it as in he's into it, but, you no. know... What a disgusting individual that no, he's, he's the children he's put being that exposed in there. to that. Well, it's wrong because it's not just because it's sexual, but because it's wrong. Yeah, you know, these things are fundamentally wrong. And the more that we, as a society, go down this journey towards you know, total tolerance and this rainbow stuff, the more we peel back the layers and say, wait a second, like, what the fuck's going on here? Like with this monkeypox thing where it's like, hang on a second, 40,000 people at like a big gay orgy on an island? It's AIDS too. Let's yeah. be real here. Well, and, and it reveals the behaviors which are not I'm not going to you guys make up lies comparable. about my boy Cobes. He most definitely has said human. Most definitely. He fucks dogs. Anybody who would make up lies about my boy Cobes must be hiding their own proclivities. i though, Billy, he's not your boy. You don't even know him. He doesn't even want to talk to you. He owns so. a Billy the Fridge t-shirt. Someone else sent that to him, and I've never seen him I like to once. think he ordered it on well, his own. Well, you'd like to think anything that benefits your ego. That's but not true. I'm sorry. That's just not the case. That's not true at <laughs> all. Oh, my God. Yes, that is. Why would you say that? I've never said anything more true in my whole life. It's not, oh, well, yeah, because you lie a lot. No. Nope, nope. Especially about how you think Cobes would fuck an animal when he's said he human on multiple occasions. Time. He's gross. You're so full of it. All to normal people. You yeah, know, because yeah. how it was presented to society was, and I remember because they made a big push for it when I was growing up, it was glee. It was Modern Family. Oh, look, a, you know, harmless gay character right. in high school. Harmless, the gay couple in Modern This is what a family is now. <laughs> yeah, this is a yeah. modern family. And they're just funny and flamboyant and silly. And then it's like, okay, we'll do an episode about monkeypox, you know? Yeah. <laughs> an episode about the orgy and the drugs and, you know, the weird stuff. How long you been? How long you been doing it? I've been doing it for five years. Daniel Iyer says bestiality is a victimless, victimless crime. I Tell don't... that to Mr. Hands. You not know that guy who had sex with a horse and died because the horse ripped up his insides? I'd say there was a pretty bad victim there. Five years. Five now? years this year. Yeah. And how um, old were you when you started? I was Eighteen. <laughs> so I was. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, and um, you know that's the thing. I I wonder I don't if like they fucked I've... after this. I. Uh, <laughs> Nah, I don't think Anthony's into... Is he at that point in his career? I don't think career? he's into young boys. Would he fuck for clout? He's not... Young boy is a misleading term. You're talking about Nick Fuentes. He's he's not a young boy. Well... He's a early to mid-twenties man. I was making a reference that he's into young women. Everyone takes politics very seriously. Know. I'm currently... That's what a joke that everybody says, whether it's true or not. It seems to be uh, commonly said about Anthony Cumia by his peers. So we can assume his peers are comedians. We can assume it's all just a joke. Nope. Currently in like a lot of drama right now because everybody says, you know, you don't take yourself seriously enough. Right, right. right. Like you keep saying the N-word. They're like, yeah, I'm going to save the country if you keep saying the N-word. My niggas. (laughs) Where are my niggas at? And I'm like, this is fucking hilarious. Yeah. Well, I'm even saying the hard R. No, no, no. an accident. I'm like, you know what? And, um, (laughs) no, people don't like that. But I have to do it because there is a benefit 
because so much of what is put in front of us is controlled. And you know yes. this, you're the real deal. Huh, that's a weird time to cut it, but whatever. So what you think of that exchange? This is my new favorite show. Oh. I hope he becomes his co-host. <laughs> it's great. I wonder if this is why he was in the stupid fucking hotel room. It might have been. The um, oh, this National guy. School Lunch Program. So the National School Lunch Program helps poor kids, you know, get school lunch. Did we already watch this? I, I don't remember. And, you know, the liberals have always loved this National School Lunch Program until, I guess, Michelle Obama came in and, like, you know, took food away from the kids and just made school lunches horrible. But the National School Lunch Program, it feeds about 30 million kids every single day of school. And the Biden administration is now saying that uh, they will not give federal funding anymore to schools for school lunches unless the schools adhere to the um, all the LGBT and transgender. Is pizza a vegetable? It was, right? Isn't yeah, that what they well, said? So, yeah. All right. The Biden Department of Agriculture has announced that all state and local agencies, this according to the Tennessee Star, um, the U.S. Department of Agriculture has announced that all state and local agencies that receive federal funding for meals, a category that includes schools, must not discriminate based on sexual orientation and gender identity. The Department of Agriculture tweeted, in line with POTUS's sex and gender identity anti- Is beer the best drink with pizza, like a lot of people claim? Uh, you know what I used to like was root beer with pizza. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people claim, like, you know, even like Bud Budweiser and pizza. Think this dude is and trying to hide it. We say that about every alt right person, though. So it could well, be one true. thing this guy is trying to hide is his baldness. Oops, got a nice comb over. I know one when I see it. You know what? I think the worst drink with pizza is is orange juice. I've never tried it. Pizza and orange juice when I was a kid would just remind me of barf. I also think wings and beer are also, they go hand in hand. Beer to cool down your mouth when you got like a spicy wing. Um, I I love that. Discrimination executive order. One for the Sleepy Joe Presidential Library. We are working to ensure our USDA nutrition programs are open, accessible, and help promote food and nutrition security regardless of demographics, blah, blah, blah. The interpretation, according to the Tennessee Star, means schools that receive funding through the federal... I mean, honestly, like, Michelle Obama's... Because, like, every first lady takes on a pet project. And that was Michelle Obama because, kind of related to what Billy said earlier, there was no real federal oversight watching what kids in school were getting fed. And they were getting fed whatever the fuck... Whatever cheap shit the schools wanted to buy to feed them. She tried to start an obese kid holocaust. She wanted to take out all the little fat kids and not, remove them from... Not actually kill them, though. Yeah, Make but them more healthy. Effectively, she wanted them all... Uh, her, you her were game, just complaining about... Her game plan was to have no more fat You were just complaining about the conspiracy to get everyone addicted to sugar, but then when someone comes along and tries to change what the public school lunches are which were which was part of that you're against that like like i mean a, a lot of kids that's you know they that was one meal a day i disagree okay can you explain i think that it's just funnier to say that michelle obama was trying to eradicate fat kids so that you're not disagreeing you're just saying you I'm just i'm saying michelle obama put a holocaust out on fat kids and if she had their way there would be no more fat kids so in america could you not could you so so could you stop blaming the government conspiracy on uh to feed you sugar then i wasn't a government conspiracy it was a conspiracy from the producers to take uh, it was like corn was being made into high fructose corn syrup in the 80s and 90s, and they were replacing f a natural fats with the high produced corn. These are two conflicting positions, Billy. I would never conflict my position. <laughs> Federal school lunch program could face the loss of those funds if they prohibit biological males who claim to identify oh, no. as females from using girls' bathrooms. So if you don't have the the boys 
who say that the girls going into the girls' bathroom and all this transgender stuff, then they're going to starve the poor goy kids of food at their schools. So that is right, ladies and gentlemen. Literally, this headline is, is accurate. Joe Biden is, in fact, attempting to starve poor children to enforce the gay agenda. What are we coming to in this country? I, I, I'm just imagining, like, Oliver Twist, you know? Can I please have my bugs, sir? Can I please have my beetles? Can I please have my crickets, Mr. Biden? No! Your school isn't gay enough. Please, sir, uh, please, I just want my crickets. I just want my grasshoppers. Please, Mr. Biden, give me my insect protein. No! The, your school doesn't it. This guy's insane. Here. To I wonder if he's on cozy. Enough gayness. Didn't he what? say he was on cozy at one point? I think so. Sleepy Joe Biden trying to starve the poor kids. I think Rev is, or Red, Honest Red is back a little. Honest Red posted, just because it involves gender doesn't make it pornographic, Billy. Don't wow. buy the bullshit. It's like Honest Red will jump in front of a train to talk about gender shit. I just wish he didn't miss the train because that was the last segment. Now we're on to uh, ridiculous conspiracy alt-right douchebag whining about whatever it is he's whining about. But uh, no, no, I, I'm not saying that drag shows are inherently sexual. I'm saying I've seen sexual adult content at drag shows kids shouldn't be at those unless their parents want to expose them to that and have that conversation with their kids uh if their schools are not gay enough that was a good ending Here's uh, the Canada First Nick Fuentes clone. And you're so you're right on the money with the Canadian women. You know, it's it's not really, in my experience, it's not really the older Canadian women. I think that a lot of, you know, like middle-aged Canadian women are actually pretty pretty much fine. They stay in their lane, and they're nice and they're caring, very very motherly. But it's the it's the what? young generations. It's millennials and Zoomer girls. A lot of them are just bitches. A lot of them are just bitches. And, you know, I don't know. It might be worse. It might be worse than dealing with the fobs at your local Harvey's. You know, he always, he's always talking about well, Harvey's. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is, you know, it's, it's just like Sidney Watson thing with, with fucking Nick, right? It's just like that. Sidney Watson was lobbing softballs at Nick, asked him a couple of questions about his opinions on women, and he responded by screaming, Mom! Mom! Like, like, well, I'm having a conversation with a woman right now. Don't call Sidney Watson out on that one. She was giving him the easiest questions for him to maybe, maybe re-solidify his stance and not look like a complete dweeby tool. But he chose to double down on the dweeby tool route and cried for his mom! Mom! It's just, it's constant. It's constant. And now, luckily, you know, I don't have to deal with... Girl. <laughs> I don't have to deal with these... Does he not get the, uh... Does he not get how it's weird that he's Canada first, but hangs out with all the America first people? He's got an America first hat on his desk. Like, obviously, well, he's... he's just making his own little corner of the they, the brand here. They can't both be first. They can't both be first. Unless they were doing gay stuff like, to each other and they were able to come at the same time together. Fucking farty ass motherfucker. Uh, if Nick Fuentes had his way, Canada would just get annexed by America. Punch Nancy, grape of all sale. Girls, you snarky girls really anymore on a daily basis you know i i literally hang out with right-wing people and bailey so it's it you know it's not really a big thing in my life but you know you see it all the time i see it on twitter you know i see it with the normies what are good you know, on social media what are good uh nicknames for this nicknames. gentleman here teddy rubskin says Ma it's not Maple Fuentes <laughs> for Canada, Canada First. Is this kid Maple Fuentes? <laughs> yep. I'm seeing some uh, Danny, uh, is it Tamborelli or Bonaducci? What, what are the, 
What 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 are the the big names I'm getting? Honestly, like this isn't saying much for this guy, but this guy is like exponentially more masculine than Nick Fuentes. Uh only because he has right. ginger hair. Oh no, he's just like it doesn't take much to be more masculine than Nick Fuentes, but this guy is. Um and I I just think it's just the the ginger hair is giving him a little edge. It could be Nick Putina. It's so true. They get all snarky. You, you didn't listen to me. You didn't listen to me. Yeah, I'm not going to fucking listen to you. Why would I listen to you? You listen to me. You listen to me. I'm not oh, pulling up my He's mask. He's about as incorrigible as Nick, though. Like, they're it's both so the true. same Thank level of stupid. Thank you very much for the five bucks, buddy. I appreciate it. Oh sevens. The Polsky Canuck. Degrassi Nick. He's Butnick from Salute Your Shorts. Salute your flag. I believe you should put your Christ. heart and soul into being the best that you Rev can be. Rev really looks shitty after getting out of prison. Yeah, that's what that's what the slammer will do to you. So that you earn your own way, so you never lean unnecessarily Why on others. Why is he got his crack pipe back there on the flag saying, come and take it? You never take from others' hard work. You sustain yourself through rugged individualism and independence and a work ethic. I believe that's the doomsday ship from Star Trek. You should earn your own way. Live within your means. And you know, all you kids going to school, you're worried about your education debt, your student loan, but you got pierced nipples, tattoos, expensive haircuts, unlimited. None of that shit is that expensive, not compared to a student loan. Yeah, these are. Like, what? A piercing? That's nothing. A tattoo? Maybe like. Depending on how big it is, maybe five to two thousand dollars, five hundred to two thousand dollars. These um, are like Advil when you need open heart surgery. This is very small little things to get people by when they need an entire fucking life changing, life altering event. Indulgent clothing, dope beer. Maybe they wasted their money buying Ted Nugent albums. How about that? And Starbucks coffee, but we're supposed to pay for your student loan debt? Right there. Well, that's hateful. No, that's love. That's love for people who earn our own way, live within our means, and save for a rainy day. That was a short clip. That's love. Saying fuck them is love. Here's some uh, Ma Matthew McConaughey. Thank you. All Thank right, you. all right, all right. Thank you, Camilla. <sighs> Matthew McConaughey. To make the loss to. of these lives matter. So this is him talking about the shooting at the school in Texas. All right, all right. My uh, uh, wife and I, uh, my wife and I, Camilla, we spent most of last week on the ground with the families in Uvalde, Texas. We shared stories, tears, and memories. The, uh, the common thread, independent of the anger and the confusion and the sadness, it, it was the same. How can these families continue to honor these deaths by keeping the dreams of these children and teachers alive? He hasn't been working too much lately, has he? Is, he's he's kind of stale in Hollywood, right? He was getting a lot of shit for a he's while. He's been focusing on politics, politics ever since the pandemic hit. Yep. Again, how Texas is a political hotbed right now. He's been kind of going you think down the center. For he might run for governor or senator. He he might win senator or something. Who's governor now? Is it Ted Cruz or is he a senator? The, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's the guy in the wheelchair, Abbott. Hmm. Oh, so while God. we honor and acknowledge the victims, we, we need to recognize that this time, it seems that something is different. There is a sense that perhaps there's a viable path forward. Responsible parties in this debate seem to at least... I'll tell you what, if you're a governor and you serve, like, you know, two or three terms, a lot of people think that makes you um, qualified to run for president. It definitely too. makes you yeah. qualified to run for president. It's an executive position. Yeah. You're running a state that's like a little country. Barack Obama wasn't a governor. He was just a senator. Not for very long, too. Yeah. He had some of the... Honestly, Obama had some of the lowest experience of any president, but Trump broke that record by having no experience in politics. Yeah, before. it's usually 
if you didn't have experience in politics, you'd have experience in the military to be president. Trump was the you first to You had to be high-ranking in the military, Yeah, Trump too. was the first to have neither. Yes. Be committed to sitting down and having a real conversation about a new and improved path forward. A path that can bring us closer together and make us safer as a country. A path that can actually get something done this time. Eisenhower, I believe, was the last president that was like super high ranking military guy that went straight to the presidency. Yeah, and didn't wasn't he responsible for the uh freeway system? I think that may have started under his watch. Yeah, it was um, a big a big boon for our country. Yeah. And he, it was the freeway got pushed through because it would double as uh military landing strips. Like there had to be certain levels of it, the freeways that it, were. It could long also double be... as commercial uh, emergency landing if it had to be. They yeah. Because they can. Because a, a plane can glide into an emergency landing. They can get people on the ground to block off that strip of road. Yeah, there had to be uh, stretches that well, was part of pushing it through. I'm pretty sure yeah. was that it was available for landing airplanes yeah. in times of great distress. Yeah. So we're like, yeah, let's make freeway systems. Uh, Camille and I came here to. Well, before that, Route 66 was the only uh, like cross country freeway that existed, and it it started in Chicago and went to L.A. in a really weird route. Which now you can't even drive the whole old the whole like, Route 66. Par- parts of old Route 66 are underwater in some places. Share my stories from my hometown, of Valley. Came here to take meetings with oh, his hometown. I didn't know that. On both I sides didn't of the that. aisle. We came here. It's his time to run. Run, Matthew. Like I, I hear he's got some kooky views, which I, I would expect from, uh, you know, a Hollywood actor. Does he have kooky views? I thought I've he was heard pretty it. centered. I've heard he had some weird conspiratorial. I, I don't know, but I would say I'll take him over Abbott, who seems insane. To speak to them, to speak with them, and to urge them I mean, to speak with each like other. If he was like legalize adrenochrome for celebrity consumption, uh, I'd still take him over Abbott. <laughs> to remind and inspire them that the American people will continue to drive forward the mission of keeping our children safe. He was not born because in Valdi, but he did right there for a while. So. Interesting. It's our responsibility to do so. You would think it would be our responsibility. I'm here today, in the hopes of applying what energy, reason, and passion that I have. And to try to turn this moment into a reality. Because as I said, this moment is different. We are in a window of opportunity right now that we have not been in before. A window where it seems like real change. Real change can happen. Uvalde, Texas is where I was born. What? Swear he just he said he was, he was born, born there. there. I trust what he says other than someone in the Damn chat. Damn it. Damn it, Master Horny. Why? That's why I don't believe shit people say in the chat. My, why can I not believe Master Horny anymore? Robin. And here's Honest Red coming back in. He must be working, so he can't respond quick enough. Billy, you can literally find adult material mixed with anything. That means nothing. Not behind, just busy at work. Okay, so I was right about that, too. Honest Red, but um, yeah, of course you can find it mixed with anything. Like, I'm saying most drag shows I've seen like didn't get beyond PG-13. Most drag sh- shows I've seen did because I only go to the ones that are for adults. I go to the ones at the fucking well. I mean, super they can be gay bars. for adults, but because there's drinking and partying. Of man, we need in the White House. We need a president with huge yes. Thoughts. A man with a huge yes. heart has nothing to prove and doesn't have to have a massive ego. He has gotten one God between the legs. God damn it, pal. Just because you have a little dick doesn't mean you can't be president, right? So does Negan You just have to get over the fact you got a little dick. That Matthew confirmed has a huge That's schlong. What, here's Negan thinks, yeah. It's pretty, I mean, he might. Pretty, pretty much sees the way Matthew walks and talks and believes matthew was swinging but yeah uh honest red furthermore about the uh thing is um i don't know what we're arguing about i I, whatever you're saying i agree with are you saying i shouldn't talk about the drag shows that the kids shouldn't go to i should only talk about the drag shows the kids should go to because when i say the kids shouldn't go to the drag shows where there's pornography 
even then, I'm like, I guess if your parents want to subject you to that, that's their fucking choice. You know, uh, Howard Stern used to have this dude on that was said to have had the biggest dick on earth. and he, Jonah Falcon. He was just like a random, like kind of frumpy white dude. Yeah. And it was like, he got searched every time he went through the airport because he had this huge... The schnitzel. And he's just kind of like a doughy, like, I don't know, maybe like 5'10". Yeah. Like, white guy. A lot of people uh, think that there's something up with that fellow. He's got an interesting story. They have a uh, documentary out about it. But him. it's all natural, right? He didn't get the weird... Uh, uh, that other guy, Barry, he didn't get that surgery. Barry who? Did we have Barry on here that had the weird like dick implants? Oh yeah, Meezy, Barry, Me- Barry Mezzy, Mezzy. Mezzy, yeah, Barry Mezzy with his weird shaved drum yeah, crotch yeah. rocket, yeah, um, yeah. Jonah Falcon is the Howard Stern guy you were talking about with the schwans, and he wanted to be an actor, and I think <laughs> what, that's not going to get you acting jobs in anything other than pornography, having a huge peen peen. I'm trying to think of. Uh, I'm looking at his. I'm looking at his Wikipedia page. It says Jonah Adam Julio Cardelli Falcon was born at Greenpoint Hospital in Brooklyn. He had, he had doctors originally thought he had a third leg at birth. Falcon has at times <laughs> claimed that his biological father was porn star John Holmes. No, that is a lie. That's Come what he's on. claimed. Come he on. claims to have documentation proving this lineage, No, but family members have dismissed this claim, and he's failed to produce any evidence. He recounts that when he, sees, was he, when he was in fifth grade, his schoolmates saw his peener, which was eight inches long at that point, and uh, while he was changing in the bathroom, and Falcon states he was able to perform auto fellatio at age of 10. And at that age, a, an older neighbor told an 18-year-old woman about he him. He was able to blow himself at 10. That's what he says. And uh, and then a neighbor told him at that age, uh, told an 18-year-old woman about him, and then they arranged for his first sexual experience with another person when he was 10, with an 18-year-old. No, no. At 12, he enrolled at the Eastern Harlem School. He reports by supports by seventh grade his peener had grown to nine point five inches erect, and by age fifteen it was ten point five inches. He later enrolled at the Bronx High School of Science and graduated in nineteen eighty eight. There's got a whole thing here with his career. Uh, there's a turn, why does he need to lie about this other stuff when his claim to fame is just a huge schlong? Because having a huge dick doesn't mean shit. Like you, this guy's got the biggest dick in the world, and he's a fucking loser. His yeah. documentary in twenty thirteen was unhung hero. <laughs> uh, unhung how does that make sense isn't he hung uh, I mean uh, unsung hero is the play on words I, I get that but it doesn't make sense I, I think it's, it's a play unhung. on words and uh, he played a mental patient in the 2001 feature film A Beautiful Mind he did so that was his his big his big really? break I had no idea um, you wouldn't know it was him because you didn't see the giant dick in that movie he gained media attention after appearing on the 1999 HBO documentary Private Dicks Men Exposed, and where 25 males were interviewed in the nude about their peen eyes. Rolling Stone published an article in 2003 that reported Falcon's, Falcon's peen eye uh, measured 9.5 inches in length when flaccid and 13.5 inches in length Holy when erect. Holy shit. Like when, nine, like nine while flaccid is like way bigger than most men hard. That's yeah. That's well above average. Yes. When becoming and being erect, a large amount of blood flows to his penis, and according to Falcon, causes <laughs> lightheadedness. I think he's lying. About, I think this is part of the show. And I mean, I'm starting be. to believe the dick isn't even real. I mean, it could be. And but well, they they did it on the documentary. They probably had his wiener out there and puffed up for the documentary people. In 20, 2006, Falcon appeared in a documentary by UK Channel Four called "The World's Biggest Penis." Falcon appeared on The Daily Show on March 2nd, 2010, and said that he had compl- uh, he can completely envelope a doorknob with his foreskin. Oh, uh, on July 9th, 2012, Falcon said he was stopped by the Transportation Security Administration officers, TSA, in San Francisco International Airport due to the large bulge in his pants. According to Falcon, after passing through metal detectors and a body scanner, he was selected for additional screening, after which he was released and allowed to catch his flight. In 2014, Falcon agreed to donate his penis to the Icelandic phallological 
uh, museum, the penis when he museum, dies? after his death. Huh. And then it says personal life. Falcon sometimes lived with, lives with his mother in New York City, so he's probably a fan of the show. In between <laughs> jobs, in a 2003 interview, Falcon stated his longest romantic relationship with a, was a, with a woman lasted for one year. When interviewed by wow. Out Magazine, he identified his sexual orientation as bisexual. You know what? It was only one. That was the one that didn't die in one year from him tearing them up. Damn. Falcon- Seriously, like, that's a lot. Like, most women don't want a dick that huge. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in an interview he said he actually started dating men because they were more into his giant penis than women. <laughs> were. Their anatomy would just handle it better. Buttholes are built more to take big giant penises than vaginas are, strangely enough. Uh, Falcon is an only child and grew up in a four-story house in Brooklyn with a large extended family, including cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, and great-grandparents. He lived with his grandmother in Puerto Rico for three years between the age of six and nine. So he's Puerto Rican. Back in New York City. That's that's what they say. Okay. Yeah. He's partially. And uh, this is just his Wikipedia page. There's a lot of information about him. He's a pretty big fucking loser. I wouldn't want him being president. So I don't know. It's just... Nope, Matthew McConaughey, definitely. New Valley is where I learned to master a a, a daisy. Whoa, I thought he was going to say something else. BB gun. Master a daisy. That's where I learned to master a daisy. That took two years before I graduated to a 410 shotgun. New Valley is where I was taught to revere the power and the capability of the tool that we call a gun. Uvalde is where I learned responsible gun ownership. Honest Red says, uh, uh, don't involve kids in anything sexual. There's nothing special about drag shows except conservative fear-mongering. I've seen... No, I... Yeah, like... I've seen these Tyler Perry movies that are Christian comedies that have tons of sex jokes. They have tons of fucking uh, uh, twerking and butt-moving shit. Most drag shows are not, like, that sexual, though. They're just, like... Like performances, like musical performances, yeah, the, most mostly lip syncing. Most of them probably aren't. The only ones I've ever seen were, but that's just because hmm. I was going to adult ones. Because I fucking go out to them in Capitol Hill at two a.m. Like I'm not going to fucking drag brunch, like like they like do for old ladies that need to have a fucking yeah. mimosa and some badly poached Matthew eggs. On a hay for president. He'll make everything all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. But there's, there's like all these Christian fucking movies that people take their kids out to and they love and adore. And they got sexualized stuff in it, too. I'm not saying you shouldn't take your kids to a fucking drag show if it's got a, a, a drag queen sucking a 12-inch balloon down her throat and making it pop. I don't care. Ah. You just got to be ready to have that conversation with your kid and know that, that, that nobody there is working nefariously to hurt your children. Did you see that video? On, uh, I saw this video on Twitter the other day of a Twitch girl laying in a, a, an empty kiddie pool. And she busted a whole watermelon, watermelon in between her thighs. Yeah. I was proud of her. <laughs> Gave her a tier three. So. May 24th, when I learned the news of this devastating tragedy, I had been out of cellular range working in the studio all day when I emerged and messages about a mass shooting. And Willie says, really why is Billy to- talking about kids? Why the fuck do you think? We're watching Matthew Guys, McConaughey talk about a mass shooting. If we got people, uh, Nick Fuentes talking about the the drag shows and ch- kids going to drag shows. Uh, everybody right now is. Will you please think about the children? That's why I'm talking about the fucking kids. They're the talking point right now. Fuck is wrong with you? And flood my inbox. In a bit of shock, I drove home. I hugged my children a bit tighter and longer the night before, and then the reality of what had happened that day in the town. I was born in, set in. He was so born the there. morning, Camilla and myself, the kids, we loaded up the truck and we drove to Valley. And when we arrived a few hours later, I gotta tell you, even from the inside of our vehicle, you, you, could, you could feel the shock in the town. You, you could feel the pain, the denial, the disillusion, anger, Blame, sadness, loss of lives, dreams halted. 
We saw ministries, we saw first responders, counselors, cooks, families trying to grieve without it being on the front page news. We met with the local funeral director and countless morticians who, who hadn't slept since the massacre the day before because they'd been working 24-7 trying to handle so many bodies at once. So many little innocent bodies who had their entire lives still yet to live. Maybe we do need a celebrity Matthew McConaughey pre president to offset the shit reality celebrity president Trump. Or to offset the stains that are still here from Ronald Reagan. I mean, well, that's, you know. We need somebody who can appeal to both sides. I don't care if they're a celebrity or not. Just somebody that will get people to chill the fuck out and stop blaming each other when we all know it's the goddamn Federal Reserve. And that is there. Stop that blaming we have two everyone. Of the grieving else. parents, Ryan and Jessica Ramirez. Their ten-year-old daughter, Alethea. She was one of the nineteen children that were killed the day before. Now, Alethea, her dream was to go to art school in Paris and one day share her art with the world. Ryan and Jessica were eager to share Alethea's art with us and said if we could share it, that somehow, maybe that would make Alethea smile in heaven. They told us that showing someone else Alethea's art would in some way keep her alive. Now, this particular drawing is a... Uh, it's a self-portrait right, of, of Aletha drawing with her friend in heaven looking down on her drawing the very same picture. Her mother said uh, of this drawing, she, she said, you know, we never really talked to her about heaven before, but somehow she knew. Aletha was 10 years old. How could she not know about heaven if she was drawing her friend who died? Ryan, Obviously, somebody said her friend served. was in heaven. You can you know what I like about these Secret Service men? I get older, they stay the same age. Uh, oh, my. That goodness. was his. Yeah, that was his famous line from uh, Dazed and Confused. I didn't vote Republican. Besides, say, man, you got a joint. Be a lot cooler. I didn't vote Democrat this year. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. Not this this man was steady. He was uncommonly together and calm. When a, a frazzled friend of his came up and said, how are you so calm? I, I'd, be, I'd be going crazy. Brian told me, he said, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. You'd be strong for your wife and kids because if they see you go crazy, that will not help them. Just a week prior, Ryan got a full-time line job stringing power lines from pole to pole. And every day since landing that well-paying full-time job, he reminded his daughter, Alethea, he said, girl, daddy gonna spoil you now. Told her every single night, he said, daddy's gonna take you to SeaWorld one day. But he didn't get to, see, he didn't get to spoil his daughter. Alethea, she did not get to go to SeaWorld. The, uh, I'll, I'll say the emotion comes across as genuine. I don't know what his point is yet. Like, what is he advocating for? He's telling us the story of these children so that we know what we're fighting for when we're fighting for uh, gun safety. Like, this is an appeal to emotion. This is not. This is not going to be another event that we forget. Right. That's that's his point here. Is that we're not just going to forget about this the next day because there's a shooting in a hospital or there's a shooting in a, a, a church. We're going to continue we talking about these kids because these kids are who we're fighting for. And we're fighting for gun safety. Do Is there anything you would change? Uh, I would make kids never go to school ever again. I would have pods for kids. They get locked in. About about the size of a desk. That's you your have a pod at home that's connected to the internet. Yeah, yeah. You just sit in your kids fucking protective on, pod. We've we've verified that kids having to go to school on the internet was substandard. The way it was, but not the way it will be. Okay. So mad. We're gonna make cool kid pods, bulletproof kid pods. You can sit at your home and be on the internet all day long, talking to your friends. No cough, no bullets. It's perfect. 
We make kids learn in VR. And Danilo, Danilo, the mom and the stepdad of nine Like the Venture Pods. Maite. Good call. Rodriguez. Now, Maite wanted to be a marine biologist. She was already in contact with Corpus Christi University of A&M for her future college enrollment. Nine years old. Maite cared for the environment so strongly that when the city asked her mother if they could release some balloons into the sky in her memory, her mom said, oh, no. Maite wouldn't want to litter. Maite wore green high-top converse with a heart she had hand-drawn on the right toe because they represented her love of nature. Camilla's got these shoes. Can you show these shoes, please? Wore these every day. Green converse with a heart on the right toe. These are the same green converse on her feet that turned out to be the only clear evidence that could identify her after the shooting. Damn. How about that? Wow, he's, uh, mm. yeah. they wrote a letter. Her mom said if Maite's letter could help someone accomplish her dream, that then her death would have an impact. And it would mean her dying had a point and was it pointless. That it would make the loss of her life matter. The letter reads, Marine biologist, I want to pass school to get to my dream college. My dream college... This dude seems like he would be a bad Hollywood actor. But he was a good Hollywood actor. Yeah, he's got a track record. Beach Bum is one of the finest movies of the last 10 years. It's right up there with Knives Out and three billboards over Ebbing's, Missouri. And is in Corpus Christi by the ocean. Secret of the Ooze. I need to live next to the ocean because I want to be a marine biologist. Marine biologists study animals and the water. Most of the time I will be in a lab. Sometimes I will be on TV. Then there was Ellie Garcia, a 10-year-old. Yeah, this part is fucking awfully sad. Uh, what is it? What? What did you say? It's horribly sad. Yeah, so you're fast-forwarding through it because we don't want to... Should we just go to a new thing if we're not going to watch it? If you want to watch like every minute, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to... like. If if you want to move on to something else, we should. But like these are like little kids' lives that we're going over. And it's like fast-forward to it. It kind of sucks. So if we want to move to the next thing, that'd be cool. Uh, What are you trying to say? Like I I was just saying like uh, I wanted to hear what he had to say after he read all of this and it just feels kind of like disrespectful to fast forward through the uh, little kids yeah. so let's move on to a new thing fallacy. the old popularity no he's, he's a good actor we should move on to another thing so do you want to move on to another thing and you're just like throwing some bullshit at me like it's no, disrespectful I, to kids or like it's what? these particular kids that passed away he's like giving them a memorial so so if, did if, you want to watch something else and you're just like, if hey, you would fuck like you, to Ben, move, for no, like, no, fuck you, Ben, okay. I'm, I'm literally it's saying it's kind of like if we're going to fast forward through these kids who's being memorialized, we should just move on to a new piece of content because it seems to be I, all about the, the kids. And okay. it's, it's kind of it's kind of weird to fast forward through these kids lives. OK. I was just wondering, like. He was building up to something, and I was wondering what he's going through. He like all these to. poor kids that, that died, and it's like super sad. And like, if we want to be super sad, then we'll watch it. If we don't want to be super sad, we shouldn't watch any of it. Okay, because it's all super sad. All right. Ruby Jules wants to hear it. Let's appreciate what's happening in the moment. Yeah. He does build. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I don't even know. So what am I doing? Whatever you want to do. I just think that uh, fast forwarding through these little kids things is like not the right thing to do. If we're going to watch this, we should watch it all. It's like a Fine. super. We'll watch it all. 
Well, we don't have to watch it. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, fast forwarding through it seems kind of fucked. Okay. Um, I was just trying to find like what was like what he was building to. <laughs> Billy, why does Ben hate the children? Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Rodriguez. All right. Now, my mate, they wanted to be a marine biologist. She was already in contact with, cared for the environment so strongly that when the city asked her mother if they could release some balloons into the sky, in her memory, her mom said, oh no, mate, they wouldn't want to litter. Mate, they wore green high top converse with a heart she had hand drawn on the right toe because they represented her love of nature. Camilla's got these shoes. Can you show these shoes, please? Or these every verse. Matter. The letter reads Marine biologist, I want to pass next to the ocean in a ladder. Ellie loved to dance and she loved church. She even knew how to drive tractors and was already working with her dad and her uncle mowing yards. Ellie was always giving of her gifts, her time even half-eaten food on her plate, they said. Said around the house, we called her the great re-gifter. Smiling through tears, her family told us how Ellie loved to embrace. Said she was the biggest hugger in the family. Now, Ellie was born Catholic, but had been going to Baptist church with her uncle for the last couple of years. Her mom and dad were proud of her because they said, she was learning to love God no matter where. The week prior to her passing, she'd been preparing to read a verse from the Bible for the next Wednesday night's church service. The verse was from Deuteronomy 6.5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. That's who Ellie was becoming. <coughs> but she never got to read it. It was Sorry, white on guys night. fart in my face matters. Then there was a fairy tale love story of a teacher named Irma and her husband Joe. What a great family this was. This was an amazing family. Camilla and I, we, 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 we sat with about 20 of their family members in their living room. Along with her four kids, uh, they were kids were 23, 19, 15, and 13. They, they, they shared all these stories about how Irma and Joe served the community and would host all these parties and how Irma and Joe were planning on getting a food truck together <coughs> when they soon retired. They were humble, hard working people. Irma was a teacher who her family said went above and beyond and just couldn't. I had no idea what Matthew McConaughey's wife looked like before just now. Was that his wife? Yeah, that's her. At first, I thought she was just someone that worked at the White House, but apparently no. Say no to any kind of teaching. She's a Brazilian model. Joe had been commuting to and from work 70 miles away in Del Rio for years. Together, they were the glue of the family. Both worked overtime to support their four kids. Irma even worked every summer when school was out. The money she had made two summers ago Paid to, paid to paint the front of the house. The money she made last summer paid to paint the sides of the house. This summer's work was going to pay to paint the back of the house. Because Irma was one of the teachers who was gunned down in the classroom. And Joe, her husband, literally died of heartache the very next day. Yeah, that's the craziest thing that I saw in this. Yeah. She died of heartache? No, no. The, the, the husband of one of the women teachers that were killed died of a heart attack the day after. And there's 
no way you can say that's not related. I mean, I guess maybe there's a slim chance, but it could stress, be stress related, right? Like, well, that, stress like, is a killer. Yeah, stress is a killer on on or, on organs like the heart. Yeah, so it's a lot of stress. That's a whole lot to deal with. They never got to paint the back of their house. They never got to retire. And they never got to get that food truck together. We also met a cosmetologist. She was well versed in mortuary makeup. That's the task of making the victims appear as peaceful and natural as possible for their open casket viewings. These bodies were very different. They needed much more than makeup to be presentable. They needed extensive restoration. Why? Due to the exceptionally large exit wounds of an AR-15 rifle. Most of the body so mutilated that only DNA test or green converse could identify them. Many children were left not only dead, but hollow. So yes, counselors are gonna be needed in Uvalde for a long time. Counselors are needed in all these places where these mass shootings have been for a long time. They need them before the mass shooting happens. The counseling. I was told by many that it takes a good year before people even understand what to do next. Damn. And even then, when they become sure, secure enough to take the first step forward, a lifetime is not going to heal those wounds. But again, you, you know what every one of these parents wanted, what they asked us for? What every parent separately expressed in their own way to Camilla and me? That they want their children's dreams to live on. That they want their children's dreams to continue to accomplish something after they are gone. They want to make their loss of life matter. But we heard from, we heard from so many people, right? Families of the deceased, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, Texas Rangers, hunters, border patrol, and responsible gun owners who won't give up their second amendment right to bear arms. And you know what they all said? We want secure and safe schools, and we want gun laws that won't make it so easy for the bad guys to get these damn guns. So, we know it's on the table. We need to invest in Do you health. think we could have a branch of the military that is just there for, like, a homeland security for school safety? We already kind of... Well, well, the National Guard is the branch of the military that guards us domestically. Should we have, like, the National Guard appoint, like, two or three guards to every school? Like, we have such a huge military budget. Like, sh should we make that a part of the military to protect the school? I mean... I think it's a double-sided solution between greater restrictions on firearms and uh, higher security in schools. I like how Ted Cruz blames it on too many doors in schools. There's just too many doors. Fuck doors. I'm never walking through a door ever again. Uh, I, I don't know. It's like you obviously can't get guns I don't completely gone, right? I don't only think mental health should be free. I think it should be like mandated. I think like people should get like mental evaluations and be able to have Should you get financial incentive for going to mental health? Like should you get paid to go to mental health? I mean, maybe in a in today's capitalistic system maybe, but I Cuz there's people that can't even take time off work to go, right? Like well maybe get yeah, maybe there could be accommodations for that. Yeah. Care. We need safer schools. We need to restrain sensationalized media coverage. We need to restore our family values. We need to restore yeah, our tax American breaks values. for people who go to 
consistent mental health visits. Something but, but like that. But it should be more than mental health. It should be all health. We should be. It should we, be all, but mental health apparently is what's causing a lot of the. We like, should have a health stuff. system that isn't only built to benefit the people making money off of it. Like, we should have a health system that actually benefits the people in it. And we need responsible gun ownership. Responsible gun ownership. We need background checks. We need to raise the minimum age to purchase an AR-15 Prince rifle. Prince says, yes, Ben, I've been saying 21. this for years. Once a year for a physical, twice a year for the dentist, mental health check in every, every four months. And then at the end of that year, you get a tax credit for like 1200 bucks or something. This whole thing that 21 is the magic number that like you're way more responsible with a gun at 21 than you are when you're 18 is such a fallacy. Like there's not that big of a difference. But it's still like a three year period from when you're out of the school system. Usually when you're away from everything, you know, there's there's some it's seniors that are 18, 19, but... you know. We need a waiting period for those rifles. We need red flag laws. And the wealth disparity ruins everything. Be- the wealth disparity doesn't ruin everything. Like the wealth disparity, uh, the country, the system, our country we live in works perfectly for those on the uh, the, the up, upward trend of the wealth disparity. <coughs> our system is perfect for those people. <coughs> we'll uh, revisit this. I got to step out for a minute. The shooter was 18 and got them legally, but raising the minimum to 21 is a band-aid. Yeah, it's definitely a band-aid, right? That's why I brought up the National Guard solution. Like, what are the answers? Where do we go for safety? You know, it's not all just mental health. There's got to be a mixture of a lot of things, but, like, how many of them are just band-aids? How many of them are actually going to fix things? Like, are we having these conversations uh, with people that actually know? Is there a trend towards what we believe is, like, the, the solid answers? Hey, kids, says, how you doing, Billy? Uh, I'm very farty today. I got this MCT oil keto chocolate bar from the grocery outlet, and I smashed that thing earlier in the day. And I think all the erythritol in it has got me extra farty oops you can print AKs now yeah you can print guns like there, there's a whole lot that can be done ban all people and I guarantee this will never happen again we need to destigmatize mental health treatment well yeah I think for the longest time mental health was uh Look down upon because it went against productivity, right? When am I not extra farty, Billy? Uh, I mean, if I'm if I have a regular amount of farts, then that's when I'm not extra farty, right? If I'm just at a regular fart count, so if I'm extra farty, that means whatever regular is for me, I'm beyond Thunderdome. You understand that, Morton Dave? You understand that? You. Pickled Pete. I love you, by the way. I'm beyond Thunderpants, dude. Billy looking wild in the thumbnail. Wild. There were a lot of cops outside the school while uh, he continued to kill even with trained professionals on location. They don't always do their jobs. But are cops really trained professionals in this, those scenarios? I'm like, for mandatory gun training course when you purchase a gun. Training prevent accidents. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Ben Franklin. Yeah, Dragon the West. I do agree that training is a big deal. Um, I feel like you should, you should get a gun Save training. Save our schools, Billy. Save our schools. I'll do what I can, Daniel. Thank you for the dono. I don't know why we don't have the donation pop up on this screen. Like we literally have. The, the live chat down here on the screen. Like, we should have the donation somewhere on it. That'd be cute. That'd be sexual. Yeah. Gonna rock your body. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, better train than the rest of us, of course. Maybe. 
Maybe. I think a lot of cops aren't that well trained for situations like that. And a lot of what they do, you know, is beat work. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they have developed SWAT training. I think there's a whole different level of military conditioning over a police conditioning. Background checks, a DMV for guns, and a mental health check every couple of years, and he charged for violent crime, and you never own a gun again. I don't know if that's right either, though, right? Like, any charge for violent crime and you never own a gun again? Like, we've all had a, a rev moment. Doesn't mean they should take away our Tommy guns and our Uzis. <laughs> Cop don't actually learn the law until they're on the streets. What was your opinion of the Joe and Mr. Girl interaction? Should there be another combo between the two? I don't know if Mr. Girl would want to have another combo with Joe. Um, I don't know how it would go. We talked about Joe coming on and talking about Mr. Girl and his recent stuff with his girlfriend. But uh, I think Joe was maybe going to come in tonight and do that. But he never got a hold of Ben probably. So I don't know about that one. I don't know if a Mr. Girl, Girl versus Joe 2.0 would be all it's cracked up to be. Mr. Girl is a creep. Yeah, he's either a creep or he's playing a creep. Um, Did you bring this up? Did I? I don't know. I'm asking. I was maybe, gone. Maybe you should read the chat. I don't know. I was just asking. Yeah, no, I didn't bring it up, Ben. Okay. Interesting. Use them. These are reasonable, practical, tactical regulations. Thank you, Andrew. To our nation, states, communities, schools, and homes. Responsible gun owners are fed up with the Second Amendment being abused and hijacked by some deranged individuals. These regulations are not a step back. They're a step forward for civil society and, and the Second Amendment. Look, is this cure all? Hell no. But people are hurting. Families are, parents are. And look, as is as divided as our country is, this gun responsibility issue is one that we agree on more than we don't. It really is. Is it sixty eight percent of people believe that this is an issue that needs to be handled that's yeah I, I believe so I know it's uh around the maybe it's 58 percent I don't know if it's 58 68 percent but it's definitely more than half believe that these gun issues are, are a, a serious problem so do you think anything should change I don't know what should change but I definitely think something should change it's been too long of this stuff repeating itself I don't know what the answer is I feel like we need to be having some deep conversations on this I wish big school had enough money to pump in scientists to solve the problem. Big school. But big school doesn't have the uh, the money that the big gun has. Big military, big offensive, big weapon. Big school just doesn't have it. Look, this should be a, a nonpartisan issue. This should not be a partisan issue. There is not a Democratic or Republican value in one single act of these shooters. It's not. But people in power have failed to act. So we're asking you, and I'm asking you, will you please ask yourselves, can both sides rise above? Can both sides see beyond the political problem at hand and admit that we have a life preservation problem on our hands? So we've got a chance right now to reach for and to grasp a higher ground above our political affiliation. Was it you a chance to make that a said that gun violence or was it gun violence was the biggest death to children? Joe Biden said that. Was it Joe Biden? Uh, during his speech that he did a few days after or like the day after the shooting. Yeah, it seems like that shouldn't be the case. Kids getting hit yeah. by cars on their bicycles should have that, he that said, one beat. He said more so than on-duty police officers and and soldiers, even. Yeah, even mouthing off to your parents should have more deaths than 
gun violence to children. Mm. Kids are like the one creature on this earth that you don't need a gun to deal with. Guys, help us get to 60%, please. 60%. That's 0.61%. So close. Yeah. All you guys got to do is literally chuck like $7.24 and it will... It will probably get there. I don't do math, though, so I don't know. Choice that does more than protect your party. A chance to make a choice that protects our country. Sterling W. Now. says he's an actor. Couldn't he at least memorize the speech? What? It's not always That's about not memorizing how... the speech. And most of these fucking uh, people that gum up here read off a teleprompter yeah. anyway. Do you know, and also, like, do you know how many scenes there are for Hollywood movies? Like, a lot of times they're just doing a few lines per shot and then a lot of them will go into a recording studio and read the lines for some like sometimes for like overdub yeah and you'll be on set and shit will change while you're on set i when i was filming i didn't have a ton of lines and when i was in there i was having to go back and reread my lines during the thing just because like your mind wanders and it goes different ways when you're on set you're on set for a long time like you can memorize you can have it down and you can do your part and then somebody else is fucking up and you got to do it over and over again and then you start forgetting what your part is because the energy is just so fucked it's rough ah here's nigan says it's 4.85 to get to 60 percent while getting there us four point eight five and getting us to sixty percent. Would you say like seven? Something? I said seven dollars and twenty four cents. I'm not good at math at all, so I wouldn't even try. I was just trying to sneak an extra uh, <laughs> two dollars and twenty nine cents out of somebody. All right, next it's the road to seventy five percent. I'll tell you what. Uh oh, Ben's thinking. Oh, and for the- I'll bust out the beer bong. A beer bong from a lady. And this is a uh, this is a stout, an imperial oatmeal stout beer. You didn't even eat oatmeal until recently, right? Yeah, I it's told funny. you I was a picky eater when I was. Yeah, a kid. I remember because you did oatmeal on episode what five 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 or something. It was something like that. You had oatmeal on episode yep. seven 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 or something like that. One of those big episodes. You did oatmeal, and uh, and now you're over here drinking oatmeal stout. You've come a long way. <laughs> a stout through a beer bong is insane. Yeah. yeah. So once we get to 75%, I will do uh, one of those. And then, uh, you know, um, for every 10% after that. I think I'm going to go use the restroom. Bing bong. Oh, Coop car. Yes. Thank you, Coop car. Yes. Cheers. I'll be right Tip back. train. <laughs> Coop car coming through with the tip train. I'm taking a kombucha break. All right. What do we got in the fan chat? Fire away. Stabby McHugs, how could you live with yourself in all of your negativity? Man, I would not be able to live with myself. Chug, 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 chug. Oh, we're getting there. Yep. 75% and I'll do it. What am out of a jar? This is my mega pint. The fuck are you talking about? I've got these fucking clear braces in my mouth, and it is not easy to speak right now. I'm almost through month one out of five. I do hate the children. Yeah, I couldn't wait to skip through all that because I just can't stand children. You got it. No, I'm like I'm I'm always I always kind of feel this pressure to like not let things drag on and to kind of like get to the point of things and that's normally what I do. So it's weird to be like, "Oh, uh 
we should watch all of this otherwise just not watch it at all it's like well we already watched some of it fuck hey Ken, what are you trying to type What's the most painful tattoo I've ever gotten? It's on Guns the are for punks. Yeah, I I'm not a big gun person. I've only fired guns a couple times in my life. I'm not one of those weirdos that like carries a gun with me everywhere I go. Like so tattoos on the inside like the softer part of your arm. That for me was the most sensitive part. My altitude is not very high. You know, I'm not too far away from the ocean. And I don't live up in the Cascades. How much for a full sleeve uh, yeah, depends on who's doing it. Get to catch the rest of the show. Yeah! At 75, doing a beer bong. Once Billy comes back, I have to go find the beer bong and rinse it out and everything. My tongue. Holy shit. Is Vosh coming on anytime soon? I've talked to him recently, but we haven't scheduled anything. Uh, by the way, we do on um, on Thursday, June sixteenth, in studio. We're gonna have Adam from YourMovieSucks.org in here, so that should be cool. I haven't had new tattoos in like seven years, so it's been a long time. I'm surprised these look as good as they do still after like, I don't know, like seven years of fading. They still have a pretty solid look. We had Vosh and Joe in the studio at the same time. They were here in person together. Go watch episode 1000. We had so so many worlds colliding, you know. There was there was Adam and Scott, and there was Hannibal and Monty, and then there was Jeff and Vosh, and then me and Billy. What a crowd! And, and Joe and Joe came in too. Think about that. That's a stacked show. Well, the best way to make sure you don't regret a tattoo is to get something that you've always been into. 1,000 was a banger. Thank you. Thank you. We're almost there. But yeah, if you get a tattoo, get something that you've always been into that you think you'll probably always be, be into the rest of your life. It doesn't have to be something sentimental, but it can be. It could be something that's like emotional that you know you're always going to care about. Don't get it because of any anybody else. Like, make it all about you. Because it's on you. 
that's the best way to go about it. And do your research. Don't look for deals. Don't look for like any type of discounts or anything. Good tattoo artists don't need to offer a discount to get new people to tattoo. So it's one of those you get what you pay for kind of things. And it, it really just that's just how it is. I don't want a face tattoo. I'm not getting any face tattoos. I feel like maybe this is just me being old fashioned, but I, I don't want tattoos that wouldn't, I don't want tattoos that would show if I wore like a suit. So na no neck, no face, no hands like that kind of thing. But I'll do the rest. Having these things on my teeth are awful. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate your 10... Aussie dollars, uh, but I wish you would have put that into the Streamlabs pool to help get us to 75%. I've seen DP tattoos before, by the way, back in the day, like someone got like the pan and the DP logo, the old DP logo. Thoughts on Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um... It's fine enough. I have been watching it. I feel like they try to rewrite history into things where we were like, what? Kind of like the prequels. Um, like, I don't need this deep history between Leia and Obi-Wan. I don't really get that. Like, they're going overboard with it maybe a little bit. It, it like... It's it did in a new hope it did kind of seem like she knew him to to some degree but this whole thing they had like this adventure together I don't that seems like a little far fetched Shut up stabbing my cogs I don't want to hear it anymore No. No, 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 no. Yes. So we're at 68% now. I had to go find the beer bong. Go watch The Boys. Episode 4 of Kenobi was bad. I have to watch episode four of Kenobi. Or did I watch it? I can't remember. Was that the one where they went to go get... I don't fucking know, dude. I don't know. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. I don't know. Worst chase scene ever. Can we do an he's all that with Jared Genesis? Can we make him the prom king? Uh, I would if it wasn't for the fact that he'd probably try and go to junior prom. It's the one that's too short. I can't remember if I watched it. I don't know. Baby bird you? I got you, Aunt. We should make Cobes prom king. Yeah, that's that's like that's my thought is 
do a Cobra makeover and a Gucci's makeover, have them meet up and have them go to like a fancy swagged out dinner that was catered to both of their tastes. Like that, if I had an extra like five grand laying around, I think I would spend that to just make them have the dopest little date night. I think that would be so fucking fun. That would be like my content that I would want to do. Of all the people you guys cover on the show whose life would make a great adult swim show, I think Cobes' life isn't too far off from Squid Billy's. Um... I think I think you could have like a 12 minute drunken peasants adult swim show with like me and Ben and uh I don't know Joe and I don't know Scott Hannibal and Monty recurring switching around each episode it's like an 11 minute cartoon and we're all like over the top characters of ourselves and then we have the over the top cartoon versions of all our of all our characters can we get adult swim to pick that up as a fucking parody of a podcast squid billy vibes from brett yeah after i was thinking of the squid billy uh of cobes i was thinking of brett in the bed like the squid billy mom was that's when i went on to say the whole fucking dp episode would be cute bryant field always thinking of others when you think of others you're really thinking of yourself because when others around you are vibrant and happy they shine and reflect back onto you when you think of yourself you're actually the one time you're really not thinking of yourself being selfish is the most it's the worst thing you can do for yourself your pretty face is going to Seattle 2021 I don't know what that means I guess is what vibes would I have you'd have like a little cute chipmunk face most of the time and we would pick on you and you'd just start crying and you get really sad puppy dog eyes and we'd be overly mean to you and then we'd hit a snap point and you would turn into the most vile decrepit belligerent thing and all that time we spent picking on this poor helpless cute little thing would immediately be validated with the with the 30 second flip out you'd have Super Jail was good. That's what I was thinking of. The characters in the boxes would be like Super Jail. Like Hannibal Amonti from Super Jail. Scott and Joe from Super Jail. Ben and I from Super Jail. And then like Brett Keane would be from Squid Billies. Cobes would maybe be Carl from Aqua Teen. I knew someone that was a DP fan that was one of the animators on Super Jail. Hmm. Yeah. Billy, could you retell the story about you and Joe and DBZ? What did me and Joe and DBZ do? I don't know. Help me get to 75%. A Death Clock member, that'd be pretty badass. Carl has more class than Cobes, but he doesn't have more hair than Cobes. Have you done any drag shows? If you have, where's the video? I mean, they weren't drag. Well, I've done drag shows, not in drag. Like, I've had. You've done drag streams. Yeah, like, I was at Rebar when we filmed Pinwheels with drag queens on stage. Like, we reset a drag show at, for the Pinwheels video at a place where they did drag shows. I've been on shows with drag queens. I've been in drag. I've done all that stuff. There's video everywhere. Princess Sources, would you be mean to me, Billy? That's just the that's your BPD talking, Princess Or. 
We need to switch to something a little more lighthearted. Ba -boom. I love everyone, Hank Chill. Saying Billy loves BPD girls is wrong. I love everyone. I exploit BPD girls. Get it right. Oh, my God. Feeding time at Boglum Farm. What's up, YouTube? Huh? Y'all sitting here waiting patiently. Yeah, I'll start the stream when I want to start it because it's my stream. Now, I ordered some home stretch bar and grill. I got a uh, chili cheese dog with fries, 12 wings, and some curds. Damn, that's a lot to eat for Kahuna one person. He usually Even eats like pieces of it. Thank you, Pixel. usually eats pieces of it and then puts it in the fun. fridge, right? Does he? I don't know. Does he? I, does, I never seen him finish his meals, but maybe it's just cut out. Yeah. Normally, what we watch is cut Cheese up. Birds. I just don't. I've never paid attention to if he eats at all. That's it's too fine. much food. Beautiful. Big old chili cheese dog. Oh my god! It's a nice looking chili well, cheese dog. Thing in makes Sonic chili wings. cheese dogs look like a joke. Are those tendies? Oh, what are those wings? That. That's beautiful. Those are wings. That's our food challenge, you two. Oh, a food challenge! Yeah, so he is going to try and eat it all. Let's see if he wins the food challenge. Mm -hmm. Sting and honey garlic. Sting and honey garlic. That's good wing. Yeah. Mm. Then after you do the wings, we're going to do the hot dog. And then after I do the goddamn hot dog, I want to do the fries and the curds last. Probably would eat the hot dog first. I don't know. So let's get it, YouTube. The structural integrity of the chili cheese dog getting cold. do a challenge. Seems like a problem to me. Seems like the bread will get soggy, but who knows? Mm. Oh, yeah. Just wait for That's this chili food. cheese apple. Mm. Oh, God. He's going to eat it like an apple. I don't know. Is is is, is it really going to be like that? That would be ridiculous. The hot dog's too long to be eaten like an apple. You got to eat that like a, like a dang dang. dang. Mm. I kind of want to see Cobes eat with... Uh, Nicocado avocado. Friday now. night, man. Get it. I just want to see everybody eat with Nicocado avocado. They gave avocado. me a couple of wet naps with the wings. Greatly appreciated. Are those pheromone wet naps? So tactical five naps? Five left. Tactical five wings, naps. man. Mm. We're just going to keep eating until we can't eat no more. It was four seconds that Wait, I ate that hot dog in zero run. Four seconds. And that was not as big as Cobra's hot dog there. I think it would take me at least 16 seconds right, to eat that Cobra dog challenge. with all the... Ch oh, fuck! Oh, no! Oh, my stash in my beard. Should be really getting a kick out of watching this shit. Oh, God. So we may, in fact, need those white wipes later. Nah. Oh, you need them now. You need a whole fucking bib, my dude. No. That was the gonna, wings he was slopping. Now on. he's gonna face the fuck himself with this thing. From the home stretch bar and it's grill. A big old dog. The chili and cheese and all it's kinds a foot of long. Yes, Yeah. <clears throat> I know zero run. You're doing great. Oh, he's got to put the. Is that creamer or sour ranch cream? Oh, it's ranch. ranch. Like, that is the sign of a weak palate when you dog. add ranch to everything. To a chili cheese dog. Yeah. Uh, holy mackerel, YouTube. That is a big-ass chili cheese dog. That is Home a big chili cheese dog. Grill, big kahuna hot dog challenge. 12 other stinging hot garlic wings. A 12-inch chili cheese dog. Fries and curds. Is that Pretty their straightforward, man? 
Is that an actual so challenge they have is there? Just to get the two biggest items out of the way. Ah! Yeah, he slurps the shit out Ooh. of all the sauce packets. I don't like the slurping. Ranch. That's good ranch. Yeah, that's ranch good is ranch. delicious. Yeah, ranch is ranch has its places. Ranch with some tendies. Oh shit. I had some sriracha ranch wings today at Mod Pizza. It was tasty. Mm. That's a good chili cheese dog. There goes the half apple. Ah! It's going to get a little suggestive with the mess. Oh, poor Those guy. The are going to love that. They do. They do. Like if Cobra actually completed this goddamn challenge, wouldn't that be something? Yeah, it would be something. The chili cheese dog is good. Doesn't count if half of it's on your beard, though, Cobes. Oh, my God. Oh, my fucking yeah, God. Trey. Why has nobody taught him how to eat a hot dog? He's glorping. Like an apple. It's glorping it's time. Apple. He's holding this dog with all the ranch like it's a they fucking rat trying box. to get away. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god. This challenge definitely need pony and napkins. Vlad uh, Tep says, doesn't that make you want to lick that out of his beard though, care. Billy? I'll just wash my hands. Uh, survey says, boxes. no. I'm not going to need to do that for like the last two boxes. Oh my god. Who needs paper towels when you can wipe your ranch hands off on the fucking french fries? That's a long apple. We out here eating long apple today, boys. I'll never eat a hot dog again. That's most definitely what's up. <laughs> must be good eating. Billy would lick his beard for $100 easily. Yeah. I'm not a fucking baby. I'm getting ranch all up in my fucking goatee and mustache. Like, I can only imagine the jokes that the fucking haters are going to make. I'm not a hater, Copes. I'm going to do the cheese curds last. But I'm still joking they're, about they're that. Be the easiest to eat. Are they? The cheese curds. I would say the fries. Uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a toss up. I think the fries are heavier than cheese curds. Mm. There's the cheese wall though. I don't know. Yeah, it's a toss up. The curds uh, might be easier because they're maybe more flavor. This is probably quite disgusting watching King Cobra J versus to stuff his mouth. Ah, Cobes. Looks I'm enjoying this very much. Challenge. The cheese will not be hot and melty. It's, I bet you the cheese isn't hot That's and melty when it gets to the house. Mm. He's going to lick his lips to a treat when he wakes up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, no. 12 wings. This is 12 pain. Hot dog. Sorry you're in pain. <laughs> ah, not to slurp! Not to slurp! So even if I don't do the whole challenge... The memes. He's already backing out. Cope That's sounds like a good girl really. after a hand job. I had a really bad day at work. Thank you, sweet boys, for this wholesome <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. 5% more, morning, 5% more. 5% more. Glad you're having a little better night. Realistically, how much would it cost to <gasps> if Ian's was to go on a road trip to hang out with Cobes and do a DP episode with him, Earl? If Ian's hypothetically would be down to do it. Uh, there's a budget behind that for sure. Um, and then he, we couldn't guarantee he'd agree to it. Yeah, I'm going to have to s stay in Casper, Wyoming for seven months to become his friend. Going to his favorite pubs, offering to buy him beers if he shows up. Uh, Telling Warlord, is that the guy's name? The meth head that he beat yeah. up. Yeah. Tell Warlord that if he gets me a meeting with King Cobra, I'll buy him a fucking dummy rock. Messy good, YouTube. Teddy Rubskin is a shit. fan after that chili dog. He's evolving. He might be evolving. Bog cocky hot dog challenge? It did look like a bog cocky. Oh, starting to show the he slurps ball. because he's a sexy oh, goth bad boy. Damn. Oh, starting to hit. 
<laughs> Damn. Welcome to the bog. We've saved you a seat. It's a delicious well, treat to watch Cobra eat. Dog and 12 wings. Those chair bugs are going to be eaten for weeks. Rude. Challenge officially failed. That's what's up. He's given up. I'll talk a big game, but to be honest, that's oh. a lot of fucked food. It's okay, Cobes. You so sure gave it the old the college try. Documentaries. People come out, come over to Casper to see you because of what I do on YouTube. And I know what the trolls are going to text me. It's predictably pathetic. Ew. You know, I don't even I don't even care if I failed my own creative challenge, to be honest. I got to show it off on YouTube, that's all that counts. If I beat Cobes creative challenge, do you think he has to have a meeting with me? I don't think so. I, I think, don't think he does any he walks alone. I think so. if I go to Casper and I branch up a fucking foot long, have ten sting and honey wings, and some stupid curds it's and not some, keto. some fr it's not. <laughs> it's not at all. It's not keto. If I can power through that, does that win me a meeting with the god? I don't think so. You too. Hey, Sean's back. Well, look who decided to show back up. Yes. I got Sean out of the packaging. I took a photo of his, of his packaging on for Facebook. Yeah, if I don't do it Boglum style, the there's no way he'll meet Boglum up with style. me. Boglum, Boglum style. Boglum I'm very pleased Eaten with the way Boglum the, style. Oh, the way the upgrade oh, turned oh, out. Oh, Boglum I style. I got his, his Aussie shirt back on. And the back of the Aussie shirt also hides the opening where his control, his control stick mm. is. The, uh, the the brand new suit on him looks great, but that's how he looked basically before he left. So to celebrate the occasion, I have eighty percent uh, of a rum haven, haven bottle with real coconut water. Been sitting in the freezer. Look at that condensation. Oh yeah. YouTube, I can draw pictures on it. That's like a a alcoholics aquarium so right there. Turn. Um, the next thing I want to do is get some rubbing alcohol and like a good cloth and like buffer out the paint spots so it's just his eyes. But yeah, dude, the upgrade is smooth, dude. Easy to use. It has a control stick in the back. Like here's the uh, bag I unwrapped him from. Look at that. It's on the bag. Right there, show it. Oh, throwthings.com, Sean's standard upgrade. Throwthings.com. <laughs> they took Sean, and he has his original shoes, his original hands, and his original head. They just gave him a new body that's no longer stuffed. It's hard and it's hollow. It's got a control stick in the back. And it has a little trigger to work the mouth, and you can make them tilt, turn, nod. Very lifelike. There better not be a fleshlight edition. So did the old Sean get broke or what? <clears throat> uh, maybe somebody offered to re repair him, update him for him, okay. maybe. I don't know. Glad I got to keep the original head. I yeah. Like to keep this as a souvenir, original but... feet, the original hands. Keep it as a souvenir, Cobes. Cool. Keep it. Uh, yeah. I'm going to put that in my uh, I'll put it in here because that's just... It was a cheap puppet. Now it's like a mid-range puppet. All right. It's bigger, stronger, faster. Now we need a glass. I could do the drink combo again, but... I'm gonna drink it straight. Right, straight okay. sips. The combo I made with this coconut rum. YouTube, phenomenal. <laughs> he loves everything Even he this, eats. Uh, you ever notice? Or drink. It says, it's all good. Standard upgrade dummy supplied by customer Charlie Mc slash Sean because Sean was based off of Charlie McCarthy ventriloquist puppets, and I, I painted his eyes like. Dark emerald green. 
gave him some spooky goth makeup and made his hair black. That's most definitely what's up. <laughs> That's most definitely what's up. Now, here he is. Here's the dummy. Then, like I said, the next thing I do is we get all these, like, little, you know, spots of paint like that off, you know. How are you going to do that? Like, paint spots right there. Oh, like, zero Ron, you're so some, horrible. Like, flush colored <laughs> paint and just very lightly go in there. He's and like, do it myself, I want to see Coves you know? when Ozzy dies. That's dark <laughs> as fuck. That's fucked up. Holy shit. With the tiny it's ass camera brush, like, shh, shh. No wonder why Zero Ron likes to make Egghead cry. It's fucked up. I'd have better off, like, using, like, some kind of rubbing alcohol. But he used to have a, a string. TMDF you. used to be. That's most definitely fucked up. Uh, Sean and mounted his head on a control stick. It was attached via the inside back here. So I'm going to lift up the Prince of Darkness's righteous shirt in the back here. There was literally an opening right here where I can put my hand. But then if you just do this, you can't even see it. So it kind of adds a little bit more, you know. But this is exactly how he was dressed before he left. And I took the uh, the Aussie shirt off and the necklace off just so they wouldn't get lost. But you're all thinking it. Wow! Sticky. What the fuck is up to you two? It's been a goddamn minute. Yeah. Yeah. And you could not get me out of the bag quickly enough. Oh, sorry. It took me a hot minute to get you out of that uh, that plastic bag. Yeah. Why the hell? You know what's wrong to have plastic bags on people's heads? Dags? Yeah, I know it's wrong to have plastic bags on people's heads. You need to share that with me. You feel me on that? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Is he going to pour it in the dummy's mouth? We'll pour no. a little bit into our coffee mug. Oh, no. He's going to pour his hear about the like organization called Patriot Front. They were gonna really? terrorize a pride event today. They loaded up in the back of a U-Haul and got stopped by the cops. Nope. How? What do you mean by terrorize? Like, were they gonna be dicks or were they gonna like do a shoots? Do we know what level that was? I've heard of Patriot Front before. Ed, shut up. I've been Sean. to a couple of meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, big pour. Heavy pour. They had guns in the U-Haul. Hmm. It's like a tea That's party but for cold. degenerates. Yes, yes. Ooh. All right, Cobes. Have a nice sip. What about Sean? <laughs> what's happening? Cobes, what's happening? Well, now his head can tilt. I can see if I can make it tilt. Tilt. Turn. Full circle. Nod. Control for the mouth. Pretty straightforward. So now I want to do Sean's classic funeral home joke. Uh-oh. So, Sean, where do you work? I work at the funeral home. You work at the funeral home, yeah? I'm used to seeing assholes with no lives. Tonight's no exception. Fuck you. Fuck <laughs> you! God. Do you have to be a fucking asshole? Yes. I'll show you an asshole. When I fart. Give <laughs> some of that rum, damn it. Why doesn't Cubs do kids' parties? 
Oh my God, Sean is drinking. <sighs> He's too busy your, watching uh, cuties. Holy shit! They yanked a string out of my fucking neck, yanked my goddamn limbs off, and they reattached him to this badass badassery right here. So kind of painful, but worth it. And then I got to travel, travel, Ugh. travel. Well, your ventriloquism is rusty since I've been gone. Well, people have been asking about you, Sean. They're like, when's you coming back? And I'm like, I don't know. Wait, they were asking about me? They're like, yeah, when are you getting Sean back, dude? And I'm like, I don't know, man. We'll wait and see. Wait, they asked about me? Yeah, we, we, we were asking we were where Sean was. Sean. We knew he was off the couch because he, he had Sean, I believe, before he stopped streaming for a while on the couch, right? Last we saw before that break, he was back there on the couch and when he came back, Sean was gone and we had thought that in his lonesome, maybe Cobes had done something horrible to Sean like he'd done to that rubber doll he had before. But now it turns out he was just getting uh, ventriloquist reconstructive surgery. I must say they did a really good job of fixing him up. I can get like the paint spots off with like some rubbing alcohol or some shit, you know. And it's all over like the back of his ear. This man like, has Aussie tat tatted on his knuckles. Fact. Face. Your face. Okay. Behave. Behave. I got a joke, Sean. What's that? What's a beaver's favorite snack? What? Dick? Get it? Because you said beaver. Get it? I was going to say wood chips, you perverted asshole. <laughs> Wait, chips? Yeah, wood chips. Uh, I'll tell you what. What's that, Sean? You leave the jokes to me, dude. Leave them to me. Leave them to me. Oh, come on, my jokes are funny. No. Mm -mm. Nope. Your jokes suck. And why you got your hand up my ass? It's... It's not up your ass, you little smart ass. It's in your back. Well, it kind of looks like it's up my ass from this angle, doesn't it? Like, whoa! Since when are you a proctologist? Technically, it's in your back, but the way it's covering it... Well, shit! Sean Zach. <laughs> I see you, YouTube. Ah. Okay, don't be creepy. What? Uh -huh. Don't. Okay. Don't be creepy. Shit, guys. Uh, 71.35%. Help us get to 75. It's the next big milestone. 75%. Chuck in a couple bucks. Link in the description. Link uh, pinned in the chat. Help us reach that goal tonight. And Step right up. It's time to go. He called me, sir. It got me so humiliated. People are discriminating against wolves. Wow. They're laughing at us, at our stupidity. We got nobody to call my own. I'm Mr. Lonely. All we need, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, all the donos. That's all we need. We're coming up on the four-hour mark, and I don't think this is going to be one of those crazy uh, five-plus-hour shows. I don't think it's going to be that. A potential game changer for restaurants and their customers. L.A. passed a motion last week that would ban most gas appliances in new commercial and residential construction starting next year. It's all in the name of fighting climate change, but not everyone is happy. KKL 9's Candace Crone is live in Studio City with the details. Candace. Ross, good evening. Yeah, this Candace. I've never seen that name spelled this way. Usually it's Candace. C A N D A C E. Yeah. Can dis. Can dis. You can't diss me like that. He wants to it's actually uh, the night of her conception. 
Uh, they named her, her. Her dad was like, "Can this dick fit in your ass?" So and then a new building the mom set. was like, "Nah, I put it in my puss." And then boom, they had a baby. Help bring about a cleaner and greener environment, but those in the restaurant industry say that it could leave them in the red. In the red. <laughs> Sizzling chicken and beef kebabs are one of the many items customers enjoy at Amir's Falafel because of the incredible flavor an open flame gives. The food just cooks much quicker. Uh, using an electric stove, it would just take so much longer to cook the food. Um, I think the food also gets a, like a they get a, it gets a kick into the flavor. While cooking on a gas stove is a staple for this restaurant, it might not even be an option for new restaurants starting in 2023. Last Friday, the LA City Council voted to ban most gas appliances most? for new construction, both residential and commercial. I wonder what the exceptions are. Probably if you're rich enough. Yep. <laughs> that would mean new homes and businesses must come with electric stoves, water heaters. It's probably and a, just a fine. It's part of the city's efforts to fight climate change. The owner of Rice Box, a Chinese barbecue restaurant in downtown LA, says they're looking to open another location next year and are worried about the cost and impact of having to go all electric. The walk itself is our identity, our culture. It's really who we are. So when we're not allowed to use gas, then you're telling us we're not allowed to use walks. Uh, we're not allowed to use our own cooking equipment, our own identity of who we are. Leo Lee says Whoa. the new ordinance could force them Whoa. to reimagine how they feed their you're patrons or you're drive robbing them, them out of their town. Identity. But when it comes to our opening of our restaurant, up. we simply will say no, and we'll go to a different city. When you think about like authenticity, uh, they are cooked wow, on like Wow, that's quite the name. Plane. Arabella so, Bardakian? Yeah, I think that's a... Armenian? I was going to say thank you. Are you still, Are you having, still having me? Tap some time. Yes. Oh, yeah. Chug, chug, chug. Yeah. Chug, chug. That's seventy five percent. I believe tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, tomorrow. I was going to say Persian. But they they have similar last names. Yeah, it could be Persian. Uh, Arabella makes me think it Ir might be uh, Iran and Armenia are uh, very close to each other. Arabella is uh, Latin, right? So I think that we could be dealing Maybe. with a uh, mixed um, ethnicity yeah. human being. How could she? Oh. It kind of takes away from that. Both customers and employees say while it is important to fight climate change, it remains to be seen just how much of an impact Oh, God, he's the eating the fucking hot dog like Cope. The bigger picture of preserving the environment. I'm all for conserving this the world. This woman make is all for conserving the world, except when it comes to all the... Slave mind pewter in her in earrings. States have already adopted new rules banning gas <laughs> in new buildings. Pewter. Oh, that slave mind <laughs> pewter. <laughs> she had some massive earrings. All that slave. All that slave mind pewter. Blood dot. Blood pewter. The blood pewter. <laughs> all right, let's do this. This is gonna be rough with the stout. Yeah, I'm going to take uh, these out for a You're going to go big baller Ben screen? I'm going to take... Oh, yeah, that's smart. Go big baller Ben screen after you remove I those. feel like a schoolgirl again. Oh, if you need me to look up your skirt, anything for <laughs> I'll the I'll make cops. sure to wear one next time. Ooh. Sarah says, I say we speed up climate change. That might be the answer to climate change, right? When that happens uh, in, in the United States... Aside from Alaska, the Rust Belt will be the prime real estate mm. because that's where all the water is, and that's where like the most temperate climate will still be. Waterfront property in Ohio. Any any place around there, yeah. And Seattle will become the lost city of Atlantis. Seattle will become like it was this time last year. Earth. A barren desert. Earth. Earth. Here he goes. Walking down the street. Get the funniest looks. You got it locked shut. Everyone we meet. You gonna go big screen on this one? Should I? Yeah. The kids love to see you drink. Yeah, why do they like that? They're just they're do just they fun loving dice party dice? kids. Uh hey hey, we're the junkies. Hey hey, we're the junkies. Or hey hey, we're the drunkies. Or hey hey, we're the Are chunkies. we all of those things? <laughs> We're the, the junkies, junkies. the We're drunkies, the or the chunkies. 
We could be all those. Hey, hey, all of those sound chunkies. fun, honestly. Yeah, we're just living. <laughs> we're just out here living our best life. Um, all right, here we go. Beer bong for the lady. Oh, which way does it go? <laughs> a little pop, a little popping, soda popping. I don't want to spill it. Yeah. Which way does it? Oh, there it is. Okay. Now it's open. Here we go. All right. Jug, 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 jug. Beer bong. Stab McHugg says, Billy, help him, you lazy cunt. Stab McHugg's, I've never helped Ben with a beer bong before. He's done these multiple times. How does he chug? For me to help him would be an insult to Ben. Hmm. I like that the flavor. The military is the largest polluter in the world, and both parties Shit, always give show? them more money. This is class warfare. Class warfare. Thank you, it thank is. you. All right, so at uh, 80%, I do the next one. Oh damn! Eighty percent. Yeah, Ben. Um, ask him for the sippies. You know how uh, I I can't remember if I told you about this, but do you remember uh, when the Wii was a new console? Yeah, Nintendo Wii. Um, they had the Wii Sports yeah. package, and it was one of the best games for the Wii. I think it came with it too. I think it was a pack in. Um, I think so. Yeah, but they came out with one for Switch, and it's very similar. And today, I almost bowled a 300 in the bowling game. I got 11 strikes in a row. Damn. And, and if you know, on the 10th frame in bowling, you get three tries, and I got an eight on that last one. That's fucked up. Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. So I got a 298. That's uh, pretty good, though. What's it? What's a turkey? Is that three in a row? Three in a row, yeah. So you were just getting all these turkeys? Yeah, I got 11 strikes in <laughs> Vito a row. Vito says, wait a whiff. Was that a hey, whiff? whatever. Was that a whiff? I don't know. I don't know the rules. I've never done. You want to take me on in Switch Bowling, Vito? Whoa. You want to talk shit? I bet you couldn't beat me, Love motherfucker. You boys. All the... Really, what you playing in MTG? Show us your sweet deck. Vito, all the fucking figurines in the world on a shelf behind you won't make you better than me at this, all right? <laughs> he bowls straight three hundies, he I says. <laughs> Vito does have, like, classic bowler body. You could tell he's got, like, that fucking... I don't care how many Mr. Swirlies he's friends with, okay? I'm telling you, Vito's got that body where he got, walks in, eats a fucking plate full of tachos, and bowls at 300. He looks like a man. <laughs> him and fucking uh look at him talking shit he hit the lanes like he owns them like he hey vito uh we're, we're we're coming to la really soon to touch tips yeah if you're gonna party with the kids yeah if you're gonna party with the kids touch tips we have uh mr mustard asked what magic deck i'm playing uh my newest deck build is red green uh jolene the plunder queen it's treasure build with a, a slight dragon edge across the top. I'm thinking about maybe knocking the dragons down a little bit and pushing more treasure interaction, but I kind of like the the, the the dragon, red, green, dragon build. Vito, Vito, can, can I be on an episode of The Biggest Problem where I argue that Billy the Fridge is the biggest problem in the universe? The biggest problem of the universe because the universe doesn't because i have a solid argument you couldn't even have a solid bowel movement boo movement <laughs> if bowling is like golf then i'm a pro see we we're, we're both booked on biggest problem you see this now what day i don't know we'll have to figure it out i'm only in town for like three and a half days yeah so. you need time town area Tips. We gotta know when to touch the tips. Whether or not Dick and I will be playing Magic the Gathering cards. Fridays usually. Are you in town on Friday? I leave Friday night. Boo. I gotta figure out which days I'm available because yeah. I might be touching testicles You're, with the champions. Yeah, yeah. We, we we should do this though. I've I've always wanted to do such a thing. So. 
your devilish valet deck does like eight million damage. <laughs> standard legal. You play standard. What's wrong with you, Vito? What's wrong with you? Two more percent for I'll a have second beer bong. Decks. That one hit me hard. Just wait till I start slurring after the next one. Jix has a Grixis commander deck with Bolus. I built an O. Is it Obeska or Obeka? I can't remember if it's Obeka or Obeska. Whichever the uh, turn ending Grixis ogre or orc or whatever the fuck she is. I got uh, the Grixis in that. It's sweet. It's sweet. It's a sweet build. I run a mana base for Tainted Pact. For those of you that have no idea what we're talking about, I don't. it must sound so intriguing. It sounds... It must sound so intriguing. It sounds... Uh, Vito of the Thorn... Of course Vito would run Vito of the Thorn Rose. Is it vampires or is it just life gain? Vito with the mono black. Sheesh! Vito of the Dusk Rose? Is that is that the one it is? This sounds like British cigarette style stuff to me. It's just Magic the Gathering okay. cards. All I was right. thinking about making an Alenda... Of the Dusk Rose Vampire deck. I should... Uh, Vito, you know, you don't have enough time to bowl high games when you're involved in all this other... Chug, 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 chug. There's 80%. Uh, damn, damn, damn. I would have made way to tell $700 to do the next chug, but now you're just going to have to do a third I'm an chug. alcoholic. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true, though. Dusk Rose. I'm going to have to bring some of my decks down so we can all slap spells and touch tips. Yeah, me and Vito are and Dick, and we're going to have a big Magic the Gathering card meetup. We're going to play Magic the Gathering cards. The Locust God says the Locust God is the best I want to see you with your suitcase full of your cardboard crap. Let's force Dick to play. Does Dick play Magic? I thought I saw him talk about playing Magic. I thought I saw him talk about it. Not only... Well... Dick plays m- magic doc, ma- <laughs> magic docs, magic, oh, uh, Maddox the Gathering. Yeah, Maddox. There. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> Maddox the Gathering. <laughs> Dude, Gathering I want that to be a, a game lawsuit. now. Maddox the Gathering. Yeah, if anybody's in the Los Angeles area, Vito and I are going to host a Magic the Gathering card tournament. <laughs> Maddox the Gathering. A Maddox the Gathering card <laughs> tournament. Oh, my God. Alpha right. Rudy says Magic is a good investment. So did Martin Screlly. And look what happened to They him. locked Martin Screlly up. Black Lotus was under 10K. Now it's upwards of $100,000. Say in a five year period behind bars, young Martin Screlly do his shit. We uh Vito, how close are you guys to Anaheim? Gotta figure out what we're yeah, zipping around. Because we're actually staying in Anaheim, so gotta figure out all the, the You guys shit. could do your gay shit uh hooker thing at the uh di- uh at Disneyland. But then I'll never see you and we won't make any content. The, that, that, that's a, stay, that would be at Disney World, though, not Disneyland. Oh, Disney is that World only is, in Disney World? Yeah, they don't have the hotel oh. at Disneyland. At oh, I thing. thought they had that at Disneyland, They have a, too. the thing at the 45 minutes. Yeah, fuck rush hour. We yeah, have to do it in the, the middle of the night. We have to have a 3 well, a.m. meetup. I also want to get into We're, L.A. Like, I want to go to Sunset and, like, you know, other fun places. So Yeah, we're coming down VidCon week. Drunken Peasants will be at the Disneyland Resort signing autographs, yes. We'll no, be... what we're going to oh. do is bend over at the what? Disney gates and just give up our asses. To... For Mickey. Yep. We're getting icky for Mickey. Yep. We're getting sticky for Mickey. <laughs> I do want to try some of those churros, though. I want another Disney turkey leg. A man police say broke leg. into the Dallas Museum of Art, destroying almost six million dollars worth of ancient artifacts. Allegedly said he dick. did it because he was Here's mad at his two. girl. Twenty-one oh, year shit. old. I'm full screen. Internet. You go full screen for oh, this sh- one. Yeah, the kids well, like it when you go full. I didn't take my uh, teeth out. Oh, you have to take the teethy out. Uh, I don't have to. It just it makes them nasty. Uh, but whatever, I'll just do it. Here we go. Here, mm-hmm. you got the play. 
Doop, doop, doop. Ben's going to doop. Drink a little doop. Doop, doop, doop. Beer bong for the lady. That's oatmeal stout. <laughs> yeah. It is charged with criminal. It's very thick. Thick. That's Jim um, Dallas. I have the advantage of I moved to a college town when I was old enough to go to college, but didn't go to college and just partied like I was going to college the whole time. And that created me to be the beautiful, amazing man I am today. Who would have ever thought that all that drinking would amount to an illustrious career? <laughs> it's beautiful. Yep. God makes all kinds. Ben, how does it taste? Would you recommend it? Yeah, it's delicious. It's Fremont Brewing Dark Star Imperial Oatmeal Stout. Here's Fremont my handle. is a standard here in the Here's Seattle area. Spout. Fremont's a wonderful neighborhood. If you're ever in Seattle, you should check Cesar it out. Cesar Torres says, where's TJ? Do you have dementia? Like, are you... He's on the goddamn podcast. <laughs> that, that That's a good one, too. In the year 1994, a rogue comet passed between the moon and the earth, creating a new world of super science and sorcery and magic the gathering nerds. All right. The next one is when we hit the goal. Goal! Let's go. Police say he evaded security guards at the museum, smashed glass casings, and destroyed ancient Greek items. Fuck. At least one was 400. That's what really years. made me mad about ISIS. Um, they were, like, fucking up museums in the, like, very birthplace of human civilization. They were killing, like... The artifacts that we had of like the first real human society. Yeah, up until that, I was all for for everything they were doing. <laughs> of course not, but that yeah. was like <laughs> to me, like they were doing that to erase the past and create like this new weird Islamic future. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it would be really interesting to see if there was a timeline for art. Uh, from when it was created to when it was destroyed to see how long certain things that we documented lasted before they were destroyed. I mean, we have like paintings in caves in Africa that are so old that like the earliest humans ever created those, you know, and they haven't been destroyed yet. That would be a travesty. Um, yeah, but it takes manpower and money to protect everything. Um, I, I remember I went to the Vatican and there's the, uh, I can't remember the name of the, uh, it, there's an Italian name for it. It's the Virgin Mary holding the corpse of the, of dead Jesus in her arms. It's very, it, it's like twice the size of real life. Um, I can't remember it right now, but they had to put it behind bulletproof glass because people kept trying to fuck the body, shoot it. No, oh. like people were trying to shoot it. Throw big things at it. Yeah. Uh, I I believe it was a Michelangelo uh, sculpture. Hmm. Can't remember it right now. The Pieta. Yes, that's it. That's it. Thick, fucked soul. Yep, that's it. Um, it's in the Vat. It's in uh, Saint Peter's Basilica, behind bulletproof glass. Edgardo Abara says, "What's the most interesting WWE controversy? Maybe we'll get to that." But right now, we got to watch this art get destroyed. EC. Fox 4 Stephen Dow spoke with one of the art directors for the museum and joins us now. Yeah, like even Michelangelo's David, um, his foot had to be reconstructed. His foot? Yeah, because someone like broke it. Yeah. His... And the, 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 the crazy thing about Michelangelo's David, it weigh, it's so heavy. It's, it's the depiction of probably like an average height man, but it's like... I don't know, like 10, 15 feet tall, you but, know? But they kept and the penis to scale. And it, it, well, there was the great castration, too, also. But it, it has a single base. It's one leg. It has one leg that's, like, up, 
but it has like it it has a one single base for its height is insane hmm. that it was made that way yeah and, and the penis like you said was actually used to be bigger but all those catholic women came and sucked it down to if small you little... see um anything that was like like genitals covered up with grape leaves and, and that kind of shit that's what was known as the great castration a pope decided, like, no, we can't show genitals anymore. Fucking dickhead And pope. before that, it was fine. And we still live in this, like, post-Roman society where, like, well, puritanical people, like, genitals can never be shown. The great castration was one thing. I hate the great digitization. Have you ever seen Japanese porn? You know that I, I think the American occupation actually is the reason for yeah, that. Yeah, really rude, really rude for us to ruin porn for the Japanese to the point where they have to do real gross stuff just to make up for the fact that the Peters are all uh -huh. digitized. Hurting the pins, please don't hurt the pins. Dallas Stephen. The museum was open today to the public, just parts of it had to be closed off, of course, because of the damage and the alleged reason for the more than $5 million in damage. Allegedly, the suspect was mad at his girl. Ancient Greek artifacts totaling more than $5 million. Along he with was mad at his girl? ...were destroyed Wednesday night at the Dallas... So museum he was mad at his girlfriend, so he ruined ancient... Greek art we put him in jail forever <clears throat> like what do we do with that I don't know if that's a forever and and offense will give but... shirtless hugs at the goal get the tip train oh going. you are you trying to like live your <laughs> gay fantasies through us like I don't days go by and still I think of you yeah I mean this is six million dollars worth of shit uh priceless shit really it's really priceless he destroyed it because his girlfriend was fucking up. Like, lock him up forever. Don't throw away the key, but dangle it in front of him. I don't know about forever, but it, yeah, it, it's really sad um, that these are, you can't get them back. And it's from like the beginning of the start of human intelligence what made us who we are like tip, our tip, intelligence tip 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 tip, 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 tip. just the tip. tip 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 let's get ben that third and final beer bung you can't you can't get that back like we need to understand where we came from and these like early good like humans existed long before this like as animals but we became intelligent beings around this time um whether that was like a slow build or just like some of them that hit us or whatever. Um, this is like the building blocks of who we are. I like and, the and not idea. just Greek, it, like everything from this ancient era. I like the idea that like 10,000 years ago we had more advanced civilization than we do now. You like the idea, but there's no evidence. But we fucked it all up and all of our, all of our crazy technology washed away. And the only thing left were these relics that stood the test of time. Just like how now, 10,000 years from now, all we'll have left is the Motorola brick cell phones. And all these iPhones will turn to dust. It's beautiful. The prehistoric humans known as Unga Chungas? Is that what they were called? Uh, really? No. I think Mouse for Charles is fucking with me. He's fucking with me. It's the earliest stuff that we can find anyway. Exactly, yeah. Think of yeah. Think of how well we've preserved everything and how many I mean, we nations have, uh, have been torn down that we never documented. We have cave paintings that go, I don't even know, like seven to 10,000 years ago. Yeah. Um. And then that's just when humans learn how to paint and, like, create illusions of the things they saw in real life through art. That's just the beginning of, like, showing intelligence. We were animals with no more intelligence than most animals at one point. It's a weird thing how uh, the intelligence of humans evolved. 
there was a, a good, like a lot of evidence suggests that there was a good time where humans could not vocally communicate like we can now. What if there was like an alien race that came down and domesticated us as pets? And Is it the plot of Stargate? And 10,000 years from now, dogs and cats will be talking like us because we domesticated them. Part of me is like, I wish my dogs could talk to me. And another part is like, wow, they're annoying enough. If my dogs start to talk, then I'll have to worry about consent. And I don't like that. Consent? Yeah. I have I have my old lady dog and she just barks all day. Poor, poor puppums. Living a life of barking is. She just keeps. Sounds going. like MAGA. She's a MAGA. Dog. Sounds like January 6th. Disappointed. Right Many art goers Tuesday didn't know what happened until they arrived. Honestly, it's really saddening. Um, I'm a big fan of the DMA. It has Thank you for being honest art, with us. So it's honestly a Where tragic is event. This? The whole Thank you for being honest with your opinion on this tragic recover. event. Court Appreciate it. Say just before 10 p.m., surveillance cameras caught a man with a metal chair in his hand at the door. You going Stone Cold Steve Awesome style in Dallas? The yeah, the Dallas Museum the of Art. Told investigators, the person admitted he broke in. 21-year-old Brian Hernandez was arrested by Brian Dallas Hernandez. Police. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I feel like mischief. life in prison Police is okay for something like off. this. Augustine. It is a pretty horrendous thing. Like, it's, it's the past. Like, what's your problem with it? It's, he, he should be forced to sit in prison until he creates $6 million worth of art and gives it back <laughs> to the Dallas Art it, Museum. It, it would never happen. We see how much well, value like you this can make. art is just, yeah, you know, just make him pay it back. See, paying it back isn't the you same. You can't pay it back though. Yeah, this it's is priceless, priceless stuff. Yeah, it's like, it's the beginning of human history. But then again, people go in and take advantage of women's bodies all the time, and they don't spend life in prison. So where's the line really drawn? You can though, uh, if if you're. It depends on what you mean by taking advantage. Like if your if your crime is violent enough, you can get life. Yeah, but like there's a statute of uh, there's a cap for like limitation. If you go just take a woman and use her for your own violent needs, like they don't give you life in prison for that. Uh, you can get essentially life in prison. I don't know. It always seemed to be. Oh too, my god! If too you're light, if you're like already you know 25 30 years old and you get 60 years in prison that's life in prison 60 years yes yes the highest punishment for our wording is a maximum of 15 years criminal imprisonment. In Washington or what? Uh, laws regarding R word on Wikipedia. It depends on what you... Well, they'll, they'll tack on other charges, though. Like, did you, like... I, there, there's other... That charge would is compounded into other charges in this case. It's not that alone. Either way. But is that the federal or, like, uh, state? Uh, Wikipedia. It's just Wikipedia. Okay. I don't know if it's the highest you can be charged anywhere ever. By the way, the harshness of a punishment usually is not a deterrent because the people who, who are willing to do it have all... Either they don't think they'll be caught or they've already accepted the consequences. And, like... It's like someone who's willing to like shoot up a bunch of a bunch of people and then die. So life in prison for our wording and life in prison for breaking art. Uh, I I mean, like if I had to choose one, I think our wording, I would like if one had to have. Yeah, I'm just saying both is good. Well, both life in prison. The, the breaking art. Nah. The breaking art is awful, though. Brainius like, Balco, that's all awful. Brainius Balgi says he likely got cucked and freaked out, then got super mad and wrecked a ton of stuff. Yeah, it doesn't matter, right? Like, he destroyed $6 million worth of ancient art. 
artifacts. This guy's over here smashing artifacts. There are he's a certain punk. things that should be sacred that we should uh, protect and like and remember where like we came women. From. Why? Well, well, I also mean like where we came from as as people. Like we should like keep that for the people who are still around. Hopefully, if we're not dead a thousand years from now. Uh, yeah, I wish that guy would have just smashed up a Starbucks. I look at how different life has changed for humans in my lifetime. And I'm like, what? what is it going to be like if we survive a thousand years from now? Like, mm-hmm. it, it's a lot of people be... say we won't make it 10. Bernie Sanders I, says no, he should be forced to get a history degree with a focus on the history of the items he destroyed and then work for the museum before being released. I like that idea. I like that idea. Who's the nerd in front of the book bookcase? This is uh, Garmin Armin. Huh. I don't know his name. The Dallas Museum of Art. I, it was someone that seemed to be angry. Augustine. And, uh, and Ar- wow, that's a very... Augustine Artuga? Artuga? Is that how you say it? I don't know. I can't read it under my mic. But it was, was a so very uh, interesting Spanish name. Smashing anything that he could find of glass. The responding security guard told police he asked, why did he break in? Hernandez is I see Joe in the chat. He hey, was Joe. Mad at his girl, so he broke in and started destroying property. The most expensive Joe says you can take advantage of a fat's body and get a good base. laugh out of it. No, dude, you go to jail for life if you do that. Nope. That's nope. worse than R wording nope. or breaking art. Thesis, which dates back to 450 B- I'm taking advantage of, of Billy's body right now. You're taking advantage his, of my gas. His, uh, <laughs> well, just wait. I'm canning that shit. For real. And then I'm taking advantage. I have electrodes hooked up between his knees and ankles. I don't know if that's true. Am yep. I powering a dam right yes, now? Yes, you are. You are the dam. I'm the dam. I'm powering a small Billy city the with dam. electrical peni stimulation. <laughs> Is this a top here? What is this thing going on? This it's thing like a little up. jar or whatever. Is it an urn? He went through uh, other spaces and uh, and did not hurt any other works, didn't touch anything, didn't have the intention of stealing anything. It was just his anger that uh, drove that person to do what he did. Artiega says the alleged girl Hernandez was mad at is not. We have an 15 minutes left of the show, the guys. Media. We got to get to that goal any connection that we know of of that person related to the DMA. Recently, Achuta, a man okay. protesting climate change threw a cake at the Mona Lisa on display at the Lu- There's a shoot. I, I hear a lot of people saying it's not the, the original. It is. But there's a shoot that they have it on that they lower it down at night. And I love this because I've seen the Mona Lisa twice, and it is like this. It's like being at a concert. Um, what's uh, and- what's the Mona Lisa got to do with climate change? Paris, the frame protected the actual painting from being damaged. Artiega says there has never been any real damage to the Dallas Museum of Art until now. This is uh, something that we've seen recently in a different level you know, yeah the it's uh like attacking paintings uh that's like terrorist shit it is lisa being attacked at the loop and destroying actual like priceless artifacts that's not just art that's that's human history you're trying to erase and i think that's fucked up too and uh but uh, we have a, a marvelous record of 120 years when we never suffer any kind of uh, uh, situation like this. There were other damages Ancient to things like so a laptop. Why aren't people still making it? Uh-huh. It's not like he ripped up a Sonic Who comic. Fact. Oh my Fact. God. Yeah, Sonic He ripped Chew. up a Sonic Who comic. You. I'd want. I'd. W- I'd wish nothing less than him being Chris Chan's mother. <laughs> you fuck with Sancho, you get fucked. Um, wooden signs and, by Christian. of course, multiple glass cases. We don't know if any additional charges will be filed. Additional charges. Lurdies and gentlemen, 
We're 82.63% of the way to our goal. About finding new ways to Sorry, go ahead. We're 82.63% of the way through our goal. We need you all to rain down uh, with rain thunderous down. praise in the form of shekels, in the form of ruples, in the form of pesos, in the form of uh, kroners. Kroners, give some kroners. Pounds. Dollars. Euros. All that good stuff. Make it rain. What's the movie tonight? A uh, nice little flick called Jurassic World 5. And by the way. Still dino -ing? When we can finish this, I will move over to the Discord to host a... A meet and greet? Yeah. Do -do 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 -do. I will take your farthings. Tonight, we'll take farthings to cover for all the farting. To curb crime and put repeat offenders in jail. But as that debate plays out, one see This is Fox 13 here in Seattle. Seattle store manager has had to resort to increasingly drastic measures to keep his business and It's true. You know, uh, there's a law in Washington now where cops can't even pursue someone on the freeway. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of weird. You know, like... I don't want the police to have too much power, but that seems to kind of cripple them. I saw a guy pursuing a guy on the freeway a couple nights ago. A cop? Yeah, like they might not have gone high speed, maybe. Yeah, that's a problem. Maybe they, maybe they, they didn't get high speed, but the guy was not pulling over. Hey. In fact, he tells Fox 13's Matt Markovich to now. that one man in particular has been terrorizing his store for years, and he's got the video to prove it. Samir Shafi has had it. This poor fucker. Could you imagine being this old guy at the news station? They're like, yeah, go out there in the rain in front of this boarded up shell station. It's better than Why don't you cover that, Barry? <laughs> it's better than working at the shell station that keeps getting robbed. I thought you were safety. talking about that he guy when you said this poor this fucker. What's been happening here? <laughs> but look at him. Like, everyone's in the studio, like, looking like... Yeah, he works in the fucking television industry. His base pay is probably 140000 a year But he's one of the, minimum. like, out there correspondents. Yeah, yeah. Lake City Way. Oh, this so is Lake City Way. I thought that looked in, like, like the one near my house. Here. This guy knows Samir Shafi's store all too well. Yeah, he knows that my door has an auto lock from behind the counter. The guy tries to prop open the door to prevent Samir, dressed in orange, from locking him inside until police arrive. The two tussle as the guy tries to steal something. Samir runs behind the counter to grab his bear spray. And I then always there's have an problems being pulled into people's private Discord chats, so when you have Mirin tomorrow, do you want me to start a private room? I almost guarantee I won't be We're, able to come uh, tomorrow because Negan is going to be on tap. Smoking weed in this warm air. And Negan, you're gonna be begins. Negan, to you're solve. gonna be on um on through Skype, and I'll send you a link. Change of sprays. I'm not the one who sprays first. He's the one who sprays me what he has in his hand. He chases him out to the gas pump, scaring customers. And most of the time, the customers see something like... Yeah, like, the cops release these people in Seattle and just let them go. Mm -hmm. And then exactly. they come back. Yeah, right up the road, there's a Safeway there that I go to every night, and it's literally a revolving door for people stealing. And they're often stealing toilet paper. And I don't know if they resell it somewhere, like, cause like I'm pretty sure when you're homeless, you get free toilet paper. Like they they go, Where? the people like give you all these like homeless kits. Like the, the the health department comes by and gives you this shit, right? Like they they do I, with I socks, they do with all these utensils. They get these huge homeless kits all the time. So when they come in, they steal giant toilet paper. I'm thinking they're reselling it. If you just needed to wipe your ass. The guy comes back two hours later, wielding a half gallon of milk. No! Oh! No, you monster! <laughs> he ain't coming in with the milk Mere bomb now, is he? Again. But this time the guy starts to throw rocks, breaking one window, then takes aim at Samir behind the counter, throwing a rock, breaking a window. Had it Damn. not been for some cans of Red Bull, the rock would have hit a customer in the head. Oh my the god, Red Bull the saves the day again. Saved her. I chase him, he keeps coming back. There's well, a commercial for Red Bull. He's been dealing with the same guy for three years, he says. And wow. he wonders why the it, guy yeah. is not in jail. Were you just fed up with he, him? Yeah, fed up and, uh, and plus 
safety of my customer is Don't also... Don't worry, he it said, was only not fat milk. Thank God! Because he calls the police on this guy and many others who steal from his store. Most of the time they don't show up, and if they show up, it's like a, not in minutes, in hours. This stretch of Lake City Way has seen its problems over the years. People with visible mental illness walking the streets. This guy's got a popsicle. That's Samir's shop in the Circle Dot on SPD's 24-hour crime map. If you compare this stretch of Lake City Way with the high crime area of Aurora Avenue to the west, yep. it's almost the same. That's where you get them prossies up there on Aurora if you want to go to the prostitute, if you're tooting. If you're tooting. This is not quite my house. Uh, my house is really close to this, though. It's like I go to this fucking area when I go to my favorite Wendy's to get tasties treats. And, Mr. Tasty and Treats. Get my Tasty issue. Treats from uh, Wendy's. This is just past the Wendy's. Something else. What I'm trying to do is just work and make a living. That's Quit playing do. games with my the heart. The for Seattle Police says they are still looking for the suspect and that officers responded within Actually, 15 minutes of this is the one call. They right past the Chipotle that I go to. Calls to this store unless we Billy's uh, related numbers. to crime. But Samir says Hell not yeah. all the calls resulted in open cases. In Seattle, I drove through this parking lot news. two nights ago when I was getting a Chipotle. I, for Chipotle. My, for my grandma Ma. We'll do right now. You're looking I bought at about Chipotle for my grandma Ma. Where'd you buy Monday it from? Night, and I was and in that parking lot. Where'd you buy it? Chipotle. What was that restaurant? Uh, Chipotle. I bought. I went through that parking lot of that. What, what was it called? Store two day, later, like two nights ago, or Monday night. It was Monday night. Was it Monday night? I think it was. I think it was Monday night. Uh, it was Friday night. It was Friday night. What? What the fuck is it? Was it yesterday that I was there? I don't know. Chipotle is what it's called. <laughs> oh, God. It's the one near Fred Meyer. Yeah. A little further than the Wendy's. They're stalking your ass. There's a lot of trouble out that way. My grandmother's church used to be out that way. It was, it was trouble. It was trouble. F flea market, Montgomery, Montgomery. It's flea just market. Like it's it's just like a mini mall. Uh, Proud Boys. They're marching eastbound in this uh, 400 block of. Um, Are they uh, in five more minutes left in the show? We got to get to that goal. I am not allowed to. Say Living that rooms, to bedrooms, dinettes. Because everyone's just gonna have to watch. Fuck soul since I went to my first strip club on Lake City Way. Um, there are three probable options, depending on how old you are. We're probably leaning towards Rick's, um, Rick which is now Dream Girls. I believe Dream Girls it used to be owned by the mob. And uh, the, someone get us the ninety percent. Hit us up with some 90%, please. There, Further down Lake City Way uh, towards Bothell, there is a Deja Vu. And they had a buffet there, a lunch buffet. And I went to the lunch buffet one day with my cousin and the girls were there. And it was like me, my cousin, and some day laborers. And the girls were like... You guys are cute. Go go to the store and buy alcohol and smuggle it in and we'll all drink. And I'm thinking, it's delicious Chinese food. All you can eat. Uh, I can go get alcohol and hang out here for a good six hours. So we went, we got some big bottles. We gave them to the girls. They came and brought us drinks because there's no alcohol out in Washington State. They kept feeding us drinks. They were flirting with us. My cousin was getting a little too drunk and started getting handsy with the girls. And they're like, hey, um, we think your cousin's cute, but the security here can't let him do this to us because the other guys will think they can do this. <coughs> so you guys got to go. <coughs> and I'm like, that's fair. And this is the day after my cousin got baptized, adult baptized. And I took him home, and uh, he was drunk as fuck. And he... No. <laughs> 
and he stumbled. That's normal to do when you just get baptized. He stumbled up the stairs, fell. Do a weed, please. Do a weed, please. Do a no, 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 no. And then um, he stumbled up the stairs to his house, tripped, fell, busted his face up, was bleeding, and his mom was waiting for him on the porch. And she looked at me and she goes, thanks, Billy. Thanks. <laughs> I was like, it's not my fault. It's not my fault he can't handle his liquor, can't handle his baptismal. Oh, she was saying, like, sarcastically, thanks, like it was your fault? Yeah, well, kind of, you know. She was like, I was I was his older cousin. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is. 100 bones. Look, a couple of you, you can do, like, 10 bucks and get us almost there. If 10 of you gave 10 bucks, we'd be there. If one of you gave a hundred bucks, we'd be there. If a hundred of you gave one buck, that'd be fucking weird because PayPal would take like sixty cents off each transaction. That's why we don't accept one dollar donuts. Joe, you forgot scores too. Uh, score. They had scores in New York City, but they also had scores in Columbus. Um, there was a uh, a nudie club in Columbus, Ohio. That was like a scores. That was uh, a big thing. Mm-hmm. Another time at that deja vu. Uh, well, the, the, there was a, a writer who actually had a Hulu TV show recently. Um, the writer Hulu went to TV that show. that buffet it's at the like strip Wappy club with his TMZ shit. Yeah, and she wrote an article about the the buffet at the strip club and called it the Butthole Buffet. And they shut down the buffet because of her article. And then 10 years later, she gets her TV show on Hulu. And she writes about going to the strip club buffet. And she rewrites history. She does not make it sound like the butthole buffet that got it closed down. But oh, She bye. uses the buffet as a, as a story point. Not letting the world know she ruined the buffet with her article. Rewriting history for Hollywood. That's wrong. That's wrong. Have you guys seen Destiny Chat with Martin Shkreli today? I did not get to watch it. I'm uh, a big I turned fan it on. of Destiny. I turned it on, and uh, I didn't have my audio on, and I had to go. So I, my fucking heads, my headset, my headset broke. I had a fucking Steel Series Artist 7 wireless headset and the fucking thing won't charge. Pissing me off. I got a good deal on it, but still, I paid $125 for it. I feel like that shit should last longer than a year and a half. Holy shit. What the world? Needs now. <clears throat> Hit 90 and love, I'll do the, the last beer bomb. love. Fucking steel series. Eat your words, Joe. Eat your fucking words. Shall we have words? I, but I also don't think I'm uh, an, a mod in your chat, so. In Joe's chat? Yeah, I don't think so. Why would he do that? Um, I don't think Joe knows how to give people mod. Oh, uh, well, no, he does. He's not a fucking moron. Uh, you would be surprised what Joe knows and doesn't know. When it comes to technology, Joe doesn't know. I when know it comes... Just, I know you're trying to make... How do you case. know? Oh, I know you very well, sir. I'm simply stating a simple fact. See, Joe says, I'll learn and he'll make you a mod. He'll learn just for you. Up until now, Joe wasn't concerned with technology, but because he saw his good pal Ben suffering, he'll he go through those steps to learn just for you. <laughs> okay. It's because Joe's a good guy. Okay. A lot of people don't know this about Joe because he plays a bit of a pest as a character, but he's a good a guy. Is that a bit a of a weird, pest. It's kind of a weird way to define it. You think so? Yeah, when I hear it, now it has a sexual connotation. I'd say sex pest. I know, I know. But I'm thinking more John Leguizamo pest. The pest. Yeah, <laughs> that, the movie. Yeah, he can be. He can be a little. Do bit... movies just r rule your life? No. Okay.
What role do movies play? Their stories and storytelling has long been a prime point of entertainment in human history. Okay. Before movies, we were reading, we were watching plays, we were uh, hearing our ancestors tell us stories of the past. It's integral to the development process of the human brain. Okay. Like I would say um, movies play an integral role in our world because it allows us to experience unique emotion settings, experiences that uh, you can't experience in a lifetime, uh, in the average lifetime. What's the... Uh, would you be willing to put a max length on what's acceptable for a movie? Why? Okay. Thank you for answering. So, no. Would you be pill willing to put a max length on what's acceptable for... Uh, entertainment drinking, like, like, like you enjoy libations and marijuana. You enjoy many vices that I think offer uh, minimal enrichment compared to art, like film. Mm. I was just asking if you think there's a time, like, if there's an acceptable time to pack it all into one runtime. I don't think that runtime matters. It. What matters is uh, how much, how invested you are in an artist's vision. I think the interest of art, in the interest of art, anything can be any length. Uh, it just really, you have to remember that the viewer is also part of the art. And if you're not respecting the viewer, then maybe you're not a good artist. Okay. Joe says, Out One by Jacques Rivette is a bit long, 11 hours. Movies are mandalas. This is an acceptable time for a big old hug, says Sarah. I do agree, indubitably. An 11-hour hug is okay. I think that uh, a warm embrace <laughs> has a lot of, a lot of uh, benefit for human interaction. I think beyond hugging, uh, I think that cuddling, hugging. I think cuddling is very uh, important. I think that it's uh, akin to meditation. I think that it's uh, very, uh, has rejuvenating qualities. <laughs> Joe's dropping uh, stars. Tonight's movie will be streaming via Stars on Prime at 11.15. It's called Arlington Road, 1999. I don't think I ever saw Arlington Road. Is Tom Hanks in that? Embrace. Embrace. Little Spoon or Big Spoon? I'm, uh, I'm never Little Spoon. Ever. He'd be Little Spoon for the right person. I put Never. A crazy people of Cobra ah, ho, ho, ho. From last night. Oh, oh. Uh, we gotta My watch God. that. Wait, 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 we wait, have to watch wait, that. Wait, fucking <laughs> Seth looks. We gotta watch oh, that. Yeah, but, hey, shit. Um, Ben's going full humada humada. Never say I don't give and are not a sweet boy. Twisted Annika, I never say you don't give and are not a sweet boy. I never say that. A humada humada. Who's the guy? Hold on, hold on, hold on, My hold on, wife, hold on. take her. Rodney Dangerfield. Ben was going a bit Rodney there. He's going. He was going. Be my wife. He was going casually, Dangerfield. You know, uh, when we had our all-time comedian list, a lot of people, uh, like younger people, had never actually seen Rodney before, and he scored surprisingly high. They hadn't and, seen him. Well, a lot of people in our audience, like he was. De he was already dead when they were like. It's impressive. And another one was uh, Lisa Lampanelli, old school Lisa Lampanelli, when she was the dirtiest. Before she got woke. Yeah. She stopped letting black guys in her pussy and let black guys into her brain. Wait, uh, shit, that's racist. That's going to get me canceled. Fuck. 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 That was obviously a joke, guys. Please don't murder me. Uh, Joe, me. you should come into the studio on Thursday 
and you and Adam can discuss some movie shit together. We'll get all of you guys in here. In the movie. We'll make it a whole, like, movie-centric episode. I think that could be fun. For those of you that don't get the depth of my edgy Lisa Lampanelli joke, in her previous career, she made some very racially disparaging jokes, and she was widely celebrated for it. And then further along in her career, she got woke, and she, she, she disavowed her previous work. So I'm getting canceled now. <clears throat> I, I don't want to feel jaded about the movies anymore. But I invested so much time in the movies, and the movies have let me down. Is it me? Last night, I Joe and I drove to Renton, and we watched uh, David you drove Cronenberg. To Renton? We drove to Renton. That's so, close to me. Yeah, we were right by here. We saw David Cronenberg's Crimes of the Future, which I saw for the second time, uh, Joe's first viewing, except it felt like Joe's 10th viewing. After we had talked about the film post, post, uh, post watching, and um, it stars Viggo Mortensen, it's got Kristen Stewart in it, it's got uh, I think is her Leah Sadow. She's you probably see her, notice her face if you saw her. She's been in quite a few productions. It wasn't until the second viewing that I realized she was the girl from the French Dispatch. Have you seen Legend? I don't believe so. I know uh, it's got. Tom Cruise in it? Yeah, it's yeah. one of his first movies. Yeah, I don't think I saw Legend. With Tim is, Curry as Satan, is there which a, is uh, unbelievable. Is there a unicorn in the beginning of that? The whole movie, the, the plot is around how the unicorns are the last yeah. like truly good beings on Earth. When I was a little like, kid, I was at my aunt's, and I started watching it. And then I think something happened that was a little violent, and she turned it off. It's not, no, it, it's satanic at some parts. It's probably the satanic thing where yeah. she was like, no, I think this might not be for you kids. Um, and then she turned it off. Uh, God, I would love to do a series where I just show you good movies from before when you started watching movies. <laughs> like, it's weird how you haven't seen a lot of like, old movies it's like all like even when did movie watching become like a hobby for you i was always watching movies Were but you? it was it, they weren't my choice because i was a child so like it was either what was ever was on hbo or whatever was rented by my dad huh. so i didn't have i wasn't able to just be like well, Father, I'm going to go to the store and purchase a new uh, video. Well, I didn't until have I a... was like 17, and I had my own car, and then I would do that. And I would had like 300 VHSs, and then all the people in my neighborhood started uh, borrowing them from me and never bringing them back. So I got, I pawned them all off, and then I did the yeah, same thing like... with DVDs, and people started stealing them from me. So I pawned them all off. Yeah, like. Uh... Normally, we would either. Well, I didn't have HBO as a kid, uh, but we uh, we would either have relatives that would VHS tape it off of their pay per view shit, or we would rent shit when when it was available. One movie that I watched as a child that I really want to watch again is uh, Miracle Beach. You ever seen Miracle, Miracle Beach, Beach, Joe? Beach? I've never heard of that. Miracle Beach. You ever seen uh, Summer School or Ski School? No. So the guy from Summer School stars in Miracle Beach. There's a uh, really beautiful blonde girl that plays a genie. Pat Morita's in it. Martin Mull oh, is in it. Martin Mull? Yeah. Uh, Alexis Arquette is in it before the transition. Really? Yeah. It's a, it's a... The Arquettes from Toledo, by the way. Yeah. By the way, I just drank like... Four stout, like imperial stouts. A lot, yeah. 
I am fucking you're pretty wasted lit. right now. You you, yeah. you look like you're keeping it together pretty well. Yeah, you know, I do my th- I yeah. got to pee like worse of anything. Uh, yeah, I, I do want to see Cosmopolis. Uh, have you seen Cosmopolis, Joe? Cosmopolis? Cosmopolis? I don't know how it's pronounced. I got to see Crash. I haven't watched a lot of Cronenberg. I know I've seen A History of Violence, but I haven't seen like... Uh, uh, the uh, the other one after that with Vigo. Have you seen Dirty Rotten Scoundrels? I do believe I have, but um, a fish called Wanda. Definitely watched that when okay. I was a kid. It was all when I was a kid, though. It was all stuff that my well, dad rented. You can remember though, like vaguely, yeah. What you're thirty eight? Yeah, yeah. So you're you're was my that, brother's that, age. Was it like I would have been like nine or ten when that came out? A Fish Called Wanda was at 91, Yeah, 92, I think when 93? I was a senior in high school, you would have been a freshman. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you uh, would have been I'm old just enough a... to take me to prom. <laughs> Not at my high school. <laughs> um, I definitely want to see Cosmopolis, though. That's a Cronenberg movie I was, I was interested in. It's got Robert Pattinson in it. I I can't. I don't want to give three hours of my life to the Batman. Don't. Yeah, it's, it's you don't have to. It's bad. It's bad, isn't it? Like it's better I than knew, it's better than Justice League and Wonder Woman. When you get no, no, the first Wonder Woman was good. The first Wonder Woman was shit. No, the first half of it was good, but the second half of it was complete fucking dog no, shit. No, 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 no. That was actually good. Like, the whole movie was good. It was like a good period piece. When they twisted it from being the Germans, when they twisted it away from being the Germans to being the fucking British guy was the god of war, and instead of the god of war being a representation of turning the the, the warriors evil on the battlefield or whatever, it was just another super fucking villain, uh, Power Rangers evil dummy demon dickhead. Miracle Jared Beach is Genesis on YouTube. Genesis get beat up in their gym. I gotta go pee. There's two cuts of Miracle Beach. There's one that is like the rom-com cut, and there's one cut of Miracle Beach that is the titty flick cut. And if we ever watch it on DP On Demand or whatever, we should watch the rom-com cut because you guys don't deserve all the fucking boobs. But uh, if you watch it alone by yourself, you should enjoy the boobs because this is a time... This is a time in the early 90s when there were top-tier boobage floating around. Joe and I were friends with a girl who was penthouse playmate of, like, was it 92? And she played a pretty young thing in Weekend at Bernie's 2. She she had quality boobage, okay? She was a friend of ours from uh, from Battle Cam days. She She was, like, from an era. She was, like, the queen of an era that was all about queens when boobs had top billing and you could make an entire franchise based off of that jiggle jiggle no fold then they came up with narrative folding and that's a whole different cinema the jiggle jiggle had its time though best booba goes to Sticky said, I thought fake boobs were gross in the 90s. I mean, young Bill Fridge likes gross things. Weekend at Bernie's 2. A lot. A lot. Yeah, Samantha Phillips was her name. Is her name. She invited me to her birthday party. And uh, I didn't go because I was in Seattle. And I was like, I don't think I can swing the trip to L.A. And fucking China was at her birthday party. Pretty sure she was there with Rob Van Dam, too. I was so butthurt that I didn't make it down to L.A. after that. I was like, I should have done it. I could have fucking partied with China, dude. I was so bummed. Not China. Joni Laurer, dude. WWE China. Oh, my God. Sheesh, not the country of China. When I leave and come back, it's like... Yeah, because you, you got fresh air. And then you come back in, and it's like a goddamn yeah, yeah. like a pressure cooker. And there's a lot of farts. No, that's what I mean. Yeah. 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 Dude, 
Your farts should be bottled because they're like psychedelic. Yeah. I feel like I'm tripping yeah. on Billy farts in yep. this small room. It's right like now. licking a toad. <laughs> I got trippy toots. <laughs> oh, oh. Billy in the sky with diamonds. What is this? Oh, hold on. I like, I like it. Billy in the pie with diamonds, or, or Billy in the pie with diarrhea. Instead of LSD, it's BPD. That's my farts. <laughs> that's that's how you trip. You trip on BPD. Yeah, it's Billy in the pie with diarrhea. I do want uh, to go to Las Vegas, and I I would like to get us to go to Meow Wolf. You know yeah, what I almost is? went to Meow Wolf last time I was there, but I just didn't have enough middle time. The original one was in Santa Fe. Like when when I was in my mid twenties, yeah. I knew the people who started Meow Wolf, and then George R. R. Martin bought them a bowling alley. George Hard R. Martin, yeah, um, the man. I like how J. R. R. Tolkien and George R. R. Martin both had double R's. He did that on purpose. You know he did, or you think he did? Well. George uh, ran the science fiction con in Albuquerque uh, every year. So people already knew about George. If you were into like tabletop in, uh, in Albuquerque, uh, like he was the head of that shit. Yeah. yeah. Morton Dave just noticing now that Miracle Beach had Dean Cameron in it. That was the guy from summer school and ski school. Dean Cameron, uh, you met that fucker when you were a teenager at a movie con. Don't get that confused with Dean Cain, everybody watching at home. Oh, yeah, that's fucked up. Although Dean Cain was also in Miracle Beach. Um, George R.R. R. Martin also owns a, uh, an art movie theater slash coffee shop. It's kind of cool. It's a hip spot. And then he, he got, like, dragons painted all over the outside of it. It's really cool. I wish you guys could have gone to the Wizards of the Coast Tournament Center with me in the late 90s. It was down on the Ave. Uh, there used to be a place called Off the Wall, which was like a little head shop. It was right next door to the Wizards of the Coast Tournament Center. The Ave was always full of some de degenerates in the late 90s. But if you walk in, there's all these giant dragon sculptures and minotaurs and shit. And they had these giant mech bots you could do fucking mech video gaming in. It was nerd heaven. Yeah, this is his spot in Santa Fe. The cock too? Yeah, I... Cock toe? The back of the building. I can't believe there's not a picture. Oh, no, oh, no, there's not. The back of the building is covered in dragons. But this is the typical uh, adobe, like, if you live in New Mexico, this is what your house looks like. It's In adobe. Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is in Santa Fe, though. This is the inside. That's actually really nice. Yeah. Is there only one screen? Yes. I wonder if it was like an old... Uh, performance center that was turned into a theater or was that always a theater because some i think the northgate theater in seattle by the northgate mall had kind of a inner design like that maybe too i can't quite remember paramount yeah yeah i'm trying to remember the northgate mall theater right now i don't know man the cock two twins is a great band what here's george in the cinema room grand cinema is it the cinema room I don't know. Here he is in the bar. He owns the place. It's so weird. Santa Fe. Like, he was a figure in local uh, fantasy writing when I first moved there before Game of Thrones. So, like, he was known as, like, heading the, the tabletop gaming convention. Uh, thank you, Linda Carfagno Photography. For this beautiful picture of George Hard R. Martin. Hard R. Martin. Yeah, because this is a different, like, well, that's I don't the know. one I think we were looking at, the big room, but the other room looked like a small little tootie duty. Yeah, maybe he has, I, I don't Two even know. Two rooms? It looks small, but I don't know. 
Jean Cocteau. This looks very small. I'll buy a movie theater one day. You know, uh, Jean Cocteau, I think uh, he's, I think it's one of uh, George Hardar Martin's favorite actors from Antiquity. Jean Cocteau? Yep. Was a French poet, playwright, novelist, designer. Yep. Surrealist, avant-garde, and dataist. Yeah, so in downtown Santa Fe, there's a theater, an Adobe theater, that is named after this uh, actor that George R. R. Martin owns. Jean Cocteau. He insisted on calling himself a poet, classifying the great variety of his works. Everyone, tonight, if you're watching, please... I'm 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 gonna link it. Let me link it before you leave, homie. We are going to go over to um, Discord, and we're gonna chat like crazy tonight. There's crazy chats. So you should be joining right now. George R R Farton. George <laughs> Hard R Martin. R. Les Parents Terrible. That was actually a remake of Will Smith's rap song, The Parents Just Don't Understand. There's no need to argue. Parents just don't understand. Do you, uh, do you remember the song You Saw My Blinker, Bitch? Mm-mm. Yeah. Who he did made that? That was Will Smith? Yeah, with uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff. Huh, I know. And it was before he was like, I don't use no profanities. Oh. He did back in the day. When Will Smith used to say cuss words. Yep. I hated when Will Smith Keep used my cuss wife's words. Keep my wife's out your fucking mouth. Join Discord. Jump into. I can forgive his violence. But I cannot forgive his cuss words. You say Jazzy Jeff never slapped anyone Everyone on stage. Everyone, click we don't know the that. link in the chat. Let's hang out and talk tonight. Maybe oh, when we gotta Billy... watch the clip of Seth Looks that sent in of calling Cobra an R word. That's the what? hundred dollar dono that Seth Looks sent in in the in what the was content. It? Seth, you want to tell Ben where it's at? In content. Hold on. Do do do. Because yeah, we totally forgot. What Seth I, Looks? I don't see. Crazy. It's under crazy people. Cra oh, okay, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. We have to watch that. Seth Looks gave us a huge I, boost. I agree, I agree. Hold on. Is this mute? No, it's not. That's not how it works, Seth, you fucking retard. Huh. Oh, yeah, I, I saw this. Seth was like, hey, don't wear tactical soap to your family reunion. You might fuck your cousins. Basically. Is that not how it works? I don't know. It always worked for me. Yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't wear tactical soap to a family reunion because my cousins would probably have sex with me. I well. I'm not even attracted to my cousins. They're giant. That's Big not how dudes. it works, Seth, you fucking retard. Damn, Seth, I'm sorry, Cobes. Slayed you. That's not how it works, Seth, you fucking retard. You got slayed by the young king, Cobes. That's Cobra. not how it works, Seth. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back again. Is it Tuesday? Are we back again Tuesday? Is there, is there another? Hold on, hold on. Let me make sure. Is there another? Uh, I think that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Everyone, we will see you on Tuesday. But if you want content tomorrow, come over to uh, the uh, Alter Perspective channel. We'll be doing content all night tomorrow night. We will see you there. Everyone have an amazing night and 
go over to the DP Discord because I'll be talking to people tonight, and I'm wasted. So Come on. That should be fun. Just saying, have a safe ride, Billy. Bye-bye. In the beginning, there was nothing. And then there was the Drunken Peasants Podcast. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. Drunken peasants, drunken peasants From the strangest corners of the internet Gonna get TP'd by Billy and Ben You know where you can find them at Get ready cause they're gonna kick your Drunken peasants, drunken peasants Drunken peasants, drunken peasants